definition of divine yeah, I feel like a champion A champion there Ain't nothing that can't be done Oh yeah I put it all on the line Definition of divine Yeah Let's go. I got big dreams. I'ma do big things. Yeah, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean. I don't move slow, I move fast right past. Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad. I'd be grateful for everything that I have. You only got this life, you don't get it back. Make the most of it, become the best that I can. Everybody look at me, I got a plan. You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start. Cause how you do anything is everything is start. Stay consistent and do it every day. Don't let fatigue get in your way. Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it so I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had enough I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things Empires out of buildings I want to leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things Of motivating and killing Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing I work through the pain, I like seeing gains I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained A true man pushes through, you don't hear complaints No, I don't want to stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough
feeling good, feeling great now. A hater can't play with my day now. Get that negativity out of my face now. In my city, I'm the man of my state now. Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest. Baby girl, you talking to the realest. Energy and joy, you can't steal it. Good vibes all around. Baby, tell me, can you feel it? I woke up, so I'm blessed. Just another chapter in the test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. It's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gonna shine. So fine, got the betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. soul on that beat i'm ready to feast margaritas with some divas i'm pouring the drinks i'm living life to the fullest the blessings in me don't really care what you say whatever you think nah unequivocal miracles with the lyrical with the homies trying to pop like the cereal lucky charms got a model on my arm go watch on my wrist garlic parm no alarm fireworks i can feel it in the sky i got love in my eyes but there's money on my mind i see passion and pride that despise all the lies i've been around the world so i'm down for the ride mm. good drinks good people and good times fast cars pretty women on face Time, more money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hit of God my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance floor, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands in the air where I can see. Did you hear what? I called the ride cause I'm going up And there's something mixy going in my cup Don't say much cause they know what's up huh. You know it get cold on a late night We getting all close like it's day night You looking so fly, you can take flight Now I got this feeling that I can't fight Your courage got my urges flaring You got me by the collar and I'm not caring You see how the people can't stop staring I'm trying to make your mind and I'm not sharing Okay, let's bring it back a bit She said you can have whatever if you ask for it well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me with your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance you'll see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me.
feet and move to the beat. Move to the beat. Mm. Pour up some drinks and then we repeat. Then we repeat. Yeah. Chasing my purpose, need a release. Need a release. Yeah. My life's a beach, I'm lost in the breeze. Lost in the mm. breeze. Do this with ease, don't play with my dreams. dreams. Yeah. It's so together, it's not what it seems. seems. Part of a tiger, life of a king. king. Yeah. Chasing my bag, my feet in the cream. cream. Running these laps, not losing my steam. steam. I'm feeling good, this life's what I need. Yeah. Don't intervene with my energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen. Yeah. No Superman, but I'm feeling supreme. Mm. This not a movie, but I'm making a scene. Yeah. Hey. I can tell you how to live your life, but, hey. but, hey. but hey. you just gotta get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Our life, we paying a price. price. Mm. Piece of the pie, I need me a slice. slice. Yeah. Rolling the dice, the scariest spice. spice. Mm. Sticky like rice, the tricky reprise. Price. Yeah. Love will suffice, I suffer in silence. Mm. All alone, I'm lost on the island. Lost. Let's spread peace and less of the violence. No. Sebastian Block, I'm God's playing violence. Yeah. The flowers violet, give me my rose. rose. This for my city, all for my bros. Rose. Did it alone, so far in my zone. zone. So raise your glass, let's all have a toast. toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D-I-E. D-I-E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, 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 hey, you hey, just gotta get up now. Get up. Get up. Get up now. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up now. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up.
Been through the flame, I'll get out the way. Whole lot of change. Still been the same, put that on the name. I had to go through it just to get to it. Look what I became. Elevate, level up, way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys wanna talk, hit them out of law, but don't got receipts. I do it with ease, to you it's a burden, to me it's a breeze. You feel that? That win is degree, that kickback. You coming at me, boy, sit back. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, they up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. You be the witness. At the time, turn a repeat to a 3P, yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like G Lee, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm not stuck in TT, hey. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, they up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. Hate my grind down like 
let's do something crazy get a bit wild today because we don't do this every day and we deserve it life is so amazing nothing is in our way baby let's fly away do you feel it is your heart rushing the way my heart's rushing From the lowest, yeah. Gotta get it though, mindset. Gotta put it in motion. <laughs> this is the moment. Gotta one on my opponent. Back then, they ain't know 
it's me, now they know it's me, I'm the yeah. closest. my time, yeah, I put that on Bible, no excuses, gotta get to the final, take all of my idols and turn them to rivals, it's all or nothing, man, the trophy is vital, game time, bet I'm coming in clutch, no hang time, man, they can't keep up, the game's on the line, seconds on the time, who can't fight, it's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall. Yeah, a whole lot of times they doubt it. I wouldn't be who I am without it. Sleepless nights, I count it. It all paid off, it's really astounding. I had to keep the faith to elevate. Hope for better days, they were coming. Now we can celebrate, knowing every day is a bunny. Yeah, it's my time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all or nothing, man, the trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall on me.
blindfold. This shit is easy, like a recital. I'm taking my shot, like my hands on the rifle.
I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But, in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. I'm out here in the cold night, running till I barely feel my feet. Wanna see it through my own. I'm going back and I'm not afraid anymore Cause I know I'm gonna be the last one standing Yeah, I'm not afraid anymore Yeah, I don't wanna wait anymore I'm ready to fall Take me down. See that I'm surrounded by predators. It's critical they got me in my element. It's dirty how you trying to keep it elegant. Keep my eyes open wide. When everyone around me is an enemy. See my life cross my eyes. I'm ready. Too bad you can't take me down You can't take me down I'm ready to fall I'm ready to rise up I will do what it takes I'll run blind straight into the flames Watch me burn Alone in the shadows I'll carry you home Thank you.
Hello everyone, welcome to the Riot Games Arena live from Berlin, Germany. I'm Frankie Ward. I, I believe, Kakuka, you nearly called me Frankie Four then, which I enjoyed. I didn't. No, you didn't. I'm, I'm absolutely lying. You went one, two, three, four, and I thought I'll have that. I'll have that no. for myself. No, 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 we'll be fine. I, I respect you, It's Frankie. fine. I am, I'm currently pregnant with my second child, who will be joining Fnatic circa 2040, I think. We're going to start training them now. Okay, yeah, I can yeah. see that happening. Yeah, aim yeah. laps, warm up. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be yeah, taking gonna... place. Actually, to be honest, most of the time it does actually feel like it is taking place. So if at any point I look like I've been punched on the desk, it is because I have literally been punched from the inside. But hello, welcome was to Josh. Queen <laughs> of Stage 1. It has begun. I joked earlier that being with these two on the desk at Kuku and Steel, it is kind of like parenting practice because the two of them, you've got kind of this sibling dynamic going on. Do we judge? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently we do. So I'll just take you at face value for that. I'm not going to argue with it. Oh, oh wow. Well, I hope you do argue at some point because it's kind of my job on the desk to make the two of you disagree with each other. But there's plenty of time for that to happen. Let's take a look at the standings for this week. We've got particularly uh, quite uh, quite spicy matchups coming this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, Na'Vi versus uh, versus Casey is going to be particularly interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize that Na'Vi are actually second for Team Omega right now. That surprises me. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy because this means a lot and I think this week could be a turning point. Uh, remember that the two teams topping their groups will uh, skip one of the matches in playoffs, put them, put it, put in them in one match away from making Shanghai. So it's very important that Foot and Navi can still win their games this week so they can still have that edge uh, moving into the next two weeks. So it's almost as if this is kind of like the bonus round of the group standings here to mm -hmm. see if they can, if they convert that bonus round, they're smooth sailing, but if they don't convert it, then yeah. we might have a tighter bit of of a race, yeah, absolutely. You're yeah, smiling and the, and so the alpha. Like you rehearsed that, sorry. I, did, no, I yeah. just made it up right now, that's why I'm smiling. <laughs> so satisfying. Yeah, I was just thinking that things in, in alpha, on the other hand, are looking so, so close that anyone could make it at this point. I think right now, with this Gentlemates and, and Fnatic matchup, though, that we're going to have today, it's, it's one of those matches that Fnatic really need to convert as well, because mm. if teams, the teams that didn't have the greatest starts need to start converting now, if they don't convert now, then there's still a lot of really good and, and even harder matchups in the coming weeks. So, so this is, as you say, the turning point. This is when teams need to show up and show us the best thing that they've got. And the teams, like, we saw Gentlemates coming from last week. They looked flat. Fnatic looked really flat in week one. So I, I don't know which direction we're going to go in. Exactly. And at the same time, we had the two teams that we sent to Masters meant to loosen last week. So still, everything is on the table, which is exactly what we want, right? We don't, for, for one side, especially when we think about international events, we want to send the best of the best that we have in EMEA. But right now, we do not know who to give that credit a credit for. Yeah, and we want to see the team showing up when they do get to Shanghai. But they've got a little bit of time to practice before then. You know who's not going to be showing up today, though, guys? Who? Clove. Clove Aww. is not available. Clove is going to be hopefully starting in EMEA next week. And I'm, I'm disappointed because I was thinking maybe we get to see Angel bust out the Clove. They needed to nerf him after the A's. They know that giving Cl uh, Angel Clove is uh, too, too strong of a weapon for him. Okay, I think I think Clove could be played by a lot of duelist type teams that love playing lots of duelists. I think mm. they'll they'll run Clove for sure. Yeah, that's what the thing when I was looking at Clove's kit, I was like, oh, this is a build. I know it's a controller, but yes. they don't necessarily feel a hundred percent controller. Like I've quite enjoyed playing them in Deathmatch, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's a it's an agent that is also created to bring some. Um, some more easiness for people when you're playing in rank to make the role more attractive of player and controller. It's basically yeah. <laughs> the has been designed so you're, for me. You're it's not being designed for you okay, guys. It's not being designed for these guys. It it's been designed by me, and I'll, I will I will take it. Same with Harper. Even if the poster plays Harper, if Harper is good enough for poster, it's good enough for me. Let's take a look though now at um, at comps in a different sense mm. because Kakuka, I have a game. Often. I have a game and I named it Do You Come Here Often? And I got the idea after um, Foot ran that composition in Lotus with no initiator. And I thought, let's actually take a trip down memory lane and think about all the crazy, well, some of the crazy compositions that we've seen uh, from teams from, from EMEA throughout this lovely time. So I'm going to put you two to the test. Uh, and of course, the people watching from home. If we have seen the comps that I'm going to show you right now, we're going to do a dummy run so people understand how this is going to, to work. I'm going to show you a composition, as you're seeing right here. Sage, Cypher, Omen, Jet, and Viper. The map that it was played was Lotus, right? And then I'm going to ask you, was this comp played before? 
Yes, yes. it yes. was played before. Exactly. I will give you extra points if you if you're it able was, to give me the team and if was, they won. It was foot. They won. I forgot the score. I think it was 13-7. You should be that excited. Because but. it was against KC and I, I did some preparation stuff, so I revisited that map. Okay, lovely. Uh, so if we have that, let's, uh, you know, if everybody understood how this is going to work, let's just jump into our first composition. Let me see if I have this written down. Um, this is a composition for Haven, and it has Breach, Race, Omen, Jet, and Chamber. When was the last time they played Haven? I, I just miss Haven, okay? okay. So, well, I, I what do you think? That you always put me on the spot in these quizzes yes. and bring up things from from two years ago that no one cares about. Um, I'm kidding. This I care, Josh. <laughs> I feel like this was a did Fnatic run this? No. Okay. Uh, well, I'm out then. No, no. Do do, do you think it, it was? Do you I have think to it say, was? No, 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 no. You don't have to say who it was. Has this been played? Has this I been could, played? In EMEA? In EMEA. Maybe not. I could definitely see like a, an American or an APAC team running this. Uh, no initiator, double duelist with Breach. I'm here. Well, Breach is an initiator. Yeah. What do you think, Frankie? Not um, really. I feel like with this competition, I hate and I See, I'm so self-conscious about the fact that I'm going to be completely wrong about everything, but the race feels really off to me, so I'm going to say no. Okay, so you're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because, like uh, yes. This was actually a composition that Giants played last year against Navi, and they won with this composition on Haven. Just, you know, it was not the first time that we saw something that we didn't expect. But let's move on to our second composition. Uh, this is going to be uh, Ascent, right? And we have Sova, again, a double duelist, uh, Race and Jet, Killjoy and Omen. No, 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 what do you think? You've got to be quick, you've got to yes. be quick. It was played. Why not? No, it wasn't played. It wasn't played. Well, unlucky for me. Still, <laughs> you know, you need to keep, you need to put some reason The thing in. is, I was watching the better region last year, okay? Oh, 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 hang on a second. So we've dropped the whole our region now, have we? Well, I said, I said the better here, region, being your region, not so, our region, okay. the other region. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to let that one slip because, uh, yes, this composition uh, was not played, okay? This one's um, I'd, I'd make up, but made up. And then uh, we have a third one. Sounds like something Giants would Just to now. see if you can get... Just to see if you can get something right. Um, so, <laughs> let, did, you, did they spoil it? <laughs> a little bit. I think we did a little bit of no, spoiling No, no, it's there. all right. Did we, we, we skip okay. past that one. We skip past that uh, one. It's, Yumpy was there. Uh, what team does he play for again? <laughs> Unless it was like an elaborate bait troll thing and you... you faked it. So, Production, why you do this so, to me? Uh, I, I uh, to composition for Split. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reina, Breach, Viper, Raze, Astra. I mean, you saw it. Yeah, I mean, it was Team Liquid, right? Yeah, okay. So. Do you think they won? Uh, well, it was Liquid era with Scream. I'm going to say no. Okay. You, you know what? I'll give you that. They did not win, okay? But we are down to see more crazy compositions. We want to see uh, the teams cooking up. Uh, so we'll be back with this uh, segment further in the future. Yeah, I've, we'll I've, work on it a I little bit. I feel like at the end of that, we discovered that, yes, Josh comps here often, and, and clearly I do not. Uh, speaking of compositions, like Fnatic has been running new compositions on Vine Split and Breeze, and, and they've been cracking out the trademark uh, fantastic Utah combos as well. Yeah, I think... Fnatic was really, they're known as one of the teams that kind of innovate. When a new map comes out, oh, Fracture's coming out, they're kind of like setting the meta on that. And that's something that we've come to really expect from Fnatic is, is how they kind of make their composition to have really good synergies. We're going to see it here time and time again. Gecko Flash partnered with Sky Flash, and then they're, they're fighting off of both. And the reason why this works so well is because you have to turn from the Sky Flash, which means that the Gecko Flash is going to blind you, or you have to shoot the Gecko Flash, which means you're staring at the Sky Flash. We see this right here. We see the combos just coming nice in play. so strong, and then they're layering more and more util. We're going to see Mosh Pit going down. Leo's going to end up getting an ace here. It's just so good the way that they fight together with these combinations. So as, you know, kind of not great that they looked last week on uh, Breeze, overall, especially with these combos and synergies, they're looking really good. And seeing Leo playing on the Gecko, it fits him so well, and it turns uh, as our minds back to where he was uh, last year. Maybe they did not innovate in the compositions, right? But they do innovate with what they have prepared. So it's lovely to see that they're cooking up something for this year as well. If you stay ahead of the curve, you don't need to change the curve. 
She's going to work on it. I've got time to work on it, actually, because earlier on, Kakuka checked in with Gentle Mates Natank to look at some of their gameplay. So, LA, let's check it out. Hey everyone, I'm here joined by Natank from Gentlemates, and today we're going to be talking about something that you and Gentlemates like a lot, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the double duelist. So first of all, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? You ready for today? I'm, yeah, okay, I'm ready. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so tell me, why do you guys choose so much this double duelist? What makes it so strong that you decide to run it? Um, I mean, this is something strong that Loud uh, used to do um, before, so we just took the plan, like, we, we saw in them that uh, it's a possible choice to play double duelist and the coach thought that uh, I'm a very aggressive uh, player so it was a good fit for, for the team. <laughs> yeah, it suits me and uh, yeah, it's fitting well with the team. Uh, so me and Takas can take a lot of space for the team and giving us a round. Yeah, I'm going to show you a round uh, of a couple of weeks ago when you played against BBL and I want you to talk me through what's going on, what the plan is, because I think everything that you mentioned comes into play uh, in this round. So I'm just going to play it and you can tell me what the plan is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. So you start round number six, uh, you decide mm -hmm. to go for A, but you're pretty split. How do things work from here? Um, we take A win real fast um, with the flash. So they can't they can't cross wine mm -hmm. uh, on this one. I don't know why I don't take it first. Uh, maybe we just thought it's better to play safe. Maybe we it's uh, like a uh, anti strat because maybe they maybe will play heavy main mm -hmm. depending on the teams. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a little bit of speed. Uh, Whalers mm -hmm. is going to use his ultimate also to gather some information. Yeah. You have two players and you use your wall onto A. Yeah, what do you want, want to achieve with this? We want to fake A. So on B they might uh, have timing and we want to to fake. Yeah, the, the eight bomb take, and uh, I save my ult, which is good for the. <laughs> and you keep going, right? And you wait here. Yeah. Why is that? I mean, like at this point, I'm like, okay, A is free, guys. So, what we're gonna do? It or the fake is gonna work, and they're gonna go B, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. But um, finally, I think they got stopped. Yeah. Or they got. Uh, yeah, they they just come back. Well, you still have all that space, and also Bayas yeah. is, is waiting for you, right? Yeah, it's like if we go B, then maybe I got timing later to mm -hmm. just uh, come from the back. Mm -hmm. If they just leave all A, if we succeed to plant on B. Mm -hmm. But there's something very interesting happens here, right? They and decide to take from mid. Yeah. Tell me. At this moment, I'm like saying, uh, okay, guys, uh, just come back on me on A. They are not retaking it. Uh, mm -hmm. We could just go A side. I have all A side. Just need you need to focus on short and garden, which. Uh, and I said uh, I'm gonna help you guys with my ult. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned that, right? Because you just wait in this spot, and when you're going to take all that space, this is when you ult. Yeah, yeah. I cleared all the corners in case they're, they're close, and then I ult to help, and uh, so they can go on site easily. Yeah, I this like. this looks very explosive, and it definitely worked against BBL. But for yeah. example, what do you think went wrong when you moved on to split and you played against Casey? Um, I mean. Against Casey, it's different. Like they have such a different game style. They are playing stacked all the time together. It's like a, a big swarm walking together. You know, like uh, they are always a group of three or four uh, when they retake and stuff. So it's totally a different game style than BBL, which is good. Um, so what did you learn about this match? Um, we learned that it's good to watch Casey play. Like um, you can find solutions to counter them. But it's totally different when you play it. Like they have, um, like it's. You can see, like okay, they 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 play all together, and you can maybe find timings or whatever. But when they retake, on when they retake uh, areas together, it's so strong how they do it. Like the micro is maybe uh, so important for them, and they just do it all together. Like one jumping and two guys peeking, and yeah. Yeah, they do it. They're doing it very well. So well, now you've lived through it, right? So uh, <laughs> yeah. we hope that you improve that for today. <laughs> Best of luck today. Thank you. Even if the mates have improved things, is it going to be enough to beat Fnatic, who have also been making some improvements of their own computer? Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be a tough matchup for both of them because of existence in one side. I think that he's going to come very, very well prepared. And every single thing that Fnatic has not been able to iron out for today is definitely going to come to fruition for a gentleman. I disagree. I think Fnatic's going to come in swinging. I think their floor has raised significantly, and I was really disappointed with how lackluster Gentlemates looked, especially picking Icebox and running a 2022 comp last week. Well, it's 20. 24, so let's get this show on the road. Fnatic versus Gentlemates. And after a slow start to stage, 
one. The gentlemates are looking to pick up the pace. They might be the underdogs in this matchup, but they'll be looking to burn hot on the stage. Yes, that was a Phoenix reference and disrupt the black and orange. Coach Assistance, he always looks at the smaller details of his opponents, but has he found the antidote to what Fnatic want to do? Because they are here and they're going to try and keep the ball rolling all the way to Shanghai. A loss today could mean disaster, but practice is back on track. So expect Fnatic to be fully back too. I think that I'm looking at I'm looking at Jake there. I thought he, he did a little bit of a sigh and then he and then he straightened up. <laughs> He's fine. They can hear us. Okay. And this is a lot more serious now. Existence and Alma. Sorry. I like to stare at people's faces. It's it's become a problem in public. But the fist bump there, the huddles are starting and we were just talking about gentlemen's steel mm. and you were you were a little bit pessimistic. I was a little bit pessimistic because I these are both teams, actually, like of all the teams that are kind of in the league at the moment, they're the teams that are innovating the most, right? So we see Gentlemates running a lot of double duelists, a lot of kind of like not really conventional plays, and then you have Fnatic that are have been the trendsetter, and both of them didn't really bring out super, like a lot of new things recently. So that's kind of what we're looking for to see here. Have they spent the last week changing things up? Yeah. And we're we're going to see you know, Gentlemates picking Breeze against Fnatic as Fnatic lost that against Giant X last week. Yeah, exactly. No surprises on the bands here. Breeze is going to be the first match, as you say, and Joss is, it makes a lot of sense, right? But I think that uh, knowing that both teams have these perma bands, the preparation for the other uh, five maps, it, it's, it has to be there, right? That's gonna, that's when it's gonna come to fruition. Another thing to mention, when you talk about the innovation, these are the only two rosters in the entirety of the region that did not make roster changes within the five players um, that are, are uh, a play in um, coming into 2024. So that has to give them some edge, right? And some room for improvement and some innovation, as we're saying. Talk to me about this Breeze pick then. Do you think mm. the Gentlemates didn't make much of Dirk on Yoru last week? I am, I feel like they're walking into a trap here. I think when they see Fnatic losing, oh wait, is this like a, is this something we can exploit? Is this something that is, you know, Fnatic not feeling super great on it? But when we look at how they lost, Fnatic, it's not that they lost just because they're bad at the map. They lost in like a very unconventional way. They were missing shots. They would go in with three, four, five people blind, two people swinging into them, miss like 15 bullets on them, and then instantly get traded out. So I, I feel like they're walking into a trap here. Yeah, there's no changes in the compositions as we're seeing, as we're expecting. If the preparation is here for both of the teams, it has to come into fruition. We need to see a Durka that is feeling comfortable on the attack, that is having the effect uh, that he needs to have. And rightfully so, if they're starting on the defense, he needs to have some edge. I think that we've had so many good showings of what a Yoru can do in a map like Breeze. We need to see the Durka that once was probably the best duelist in the entire world. Why are we not seeing him as the best in duelist in the entire world I don't world think right he's now. comfortable enough. I think that we also hyped up this Euro for him. So, well, he hyped it up and the rest of Fnatic as well. But now when we saw him play, it was a little bit like Lester. He, he didn't feel as comfortable as he was before in other agents like Jet and obviously Ray's. I don't necessarily 100% agree with that. I feel like he was comfortable enough. It, it did really come down to just missing shots. We, we did see him making a few good clutches as well, like the flash through the pyramid on A and, and getting that one versus three. But it's just they have flash combos they just can't convert for some reason. Well, you know what? We get to see a battle of the Euros. Who's going to have the better one, Takas or Durka? It's going to be a very interesting story. So let's start telling it with our casters, Pansy and Hypox. Thank you so much. Lovely to see Frankie out here, joined by Steel and Kukuka on the desk. Mike, this, I, I think the desk summed it up well. It's a turning point in the season yeah. now. Teams need wins. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think the biggest thing from last week, I think the, the, the elephant in the room almost is the Icebox comp for Gentlemates. I think it signifies kind of a, a requirement now for exploring different compositions, maybe catching up, updating a little bit. And that's not to say, you know, the Phoenix hasn't worked in certain areas, but yes. just showing kind of an awareness of what's going on around them, what other teams are doing, what's working well for other teams, and trying to adopt a little bit of that themselves. Now, you come across to the other side, obviously Fnatic have been a little shaky to kick things off. So there still is an opportunity here for Gentlemates to not necessarily come away with a, a, a like a clean series win, but at least draw some blood, maybe instill some sort of confidence. Yeah, I think that's the key element, isn't it? Just we're looking at what takeaways we're seeing here. I know a lot of people are looking for one Durka to look comfortable 
on Yoru to look confident on this roll. And beyond that, see Fnatic kind of playing up to expectation on the other side. Can Genomates be disruptive? So far, Duck's being played in oh, fantastically. This is... What an opportunity to shine. Three One back to back. Remaining. That's confidence. And that was very well played. Finding just a space in the wall to play from. And the spikes left in no man's land. Sadly for Logan, it's not looking likely. And no, not going to happen. Dirk are off to a blistering start here. You get one of those. With a Viper Wall like that and a Yoru, yep. you get one of those rounds. Comes here to kick things off on Breeze. And four kills on the board for him. Great progress towards the ultimate already. And so I guess uh, we're obviously looking for numbers today from Durka, looking for comfort, looking for that impact once again, sure. It's definitely what you want to see coming out of the pistol round from him. You do want to see him confident. Yeah. Back in a position to do some damage here to gentle mates. Oh, gosh, early progress towards the ult as well. That's, that's a big factor going forward. I wonder if he gets the opportunity to utilize it. Again, we're speaking about alts. You also look on the other side, right? You're looking at the tank there as well, building early, potentially Takas. Talked about it at the start as well. I love that uh, little video content we got from Bayer there, talking to Natank about that idea behind the double duelist, how they kind of lend towards it because they liked what Loud did. It complemented that aggressive style that they like to play with. Right now, we're not going to see it in this round more than likely. I mean, we've only got a Ghost and a couple of Classics, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's not really in effect here. But I like the concept. I want to see it executed, though. Well, Marshall as well in that, so there is oh, a chance right. to at least find a pick. Yeah. Whether or not it will come through. I mean, Takas fell at the first hurdle, yeah. unfortunately. Tank gonna try and make work with it here. I think initially maybe it was spotted from Chronicles and so no, no real desire to give away a peek, but Alpha's still curious. Yeah, but you know what happened to the cat. You've got to be a little careful here. Most are forced away. They're taking space here, gentlemen. They're trying to work the map, see if they can punish anyone from Fnatic for over peeking, trying to take too much information back. Gonna have to somewhat respect <sighs> this. Yeah, nothing really gifted to the tank there. He was desperately trying to find that opportunity. No one really opening up here. Fnatic sitting very, very disciplined on this. Charles here uh, for Durka to find more, actually. Boaster doesn't remaining. take him away. Yep. Down and he a. has claimed another. That's Whaler's gone, so right on the verge of the ult now. Two away for himself. Logan, that's quite a bit of timing here. Oh, I couldn't quite connect. Ten seconds so again, you're looking for Durka flawless. to build, and I think Boaster even allowing that there. They are trying to get that ult coming through, and Andalusia flawless here in the second. Fnatic very disciplined there. Yeah. You can five alive. No further investment required here. Like you said, we're actually one away from the ult now for Durka as well. So a big tool at their disposal, potentially for a retake. Obviously on the defense, not really going to see Durka go crazy into the back lines. Well, maybe if he's feeling himself after the first couple of rounds. Ten seconds left. There's always a chance. Beautiful round, boys. Beautiful round. Keep this up. And the game plan there from Boaster. Keep things as clean as possible. Well, Gentlemen, it's going to be able to disrupt that at all. Let's see what Dirk is up to, yeah. All the space here, being proactive, don't mind it. Almost played in by the shot behind him. The timing could be excellent in this. He's going to hear all these steps too. They're, they're sitting so deep towards A, yeah, Mike. They they're, they're allowing this space to be taken to put this in motion. And I think the timing might be right. I don't think Logan's even considering coming back through the camera. We'll spot this over. There's an issue, right? There's still an issue. This they have taken over the side. The pressure's on. Fantastic flash from the tank. You can go deeper here with the ult if you want to. I wonder if he's considering it. Yeah, no. Takas the one to find Durka. Chronicle already considered. Yeah, they're eyeing this one up. Couldn't connect the tank. Really good round here. Again, it is the bonus, but they did come in with a couple of rifles for Fnatic. So does Boaster and Leo get anything out of this now? We'll look to do some damage here, force the repurchase at all. The tank and Takas that will be the first. Any ones that have taken any damage just yet. But Gentleman is fairly comfortable to sit back on this. It doesn't look as if Fnatic are really too urgent in terms of hunting things down. No. Toxins going up. Yeah, Boaster and Leo are happy to just see if one's gifted. Mm. Toxin screen down. Well, maybe actually, no, as they drift towards the other end of the tube. Ooh. Careful. You want to keep those rifles up. Uh, Leo already finding the tank. Takas going to try and stop the rot. Boaster going to try and dip away. Low HP, but he's been caught there. Gentlemates, very nice response. Again, bonus round from Fnatic, though, but they took the space there. Like what I've seen from Gentlemates. Yeah, for sure. It was, uh, again, I don't think this is something that should have come as a surprise too much, but how deep the tank's able to get is what's really, really surprising there. Mm. 
Obviously, Tak has to want to follow up on him. One enemy remaining. Yeah. So far, so good. And also in a tank. Not having to burn that ult there. Nice to keep in the back pocket coming yeah. into the buy round. Yeah, again, a kind of tempered aggression. Didn't want to over overheat too much. Yeah. But like I said, there was a chance to really dig a little so deeper there. Oh, speaking of ults, though, here. Durka go and walk about. He's, he's now noting where Logan's playing from. Yeah, that was the downfall. On, oh, and he's teed up Chronicle. Look at that. The hunting squad behind the ult, setting that emotion with real intent to shut it down. Now they can sign a funnel You're in dead. towards the site. It's not really looking to take this back, but it looks like gentlemen do want to take a fight here, though. This isn't something they're willing to just instantly get the plant down for, but Durka in the back lines. Dispashing of Takas. And that spike yet to be planted. Ayaz drifting, trying to find a little bit of safety, but there isn't yeah. much safe here. I was going to say, a weird stalemate here where actually there might be a chance for the spike to make its way all the way through the defender's spawn. A little bit of hesitation here, maybe. Chaotic in the comms. No chance. Bears is still here. He's found Durka. He's looking for a second, but going to get shut down here. Spike dropped. Whalers left to try and recover this, and not much left to do. Fnatic will find a third. Love that call, though, Mike. Using the ult there from yeah, Durka. I was, I was surprised. And again, even you look at the minimap initially, then you think, yeah, it's going to be difficult to guarantee some value off this, be it information, be it a kill on the other side. Oh. Chronicles here so quickly. Yeah. Love seeing that, though. We were talking about Fnatic elevating, looking like they're playing as that five again, backing each other up, coming up with concepts, and even the adaptation from the bonus to the buy, right? The bonus round went through Tube, didn't have the success, denied by the camera coming out of Logan. Okay, next round, we've already adjusted that, we've identified it, and let's problem solve. Like seeing it, it's a good course correction. And I mean, Chronicle now two away from his ult. He's making nice progress there, and that was the tank burning his in that round. So again, if you're looking at the... Smaller benefits too. This is a good tick in the box for Fnatic, but generally still with enough of a purchase here to be a problem, to be a threat, but patience. I think they're trying to figure out what they're up against here. I mean, almost, yeah. I mean, it's in the tank with a sheriff in hand. You almost... Give him the gun, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, especially for the sheriff. Give it to Logan. You know what he's capable of. Utility <laughs> invested over towards B here, so we boast up to try and slow this down if yeah. it's all possible. Yeah. It is all just a oh, fake, nice. though. Drone and the clone sent in. Now, actually, Bayaz. I must wait a moment. A chance here to catch something potentially in mid here as Alpha to figure out the timing. Yeah, look at these rotations. They are Spike so quick to this a. as well. Chronicle are going to deny that first step towards at least the plant that they were potentially they going the for. Here. Yeah, they absolutely have. There's the support systems already there. Durka slipped the net too. Spike. Chip damage done. Chronicle not really backing away. Could have maybe waited. Untradeable there. Backline dealt with. Gentlemates digging in their heels. Finally, Alpha corrects the ship, but it's Bayaz on the lurk. This could be huge. Timing everything, though. Whalers and, and Takas need to keep their attention focused this way. Good turn from attention from Alpha, but still, there's, there's no reason to deny for now. Push! A booster. He's got this. He's got this every day of the week. Fnatic, fantastic. On the playback through with the red ball clutch coming in for Boaster. But keeping cool there in that really quite hectic round at the end. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, there's a chance here for Bayers in a position. He's the one to invest the drone to really sell that fake. And unfortunately, I think he just misses the mark a little bit. I was talking about maybe catching Chronicle ahead of this A site here, but Chronicle's like, well, we know it's a fake. I'm just charging through mid here. It's going to be the weaker area of the map for Gentlemates. He's the one to actually come through, prevent the spike from being planted initially. Clutch. Yeah, it does come through with two, but again, in terms of the positioning, just played out of this round. And again, the one thing I will say when you're talking about Fnatic, and, and again, I think their recent form has left a little bit, you know, a lot of people wanting a bit more, but they suffered a loss on this map just last time we, we saw them. They've clearly been working on, it feels like a lot of kind of synergy-based stuff, the amount that they're playing off each other, the quick rotations, the correct reads, a lot of the fundamental stuff, the kind of more um, in-game leadership stuff, the responses, the protocols look solid so far. But it's hard to take contents because sure. we don't know where gentlemates land. Well, I mean, the other thing is you can only ever really call it an off day when you see the next reappearance of that map, the performance, yes. how Fnatic approach it, and whether or not they're able to uh, clean certain things up. I mean, already here, Durka, I'd probably say it himself, had a stinker last time. Yes. Individually, numerically. Ah, but look at him now. Starting to feel comfort. Reading gentlemates quite nicely. This adaptation towards middle, not feeling the pressure on the extremities. A commitment through tube as well, noted. 
So again, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. There's no freebies here. Durka is everywhere. Omnipresent on the map. And Bosa now knows that, okay, mid might be next. Got to be careful of this. Everyone in the right place. A tank what with a belt to right back, though. Keeping seconds left. some safety to this. They've got themselves a plant. They need the backup to it. And Logan with the Sheriff. It's a quick exactly. reminder, but it's a stark one. This guy's nasty with it. And that's what I'm talking about. Alpha's fallen. That's an upgrade. Can Chronicle and Leo break oh, back the through? Didn't land. Actually landed next to the wall here, not on the back side of the pyramid here. But Leo has found one, the tank will fall. Chronicle next to try and find Takas. Ooh, this is so close, this is so sketchy. Logan's a problem for later, they still need to clear past Takas. And Leo's taken down, oh my word! A reminder of who these two are. Clutch always capable when they are standing. Throw Alpha, throw anyone in there. This is looking like Fnatic of old a little here. We're seeing some of that nice chemistry between them, but a dicey round towards the end. Some of that individual prowess highlighted there by Gentlemates. I mean, Gentlemates made a bloody good go of this, to be yeah. honest with you, of what they had. After the start. Yeah, I mean, two openers found from Durka. A fantastic shot from the tank and two follow-ups, actually, from Logan. Still enough One utility at their disposal to dislodge this post-plant hold of Gentlemates. We do come away with that. Like I said, a lesser purchase here, Time so... Damage done, but now they have some ultimates at their disposal. Takas wants oh, to potentially lead the way here. Maybe going to couple it with Bayaz and attack. Anyone. Anyone could potentially work off the back of this. Chronicle going to be spotted. He's going to answer back with his ult. So what does Takas do with this? He wants a bit of everything. It was all a fake, all a ruse towards A. They are the fakey people, boys. Yeah. And how do they plan to clear the back of Pillar? Takas actually has a pocket to play from, and Logan's already found Leo. The tank, going to find Boast up. Durka, Alpha, and Chronicle. Oh, God. Durka can't stop now. After a shocking week before, looking like he wants to correct numerically. And Dirk is answering back with his own ult. Spotting out the players, and Alpha already going to find Logan. They're chipping away at the numbers here. Chronicle towards Bayaz. It's all information free flowing and no plan, no time on their side. Gentlemates in a bit of a predicament, but a shot like that could certainly help. And Durka now found he's banking on Chronicle to cut through this space as quick as he can. Flash and the clone still to work. Oh, what is that? Durka snappy to diff Takas here. And Chronicle, he's found the tank as well. The flash off flash. both ways, actually. Oh, and the tank, he's isolated one. It's a 1v1. Durka against the tank. Heavy hitters for both sides. 30 seconds. The time. Of course he has. Confident in his choices. Oh, does he even catch the cross? He's considering a lurch in middle. He might catch side cross. Oh no, he's not swinging no. the bridge. Oh. 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 A different oh, day, that would have been a shot hit, but he's taking his time here, and rightly so. The flash comes in, he's blind. Pre-fire, spam, and the tank's got him! Durka caught at the very end, the Red Bull clutch coming through for the tank. I mean, this flash is just so deep, it catches full effect on Durka. Confidence from the tank to follow up, and I think actually Durka hits the panic button a little bit here, trying to spam yeah. onto the angle in case the tank swings. Anyone else? Chaotic exchange over towards B site here. And this scene felt like Fnatic were going to be able to hold on there. Doesn't come to fruition, though. Gentlemates, find a second. We'll call a timeout here. Mm. Have touch base. Hopefully we get to see the perspective. I, I imagine it's... Actually, it's Bayaz doing a lot of the talking, it looks like. Wondering if it was more of an existence timeout, pumping the brakes, maybe identifying something early they wanted to correct. Again, you'd argue that we are seeing the tank kind of saving a couple of these rounds here. Made the last one possible for sure. And maybe wanting that overall approach now. Yeah, a lot of talk from existence. Going through options, notepads out, having a chat. What page are we on? I can't count I that. Say, yeah, we're still at the top. Okay, so we're in the early too stuff. Deep just yet. Yeah, we're not in the OT strats. <laughs> Yeah, Fnatic come out of that now with three ults of their own. Mm. The Pit, the Hunter's Fury, the Newell Theft, the Alpha as well. Not necessarily game changes, but just closing down that first ult cycle now with Durka and Chronicle. Already spending theirs. But yeah, I mean, previously, Gentleman was able to actually coordinate a lot of pressure towards yeah, A here to try and pull off that fake. And even so, still two members for Fnatic over towards B. Unable to really slow that down, though. Don't get in my way. Pit towards mid. Don't 
don't know if, I, I imagine Durka might have heard some steps here. I don't know how meticulous they're going to be clearing through this. Durka, the timing's everything. Fake teleport. He, he has no idea. Oh, now he certainly does. The tank turns, but it doesn't matter. 2 for one discount for Fnatic. Yeah, they lose Durka, but they take down the tank and Takas. The tips of the spear are now gone. What can the three now achieve? This is brutally hard to try and get through. It's here. Awful timing for the poison orb to be dropped. Camera taken out. And Durka punishes. Standing ahead. Oh, from Bayaz. No Alpha's whereabouts roughly. But Hunter's Fury oh, sent from afar. Oh, yeah. It's just a clean oh, up here. <laughs> you talk about combination work. Alpha teed up by Leo. We're seeing some vintage scenes here, Mike. Nice to see that coming back into effect. It was something that we saw kind of the desk alluding to as well. Kind of the combos that they were known for bringing out. Steel highlighting it. Uh, uh, Kukuka on the desk kind of discussing it too. But we're seeing them kind of... I, I, it almost feels like a relapse, but in the best way. Like, we're seeing some of the stuff that made Fnatic such a difficult team to deal with. <laughs> so I was loving the, 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 the 4 XP speed, yeah. <laughs> Coach POV. Yeah, I mean, it, coming back, we, we talked about obviously Durka having an off performance previously. Uh, Fnatic have never been that kind of individual you want a piece of sort of team. It's, it's, it's when they work as a unit that they do look best. Cool. Again, the one to punish Takas trying to throw a Marsha in to an eco round. Retrieved here. Alpha, a solo task to hold down. Eh? He does have a little bit of support further afield. So gentle ways have their sights set towards him. Still got that same vertical trip, or is it a little deeper this time? Just looking at the... No, so there's one over towards default here. Gentlemen, it's got to be careful on the way in. There we go. Audio heard. He's actually been kept safe by this. They're creeping oh a little God. bit closer, but he's not under scrutiny yet. You can see the same reveal. Rinse, repeat, and succeed. Go take down Bayaz. But the tank's actually broken through the back lines, but by this point, the support system's coming into play. You already have that rotation from Durka. Sadly, for Gentlemates, they're not finding any sort of impact in these rounds here. Very robust from Fnatic. And the protocol's just on point here. You said Alpha not feeling any pressure whatsoever. And the recon coming through at exactly the same time, setting him up for further success. <laughs> Tough now, five round deficit. This into round ten. Good job. Good job. Nice day. He's only really in the tank of Bayers that have any sort of tangible funds to take away. Uh, Dirk is sitting on sixteen to six. Yeah. There's been a lot of question marks around this man, but there's a lot of credit to be put to this. He's having a very good game now. Remember last time Durka went on this walk, he was backed up. He had the likes of Chronicle by his side. And look at the response from Fnatic. It is not just one. Alpha's out in the middle. This is going to be a brawl and a half. Bloody hell. Is this deathmatch here? Yeah. Boaster's out there finding the tank. Okay, looking to maybe back away from here. I love this, though. Even just the sound cue to make a couple members of Gentlemates turn. We'll give Boaster a freebie here from Double Doors. Now, that's the paranoia, right? You're clearing all the way back through your own spawn, basically. We'll explore towards beach. <laughs> Durka still a nuisance. Dips his toes and gets out. Chronicles are double down as well. Takas will fall. And these are the rough rounds where gentlemen can't even have a say in it. They don't even get a chance to set up. The default just completely shut down before it has any chance to take effect. And kind of, uh, I don't think these two are going to get much luck here, if I'm honest, Mike. But does this look more comfortable from Durka? Or is this that gentlemen aren't the same? You know, sort of challenge. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, a lot of the examples we saw from Durka was just left. straight up whiffing, not not yeah. hitting shots, not being, you know, as as clean or uh, on point as we have seen Last him in the past. Standing. Uh, this again, putting himself into yeah. positions where he can succeed once again. So obviously, his confidence isn't knocked. But yeah, definitely individually, Ten he is certainly left. delivering this time around. Uh -huh. Been a couple of really nice pieces around this, though. Yeah. It, it, and it, as I said, it's not just that individual effort. You're seeing the entirety of Fnatic behind it. And Bayaz is very blind, and Durka is there to put him out of the misery and close out the round. A, a, a strong lead, and again, I think it's, it's hard to take full context because 
Gentlemates are new to this still. Yeah, and what's rough is this is a round where it, it, Gentlemates are on a purchase. They have yes. four ultimates to use in this round. And that's the one that Fnatic decide to be very, very aggressive, make use of Durka's ultimate themselves. And double down on it, they're invested behind it. Chronicle's trying to swing again, Boasters coming out of double doors. It's, like I said, they are looking to secure these rounds. And like I said, that's one you want to take away from Gentlemates with these ultimates available. So they don't even get a chance to really set up, find Going any information through. across the map before Dirk is in the back lines. Okay, this time a little bit of a different look here, though. We are seeing the operator out in play for Durka. And the switch up of position, too. Alpha over towards that B site. Boaster there as well, back lines. But you're right, uh, the, the issue through. is that Gentlemates, yeah, they don't have a team running at them this round, but they're still operating with just, you know, a Sheriff here and there, a Guardian or two. It's so hard for them to have just a normal round here. Alpha trying to make a go of it, going to deny the tank instantly as well. Snake bite here, though, to slow things down behind it as well. They, they just can't get to the side. Look at the stall. Wailers finds a way in. Leo only going to be good for one. Traded out by Logan. Chronicle comes through. It's all on Durka. 1v3. You got some magic for us now. No plant in play. A quick TP. Hello. Oh, that's audacious. Good trade for Logan. They keep it safe. Three for Gentlemates here. Again, on the force as well. You expect this to come through in the previous. Ults get invested behind this with Gentlemates feel as if they have something to cling on to. Oh. Whalers is the one to open things up here. Two beautiful shots with the Guardian. They seem fairly... I mean, a lack of consideration, to be honest with you, on the side of Fnatic, that that was even a possibility. That goes there. So a chance here to recover, I guess. Well, the final hurdle for Gentlemates in this first half. Looking very different. Oh, potentially a 10-2, 9-3, and now yeah. on the brink of maybe closing this out 8-4. Do you feel like a big win for them? Oh, absolutely. To even sit at a four-round deficit. Timing on this. Yes. Interesting. Fakes one A not really working. I mean, Alpha's going to be happy sat there. He's been very, very comfortable at this point. A little bit more of an attention towards middle coming out from Durka, Chronicle, and Leo. Oh, you can see the ults coming in from Takas. Going to try and isolate on the site, see how Boaster handles this. He looks for the second line, and he finds the tank tripping. Oh, dear. It's a fumble from Takas and a tee up from Boaster. He'll take that every day of the week. And now middle is still a problem, though. Logan finds a little bit of value, but then Durka doubles down. Spike now left in a very tough position. And uh, yeah, Dirk is just denying all of this. I, I don't know what Whalers can achieve. Nothing. Yeah, that uh, fizzled out quite quickly there, Mike. I mean, fair play to Boaster. Catching, obviously, the kill onto the tank here as he tries to get ahead of the snake bite, maybe, or just brute force his way in, but nobody to follow up on that. Takas, maybe, uh, I don't know if he missed times just coming out of the ultimate, wanted to be around the corner, yeah. and he's kind of. I mean, I'll be honest, caught with his pants down, really, at that point, and Boast is allowed to fully reset off that mm. first kill because there's no follow-up to the tank. There's yes. no second player to draw Boast's eyes back towards main and allow Takas to really backstab here. But, like I said, you've got to credit the utility usage here. It's a 9-3. <sighs> Tough start here for Gentlemates. Yeah. Uh, this is to, their uh, map pick. Yeah, and have to make this composition Really, really excel on the defense here. Watch your eyes. We'll see. It looks like aggression's the name of the game, right? Out of charge. Looking that way. But initially, just throwing a few things at Fnatic. Let me see what sticks. I don't think anyone's been spotted just yet. No. About as just certainly. Paranoid about it, and now sees two progressing through tube. You can see the tank trying to come on over. B, maybe a support system through the door. Ready here with a flash. Mm -hmm. If they do open this door. But I'm looking at main as well. This split's going to be really tough, especially now Bears lost out. And the tank needs to win this fight. They're trying to back away. Really good flash. Going to find Alpha and try and progress the. Oh my word! Made a, a, a good attempt towards it, but they'd already lost out on main as well. The plant should be here. Whalers, so Logan, and Takas. There's a lot of presence in middle. I think Leo's waiting for this as well. Yeah. Dirk is able to post up on it as well. Tough angle to break. White swing. Nah, not going to get past Leo. Uh, Takas, you got something for us here. 1v3. 
Yeah, Leo's a little low, so 1v2.5. Tough with both his position, though. Yeah, yeah that's really yeah. rotten to deal with. There's, look, look at the, how much they're making him work for this. It's, it's so <laughs> horrible to try and deal with. Takas is getting nothing for free. Fnatic, make it up to 10. Looking, I mean, there was a little bit of threat there, Mike, but it, it was handled well. Yeah, it was. I mean, the tank has to kind of double down on this. He has to try and... Oh, beautiful shot there. Didn't cast it off screen, but Dirk's shot onto Bayaz was fantastic. But yeah, the tank has to try and convert that into a kill, unfortunately, in Tube to really have any sort of recovery in this round after Bayaz falls. A little bit of desperation here, but Fnatic double digits on the board. Oh, it's scary now, though, isn't it? Because it's just so quick to 11. You're going to need... I, I don't know what you can get in this. You, you feel like you're going to be facing 11 regardless, right? Yeah. So can they maybe get in the tank building that all up? Is there something they can try and bank on? But Takas not being given much room to work. If we've been praising Dirk, we've got to also look at the other side on the other Yoru for Takas. I think he's only got three kills so far. He's not been having the same sort of impact. And, well, he won't be getting a chance to make it up to four kills. Just it, it has been a bit of a lockout for him. Again, patience being displayed. Fnatic allowing Gentlemates to take a look, take a chance, but no one really going to be extending beyond that. They've already found Takas, who was drifting towards middle. Yeah, plenty of space and time for Fnatic to work with. And that's a preemptive rotation coming out. Dirkus fake only going to make this worse now. Damn. Got a TP all the way back across towards tunnels. And B's completely open. Yeah. I mean, you've got, you, you got to gamble sometimes, right? You've got to roll the dice. Maybe they were hoping there was commitment behind this. And they might be able to find Durka. That, that could be something. He's probably happy to just give it away, to be honest. Oh, oh. well. Well, guess not. <laughs> and Durka's almost got his ult. Oh, well, he's going to get it off the plant here. I got the fight. We'll have it available for the third round of the second half. 24 to 8, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely lights out. This is what you want to see. Really, with questions hanging over his head. Mm. Definitely what you want to see in the first map of this series. And he's not done just yet. Oh, that's the old. Oh, he is. Yeah, I mean, he already <laughs> had it from the plan, but still, yeah. But I've got to be a bit cautious in this. Don't want to overdo it. Yeah, Bayaz, last one here, and it's shut down. Fnatic, move on to 11. Gentlemates, it, it starts now, right? And it's 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 a very small window to try and make impact happen. Yeah, and unfortunately, with uh, the value that Fnatic have been able to get off Durka's ultimate alone, mm. I'm going to argue they're going to be able to find themselves a way into this round now, which will give them map point. Which will break the bank once again of Gentlemates. Almost in financial turmoil now in this half. This bonus round looking scary. With the ult to supplement. I mean, yeah, because well, it's the two scopes in the previous, so actually... <laughs> just two Bulldogs that's only the weak part of this purchase. <gasps> oh, <gasps> what? Where did that... Did, did the tank even Turkey see jump. him? I, he must have done, but it... <laughs> felt like a very small amount was seen. Flash. Well, Red by the tank as well. Really nice read from him. Expecting that pressure point to come in through the, the double doors. Gone. He's going to need some help here, though. He can't do it alone. Bayaz going to lean a little closer towards yellow. And the tank trying to stall out. Still worried about main, rightly so. Got to be careful. Oh, dear. Fnatic finding value elsewhere. Finding all the players trying to hit that back line. And now it's just Bayaz and Logan. They even lost out on the tank at the same time. Bayaz gets spotted, but he outdoes Durka. So a 3v2 and a pause. Fnatic looking to see if anyone's going to overextend yeah. here. Going to freeze once again. Cut sound. Durka. So you're trying to capitalize on selling the rotation here. But Bayas has given up a site. Well, he's crossed here. He's back up in towards two. Going to try and get proactive here in the downtime. That could cause a big left. issue, actually, yeah. if he gets himself in towards main. Obviously, with Alpha losing, there's a real lack of information across the site right now. A Fnatic previously did take the space behind site, but planting front side this time. Boast is seemingly aware of the possibility. Between the knife from Chronicle, the dart from Leo, it, it seems like the consideration yeah. was there. They cleared quite a bit. But still, it, it is a problem 
to try and hold this, right? They're kind of pinned on the side. Revo uh, roll reversal. And now you're going to see if Logan can maybe find some value. He's got a 1v1 to try and win. Boaster swings the wall and loses. Logan now gets to step a little closer. Bayaz needs to now take a little bit of the attention back. He can't do it. Chronicle sat safe from this angle. What can Bayaz do to try and break in? He doesn't have the dart to depend on. Can't reveal any of these positions. And he can't get past Leo. Fnatic up to 12 now. The bonus converted. And this is when the issues start, yeah. It's not been a hard game for Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> he sinks into his chair. Oh, that's Abs. what the tank saw. Fair play. Yeah. Yeah, Fnatic able to catch everything and more in mid as this rotation comes through. Gentleman's feeling a little frantic there. Maybe a little panicky. Obviously, the scoreline pressure has to be considered. Renting out Fnatic map point. Rifles here. There's Guardians to round it out, though. And the response. Instantly sent away in a tank. Not going to get what he wanted here, but it's trying to set this up. The pressure is coming through Tube, and it's working so well. Takas comes alive. Three quick kills off the back of that ult. Everyone's attention turned. They didn't expect that. Alpha, time to sit up in the chair, bud. He's got to right his go. wrongs uh. from the previous. He's not had the most fulfilling of games. I think he's only really <laughs> been on the receiving end of a couple of rounds. But now a chance to shine. Fire's OK, out. clean enough. 70 HP still to play with. Got a 1v3 now. One minute. He's aware Logan's going to try and find something coming out of B or mid. Mm. You can see on the X-ray there, Logan doing just that. Oh, this is a good cross now. Yeah. <laughs> so, gentlemen, cling to life here. But I like that, Mike. I like that play up tube. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was, it was, again, at this point, uh, gentlemen have to be decisive with this composition, but they just don't have the rounds mm. to play with. These are the sort of executions you expect to see to capitalize on that. Take maybe one or two members down or low on Fnatic and kind of weaken them ahead of a site here. Fortunately, I think we're only going to see maybe one or two of those. Depending how long this run does go. This goes here. Fnatic still. Fairly comfortable. I'll say that. There's two Bulldogs and a Guardian mm. to round this out. But Hunter's Fury and Durka's ultimate. So a chance to maybe synergize those. Durka to just uh, spoon feed an entry here on the back of the information. But I do quite like how deep gentlemates are sitting here. Uh, I'm a bit worried about I this, I think it's though. because of that ultimate, to yes. be honest. They're, yes. they're, they're almost playing to stack up on B and, and concede a lot of space on A. I'm scared of them walking mid. Yeah. This is, this is a coin flip of whether it works or not. Oh, this is so dangerous. It could work out. Hands in the air on the other side. They're going to hear the snake bite, though. I'll handle this. He did, yeah, Whaler's definitely Who's heard this. Yeah. All the timing. Oh, yeah, Durka did one spot, yeah, but mid. ping out. Onto Logan. But I don't know. I don't think they saw Whalers, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, Boaster has heard these steps Yeah. Now. But he's been found. Heard that utility earlier on, but the plant's going to come that in and the site's still under control. Oh, All came yeah. through from that. Chronicle going to invest. Alpha waiting for the support to come back through from main. See if anyone's yeah, going to try and hit that flank, but through. still. <laughs> oh! Whalers! Big shot on Durka. That's, that's two. Chronicle can't be res now. Yeah, information, but what's that going to do for you now? A slow death in the end. Didn't even get a kill credit. <laughs> it's rough. Can find it for a 2v4 now. Gonna okay, need some big boy aim here. Not going to happen, Logan. It's all on Leo, but he has to close the gap. And it's not going to happen. Gentlemates holding on now. Holding on. I think Chronicle just thinks he has another five to ten seconds here to obviously kill himself with the fragment. I believe he was seven HP before, obviously yes. pops the ult. He's trying to get himself down for an HP reset, but it draws Durka into an odd spot where he gets punished. Really, really awkward situation here. Yeah, and unfortunately at this point, the two remaining members forced back into main. No way to recover that. Okay, buy now in the hands of gentlemates. Economy left a little shattered on the other side. Really just that hero rifle with Chronicle, two Guardians and two Sheriffs. Leo's ult is still there, but on the other side, no ults yet. Bayaz one off from his. 
Be a little careful. Gentle mates, how disciplined, how patient are they going to be here? Fake maybe off the back of Boaster's wall. With the right Knife as well, yeah. Flash and the Vandal here, but yeah, we're really looking for him to make as much noise as possible, maybe pressure towards one. Zorn Bay has a little deeper, but the tank's still here. Uh, hey, look, gentle mate to run those fakes too. Goes Bay has to find Alpha, that's big. And holding on to the side is Natank. Yeah, Leo's out can go through, but it's not going to find too much. And Natank's closing the gap, he wants him gone. Gorgeous work from gentle mates here, not falling for the fake. This would need... Miracles from Chronicle. 1v5. <laughs> 30 seconds. Yeah, I think. 30 seconds left. About all she's going to write for this one. But gentlemen are holding on, Mike. I mean, oh. Chronicle. Took a lot of damage from that, though. Yeah. Down to 45. If he got it clean. Ah. There we go, Logan. Going to find it in the end. I'm curious to see the Hunter's Fury invested here, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not sure of exactly the timing of when Durka TP's in or when Bayaz finds the kill onto Alpha, I believe. Yeah, it's that kill right here. Oh. Durka TP's in, then the Hunter's Fury comes. So, yeah, little, little confusing here. Okay. Time for it. Fnatic will call a timeout on the back of that. Gentlemen, I have found three on the mm. bounce here. Okay. Now we've got a couple of vaults coming into play in the tank. Got his ready. Bayaz now has his. Viper's pit. I mean, it's on the horizon. It's not quite here yet. But Fnatic hitting the brakes. Deciding they want to check in. This is three in a row now. Don't let that scoreline get away. As said, roll your minds back to the desk. This is a turning point in the season. If you want to aim towards the top, if you want to get towards Shanghai, get those championship points, potentially. Got to start doing it now. Don't want to have any of those fumbles, losses, issues haunting you end of season. So 12 to 6, we slow things down. Fnatic going to be trying to, it looks like, go for a buy here as well. Maybe Leo lacking a little. For the Guardian, sitting this all around. It'd be nice to have him sit a little deeper, have the Hunter's Fury as a late round piece, but not going to be available. The other side, it's the tank and Bayaz. Their ultimates here. Like I said, up here for a flash into tube. And there is bodies on the other end of it. Bayaz is outside the door, but. Bayaz not caught by that, but he is going to swing this. Okay. One for one trade. But that it does create that issue, right? This map is vast. Those rotations take a long time. Taking that one player down will mean that gentlemen now need to be very cautious with where they commit their players. Yeah, you don't want to see a further Slightly commitment true. really towards a 1v1 or a, even an engagement ahead of sort of site pressure. Fnatic will freeze behind it. Whaler's drifting. Not looking to slow things down, just looking to shoulder towards the doors I here. Exactly That's the wall's invested. Wall theft as well to come out. And the tank on the back of it. A little ahead of the curve, honestly. He's not going to find anything. Most up. He's going to tag through, but that will leave the front door open for Fnatic. You are hearing Hunter's Fury come Spike through Chronicle. Planted. Unaffected by this. And Fnatic, with four standing, now gets into the post plant. Alpha's position could be dirty. Look at these potential flanks, yeah. You've got to keep in mind, Boaster as well. There's layers to this. The pressure through middle is the tank and Bayaz. Just try and keep Hope alive in the flash. I mean, the tank still somehow comes out of that. And Bayaz digs his heels in. They are not letting this round go, but it's still Leo alive. It's kind of great for him. He has no. to get out now off the tap. But here we go. Choices, choices. What do you do? Bayaz now. Halfway achieved. Who's going to diff who here? Bears out half, and he's been put to bed. Fnatic yes. took the timeout, and then they take the round 13 to 6 to close this out. Yeah, a moment maybe to just cast their breaths. We'll see, maintain composure, but convincing overall here from Fnatic, Lauren. Yeah, it is, and Lotus on the horizon coming up after this.
I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But, in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back to Valorant. It's been uh, quite the, the breezy show, shall we say so far. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like cut the pond momentarily. Uh, but yeah, Fnatic 
getting back to what we know them to do best, really, Kikuka. Yeah, exactly. I'm very happy to see what we saw. It looks like they've been to, uh, what's it called, marriage counseling, like couples <laughs> therapy, because actually all the mistakes, all the miscommunications that we could see happening before now has been translated to a lot of communication and everything working in unison. Yeah, this is the Fnatic that unison. we've come to expect. But on the flip side of that as well, we, they did win both the pistols and they did win a few clutches in there. So maybe if we went and, and had a few more rounds, maybe Gentlemates could have put up more of a fight, but it is definitely fanatic, the fanatic that we want to see. When we do look at Gentlemates, though, the fact that they did manage to cling on at least for a few rounds, it feels like the individuals of Gentlemates, they do actually start stepping up when things kind of hit the fan. It's just they kind of do it a little bit too late. They do do it a little bit too late. I think part of that, though, was how Durka was so aggressive. He was in such aggressive positions that he was able to find these multiple 2k rounds where he gets behind them or he's just down middle inserted in a very aggressive position and it really just disrupts the entire play from Gentlemates. Yeah, but I think that if we think about Derke and how he performed, I think it was beautiful. I think that you wanted to take a look at this, uh, Josh, in the round five. Yeah, so right here, this is just the limitation of, of the Phoenix wall from Gentlemates here. So Chronicle finding the gap here between the wall and the pyramid, being able to take this out and really just... The, the Gentlemates the entire game basically was trying to do these elaborate fake plans where the Viper walls on one side of the map, let's say on this round, for example, it was a B, and then they use the Phoenix wall to get out A, and they could do the, the inverse of that. So the, the Viper wall at, at A, and then they go out with the Phoenix wall at B. So a way to do that, other teams run like Astra and, and use a second controller for the smokes. But that's the limitations of it. That wall doesn't extend all the way. I think the Chronicle was brilliant uh, here, and I want to see it more today. But it's, is this... I guess this tendency to want to fake from Gentlemates, it's probably a coach existence thing, but is that kind of a waste of your util? Uh, it, it's not a waste. Definitely there is a there is a plan in everything that they do, and they also like to fake it a lot. But that, I, I think, it brings back to what we were talking before the match started, and it has to be Derke and the way that he performed. He was being supported by, by Leo, by Alpha, by everyone, uh, just to get some kills. I think that he also had a lot of effect, not only on the pistol round, which was beautiful, but we saw him TP. We saw him using beautiful ultimates, even on the go. To me, it does come down to comfort, and it's not only coming from him, but the way he was being set up. This one here is beautiful. He gets the tag, he can go for the kill, and and again, the ultimates that he was using and the shots that he was hitting, this is prime Durka. This is the Durka that makes Fnatic such a menace. You know, it's, it's again, it's the Fnatic that we saw last year that everybody should be afraid of. This is the Euro that we were promised. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of it came down to, it, yeah, he did get set up in a few different instances there, but as we see through these highlights, a lot of the plays are about like him to being, numerically. having Dirk good decision-making, good Spotting positioning, the now, and good find confidence. Logan. So the confidence to be in really aggressive positions, to be able to get those kills, sometimes get out, uh, peeking with his own flash, and mm. just moving around the map in a very aggressive manner, and obviously, getting all this info with the Eurowalti, making Gentlemates feel very stressed out, and he was able to convert a lot of those rounds this time, unlike but last week. I feel like uh, Durka is probably given Aimlab's warm up a run for his money right now because he's already shown us an absolute masterclass in aiming. He's got all the freedom in the world as well when he's warming up in this map. And it seems like that's kind of what he needed, really. Yeah, exactly. I, I love to see him in Lotus because if we look at the next map, uh, we expect Gentlemates to run again the double duelist. But if Dirk is having a good game, I think he, he's going to be uh, finding up a lot of space. And they have to focus on what the composition with two duelists is actually lacking and what how they can force those mistakes. Well, that's a good kind of question because Durka hasn't looked really good on Lotus, on Rays. We've seen him look good on other agents or other maps, but his Rays on Lotus, I feel like that's the big question mark. Is he going to show up? Are they going to change something out? Is Fnatic even going to drop Rays and go for something else? That is like, those are the questions that go into this because that is their weak point for sure. Some of the mistakes that I definitely saw when they were playing against Heretics with this composition is that there was a little bit of, I'm not gonna say, uh, it definitely the synergy wasn't there. Sometimes util was being used, nobody was following. The trust was not there, but if everything goes uh, the way that it went on Breeze, it should be just beautiful to watch. Yeah, and there we, we do see the rays. And then also for gentlemen. Okay. They're doing the same composition that they, they ran the last time they played this map, and it, it's it's with the double duelist, and no 
info initiator, no Sova, Fade, uh, just anyone that can get, even Sky with a the dog. You, they have to do all these blind traps on their defense side where they just have to just yeah. use their util. They don't know for sure if there's going to be enemies there or not. Yeah, actually, it's the Cypher coming in for Whalers, and Logan is going to be taking the, the controller, right? Solo controller with the Omen. They have to be extra aggressive. I don't think the Freddy attack is going to be uh, very complicated, but again, they have a lot of explosive power to get onto sites. The problem is that they do not have an uh, info gathering um, utility. Now they do have a little bit uh, with the Cypher, but that would be uh, more important on the defense. Well, luckily, we have got two spies in the midst. Well, actually, they're in a commentary booth and they're going to talk us through this one. It's Pampok. Best for you, Frankie and the desk. We'll do our very, very best here. Um, what do you make of this then, composition wise? I know we did a little bit of touch on Durka on the race, but I want to look at Gentlemates here. Where do you see the chances laying? Because your face is telling me not good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. um, I can see you though, I mean, it's, yeah, it's an adjustment. <laughs> uh, I, yep. I made a point at the start of the day. I want to see Gentleman start exploring variations of compositions, a little more diversity. So, sure, we'll pin that, call it a positive. The solo controller worries me. The, the cipher yeah. alongside the breach, maybe a little bit of. Uh, stonks, you could say, right. there. But um, yeah, well, the proof's in the pudding, ultimately. It is, and I'm seeing a very curious start here. Once you get your eyes in game, top left, folks. Fnatic, go and walk about. Somebody's being flashbanged somewhere <laughs> in the universe, but got the silhouette of it. Did some eights all the way through tree already, though. I mean, playing as five, just going to take this. It, 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 the flank is quick. Now, they, they, hey, they might they'll obviously be aware of it somewhat because of, you know, Whaler's yeah, utility. No, yeah, but no pressure coming through heaven and also this tripwire being dealt with. Oh, well, it, it, this looks like the normal start to a round almost, right? It's like, oh, it's just an A take. Oh, wait, no, Fnatic aren't actually on the attacking side. Um, but you can see their exchange of space. Most are seemingly aware, trying to keep control of some part of CT, but the issues is they're going to be locked off. They, they don't have favorable numbers to fight that. They do take down Takas, yeah. but they still need some more pressure on the site itself. We're looking for this post plant now. How much they have stunning flash from the tank. Gorgeous, you couldn't ask for a better one. And Whaler's deeper angle should have paid off there, but he doesn't quite get what he wants, but you can hear it ticking. Time. Uh, not going to be on their side. Yeah, this this should be done. I've got to say it, the tank having a belting round here. Genuinely very topsy-turvy, though. It was. The entire map gets flipped here on a site. Again, with no real resistance on the way in, there is still a chance for the tank to make use of the flash, and he absolutely does. Yeah, I love the decision making as well. Mm. The gentleman to dig a little deeper. Yes, they're punished on that aggression in, but they actually maintain control of heaven, which is pivotal in terms of a pistol round in particular. I argue that maybe at that stage of the round, utility is lacking. These crosses are going to be punishable. Yeah. So love that from gentleman to get themselves on the board here. Really, really nice from them. Taking the space they were given. And again, having that utility late. Just the icing on the cake. Now, outside of this round, only Alpha coming in with uh, a Sheriff. And wow, Logan making quick moves of two. It should be clean. He may be hoping the tank gets that ult ready to go here, but he is on the other side of the map. So it'd be, if anything, Alpha, his chance to get that one up and ready to go. Maybe over towards CT. Alpha now doesn't particularly love that wall coming in. So you're gonna have to wait this one out. The plant's there. Five still standing. And the tank chomping at the bit. Once in, a little early on that one, but still, job done. That's the ult, ready to go for the buy round. And now Leo and Alpha, well, not much more left to do. If they can make it costly, maybe take away a rifle or maybe a bulldog. Make it a little bit trickier, they'd be happy, but it wouldn't have had much more of a say. And if anything, Takas now wants to farm his ult up. I mean, if Takas finds his last two, Leo. Sharp with classic. Oh. <laughs> the tank hits him with a drive by though. And that Spectre gets upgraded to come into the buy round here. As you noted, early progress already. A little secure, the running back. Chance here for Gentlemates to just find a, a trade out here on the back of that ultimate early. Oh, Fanatics are going to. Fnatic are going to, sorry, mm. respect that play a little yeah. deeper here, try and mitigate some of the risk early on.
That noise is really upsetting me. It's rather unpleasant. Thank you, Durka. Can you pick his skins again so he doesn't do this to us? Oh dear, he is a lucky boy. Takas was so close by to that. And pressure across the map, really. Very hard to get that comfort already going. You can see it. Already trying to lean a little forward. Wailers gets That's caught drifting. That's the spike. spike. I don't... If someone takes over door position, if they clear this... I mean, the tank can retrieve it with his ultimate, but... It's probably not how he wanted to no. do things. I mean, Whether or not yeah. things are going to stabilize a little bit now. But I mean, Fnatic have given it up. They're happy to just say, well, I mean, have it if you want. Yeah, and gentle mates don't know down. that. Yeah, exactly. Burn yeah. the clock down a little bit until gentle mates figure that out. But uh, if they decide to uh, swing this door open. You don't need to do that. Joke's over. You're dead. Um, Did you hear that? No, fight. they didn't. Luckily, okay. the tank, they didn't. Yeah. Okay, well, Spike's there, well, um, but what are we What are we up to here? I'm a little nervous. Yeah. They figured it out. Yeah, what down. the hell See. just happened? Mike, left. wasn't the best plan there, really. No. <laughs> Don't want to see that one on the replay, but I think we I might. I think we will. I think we will. Plant comes through, though. Logan and Takas a chance to maybe recover this. Oh, Takas, really the only one. I mean, Logan's got 52 HP and a Bulldog, might be able to do something, but no kit, no, no paranoia, no smoke. Ah, and the angle. Yeah, Logan's going to find one, try and slip a little bit deeper towards CT, but the smoke going to go up from Poster. Almost caught him, but not close enough. Poster there. Fnatic with three standing, Diffuse coming in, and going to be honest, a little bit of a fumble there from Gentlemates. Yeah, four alive, Natank solo. Mm. Pops the old, comes through, tries the plant, then looks to upgrade his weapon. Yeah. That's oh. rough. That's really rough. One enemy remaining. Why are you laughing? Just dogging the bro, shit. Bro, I did like one meter damage. You bark on you get zero perks, bro. Don't worry, Chronicle. You did all the damage. You got three assists. We believe in you. Caution here. <laughs> You're fine. My we... assist king. <laughs> Oh, Can we just know every assist he gets, just so he, you know, gets well, the now we'll be, platitude yeah. he deserves? Right, let's, I'll make a little note. Well, the spam doesn't catch too much here. I'm almost tempted to go down and mute the <laughs> PC. At least here, gentlemen, looking for an entry point. Not going to find anything that. Tickles their fancy over towards Rubble. Actually, curious purchase. You look at how things have settled here. Oh, Bayaz is just looking to run it down a little bit with the Stingy. Here. You got the front man alongside the tank, who's uh. currently cooking. Uh. Not in the way you want to see uh. it. <laughs> no, you can't come in here. This, that was horrible to witness. It's like an assault course. He's got isolated at the end, so not going to have the run he wanted. Kind of I mean, lost still trying punch, to yeah. now. They... All the KJ utilities gone. Like the, there's a rifle in here to mm. maybe upgrade for Bayaz, but already Fnatic are, yeah, are really Leo's into that. Already left. over here. Looks like going to go for a dry hit, which a bit dangerous. Chronicle might be getting some more assists, but certainly no more Alpha's kills. Traded, though. He does. Leo trying to lean a bit closer, disrespecting the smoke and trying to get ahead from this. But you can already see the box position taken up here by Logan, that paranoia. Yeah, going to be an issue. Leo can't really play out from this one. Needs to wait on the support here, but he's on his own. He's got to be careful. Boaster and Durka are coming, but they're a little bit later to the party than maybe he would have liked. Detail to pull some out of position. Oh, Durka, look at that, dives right on in. And he was teed up for success. The paranoia just perfect. And yeah, that is stunning from Durka and Fnatic. A quick, clean... And what feels like a brief round. Tie things up to a piece. You're right, yeah, Fnatic showing real pace on the way back in here. Yeah. I wonder if he's listening. I hey. hope. Uh, th no, no, nothing. No. Well, we were just, you know, because of the Odin, obviously. Yeah. I wonder if Mitra 6, I know he loves an Odin. 2-2. <clears throat> two, two. Well, hopefully, gentlemen, not defeated yet. Not on the faces. No. Just focused up. Oh, di oh, di oh. Oh, it's not gone well. <laughs> losing out on the spam battle, by the way. That's what you get for doing this. Please don't spam. I mean, there's... 
do it again? Oh, yes. Got a guardian. <laughs> I'll do I it think again. He's... <laughs> 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 well, unconfirmed damage. So, oh. unless I can see Durka across the stage, because you could see him. <laughs> <laughs> you could see him not very happy about it. Maybe. 33 HP puts himself behind a squishy box, actually. <laughs> oh, good. Well, fortunately, he doesn't have the Odin anymore. That's boast up. Pick up the roll. An and the attention on the other side of the map. The fakey boys back in practice. But they're really committing to this site. And they've got the spike here. And uh, what? Spike the other two are so far seat. away. Maybe the just trying to capitalize on you know, Gentleman's creating yeah. some pressure towards Rubble. But unfortunately, it's. Didn't feel threatening. Yeah. Modified Has he got a kill yet? No, I did. Oh, God, I did. Snake bite was good, though. <laughs> Support player Michael just. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that one. So well timed. Logan, don't try and tease with the crowd. Don't, don't be looking through walls. It's not going to work. Oh, he's waiting. There's a kill. There's a kill. Wait, was that the first? I don't know. We'll check on the board. Your scoreboard, quick. Yeah, come on, just throw it up for us. He's up to two. He's up to two. Six, Six assists. assists though. I mean, you said it before. The assist king. And there's his highlight reel. <laughs> oh, there was actually. That was this game. Yeah, he got this round. cast on the first one. I thought it was out for the goal. Three of those. No. no. There he is. Alpha just stealing all his kills. That's crazy. Three in a row now for Fnatic. We need gentlemates to answer back pretty soon. By coming in, we do have the ult for Takas. And early spot on the player. Look Thanks at the dead. damage. Yeah. yeah, no escape. Beautiful Again, combo. Yeah, you can see the work they've been putting in here. And a tank wants in. And he's found a victim. Oh, dearie me. He can't escape that, though. And Durka gets out with his life. Now, Leo, yeah, does go down. Conical to try and find some damage this time around. Yeah. Revealer's position, Whaler's a chance maybe to creep up on him. Alpha's there to play safety net. Got himself into a weird spot now, but... Oh, one away from the ult. Bears. Chance here, adjustment on the utility. That Chronicle creeping back onto this angle. Whaler's... Killing machine. Yeah. Really <laughs> looking to uh, match the assists now. That's it. What the hell is this, though? Oh, wow. look at him yeah. now. Finally reaping the benefits of all of that work he was putting in earlier. There he is, small smile. He's like, yeah, no more assists for me. Oh, I'm getting all the kills. And yeah, I mean, I, I almost want to see a timeout from Gentlemates, maybe, or something. I mean, they've got a lot of ults to bring in. I don't know what the buy's going to look like behind it, though. It's a bit shaky. Not happy with that round. No. No. I like the way we've gone back to mini coaching style. Yeah. Disappointed hand in the air. Four in a row, disappointed. <laughs> Let's take them. Oh. Need better. <laughs> but yeah, ultimates here, whether or not we do see any investment from gentlemates. Oh. Going anti flash for this. Oh, That's he turns beautiful. back in time. He looked blind as anything, but still came out of it just enough to see the pixels out of place. <laughs> and look at the damage done. Careful now. The tank and Bayaz down to 45, and the tank obviously will heal up. I'm sure if Boaster got flashed off the angle there, but isolated from Dirk a little bit. Dirk was kind of left out to commit to that 1v3 or 4 situation. Smoke the tank. Ready. A rifle and the ultimate, though. And still, it is a 3v4. Mm. But just seeing the rolling thunder. And, I mean, any duelist ultimate being available, to be honest with you, going up. makes damage a real possibility. Okay, I'm waiting for this. Okay, there's the answer from Chronicle. Well, that's going to force them in towards B. The tank's in a similar situation. This time around, no real left. threat from the ultimate through mm -hmm. the door, unless Ooh, Boaster creeps Logan. back that way. No, the tank's on site already, anyway. I like this position from Logan, though. Could be pretty involved. The timing. Alpha just crests the corner. Turning his attention towards that B site, as he should have done. But it's Bayaz with the almost aggressive lean there towards CT. And a catch on timing, Chronicle. 
Joke's it wasn't over. looking the right way. And now Boaster and Leo got their work cut out. But they found Bayaz. And now the Tang needs to find one while his ult's still going. He knows where the other player is. And now Boaster put through his paces. Smoke is there. Does that reach it? Certainly does. Boaster burning alive. The Tang. Big impact this round, gentle mates. Getting this one building back here, answering back to those four rounds in a row. I'm just curious of whether or not in the tank, because it looked like the tank throws the flash. I'm talking about the early round, sorry, when uh, Boaster's isolated from Durka, but Durka fully commits towards the challenge. Yeah, maybe just over the top of mound there. Uh, I think he actually comes back to reset for the yeah. paranoia. But yeah, it's... Was the the butterfly effect here? That rifle upgrade at the start of the round comes full circle. Maybe existence not expecting a round win there. Calls a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> to discuss the uh, the buy round coming up. Plenty yeah. of ultimates available. I hope he wasn't going to talk about the running back. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> what is it? There's no fudge here. <laughs> You don't get to quote that right now. <laughs> I'll start breaking out Harry Potter quotes and no one wants that. <laughs> He's going to sacrifice himself. <laughs> but yeah, um, good <laughs> yeah. chance for uh, Gentle Mace to springboard off that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like I said, you look towards the Rolling Thunder, this composition alongside, like I said, any duelist ultimate really gives you a good catalyst for any round. I, I do want to see it not just be on the shoulders and off in the tank, though. You know what I mean? Like, he's sitting on 11 to 4. He's, he's doing incredible. I mean, that was a 4K from him last round. He is getting them rounds, but I want to see it to be a collective effort. Takas still one kill here. I want to see them start to... Kind of, I don't know, make it work as a collective. He's not been having the best game today, but... Let's see what they can do now. A little bit of a timeout there, just coming out of this. Plenty of ults to play with. So many different options. And the observers just want to bring me pain mm. by only showing that perspective. Thank you. I've, 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 oh, I've yes, turned, thank you, observers. I've turned the uh, <laughs> program feed all the way down to mute. Oh, yes, Zilf. <laughs> thank you. It's almost like Durka can hear us as well. <laughs> oh, Boaster, though. Trying to offset the timing. And actually, it's going to find Takas as well. So they've dealt with one side of this approach, but we know that the fakie boys of Gentlemates will be on the other side this of the map. Isn't the sort of thing you want to see on this this round with this setup, these ultimates available? You don't want to see a split focus uh, unless you see maybe the Rolling Thunder invested with a smoke or something to sell a fake. Mm. It just seems uh, a little odd here. Oh, well, he's got support, and I like that, but look how quickly they've already got to this one. They've got to try and a response here, and a tank gain stopping, finally denied by Leo. So the lockdown will come through. Logan has to back away. Leo tucks into the smoke as well. Yeah, Logan, rightfully. Oh, yep. Wary, 12 seconds left. We'll have to give this one up to the clock. 10 seconds mm. left. Will be a response found here from Fnatic very quickly. And I just wish they had a couple more bodies there on the side. They could have maybe even traded out Leo there, potentially. I don't like the split push when they have these odds, when they've been having that level of success on the side. You know what I mean? I just, yeah, I'd I like mean, to see them come at this as five. The, the thing is, as well, you, you've... Bayaz caught ahead of the wall here as well, and if there's no, there's no further commitment behind this, uh, you've got to start asking tough questions like, why is he there then? Yeah. Like, what are uh, you what, trying to achieve yeah, on what's this? he trying to do at that point of the round? Because they're faking on the opposite side of the map to the Killjoy setup. It's just that they're never going to have instant value no. of like, leaving a double lurk that is your initiator and duelist. And like you've said, unless you have those extra bodies in place on the other, it, a team like Fnatic on a good day will just shut down those sort of things. There. Back to same, it. Yeah, same thing again. Bayaz and Takas over the other side of the map. Good amount of chip damage here, too. Maybe the tank being here could have helped out, but they're not moving anyone. Now, yeah, if they want to fake, though, they need to remove this utility, and Alpha's been pulling it further and further away right from there. the choke point because they've been finding value off it time and time Joke's again. Over. You're dead. Okay. Now, I was going to say, pathing-wise, this could be 
what's required, but Chronicle shuts it down pretty quickly. Gentleman's going to try and find some timing towards B here. Now, this is where two ultimates, being the Rolling Thunder and the Showstopper, can cause a ton of damage in the close quarters. Yeah, Fnatic are very close by, though. But you're right. Look at the ults the gentlemen have to work with. This should be enough to keep them back. But here's the counter swing, and Fnatic succeed. Chronicle couldn't have done better. Teed up and delivers on it. Logan trying to find Alfred. He finds the wrong end of the stick on that one. It's Whalers in a 1v5, and the ults have come in. There's nothing he can do here. Fnatic, fabulous work back there. Really timing it well to apply the pressure. But the fact is they were so focused towards CT from Gentlemates, they just completely left Chronicle with options. Yeah, and it, it's tough now. You look at bigger picture. We're talking about the snowball round that's potentially on the brink for Gentlemates. And unfortunately, the Rolling Thunder and Showstopper. I mean, it's a tough way to see it get shut down. You could argue it's used proactively, but... Execution lacking just a little bit. Yep. Back on a broken purchase as well. We have a spike. Oh. Well. Well, that's not who you want to see fall first when he's been controlling. Well. I was going to say controlling the tempo, but Takas actually puts his life on the line here to try and follow up on that with a double satchel. Oh, sacrificing himself. Home to the slaughter almost. Yeah. There must be another way. No, he can't though. <sighs> Whalers now, just that vandal. One to seven. He's not. I've got to say, gentlemen, don't look comfortable here. This is obviously no, Fnatic's they, they, choice, but they're just they're, yeah, they're not they, looking in their comfort zone at all. They look a little lost for answers. Yeah. Difficult to really figure things out. If the plan is for you know two people to really command that much pressure, and then you could argue that the game plan's never really getting off the ground. Yeah. It's not finding any left. traction whatsoever, which again. Even all said and done, 6-3 is still recoverable here. Absolutely. With a couple of rounds left here in the first half. Oh. Bayaz, I was going to say, yeah, got to be careful not to get caught. They're down the the side here, but This is nice. Oh, it's just it's too late in the day. It is, and they're there. There's so many players on this site already. Yeah, Fnatic. If Gentlemates want to stop Fnatic getting this 2-0, they, they need to... Do a little more here. I, I, I don't know what else they can do, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling lost for answers watching them, and this feels desperate. Uh, no, it definitely does. I think uh, we saw similar source of scenes for mm. gentlemen previously. Nice, nice Jake. Good comp. It's fine. Good comps. Good comps. Great comps. Frags. Ah, comps though. Oh. Tell you what could really change the tides though an attacking cypher operator <laughs> yes now let's see if i can get drawing on this one i mean it's rough because it, it, right here gentlemen have struggled to pin down opening engagement so to now have something that indicates slowing things down even further navi s crowns <laughs> existence has taken a leap out of one of angel's wow. older books yes yes I feel like that's not an existence call, if I'm honest. No. <laughs> I'm not. OK, so, right, space gets taken a B. Should be a plant to follow. Nothing to really dissuade that. Takas going to take the space that was available, but Leo does have, I think, quite a bit of kit uh, to I retake mean, this basically area. Basically, have everything to yep. come back at this. There it is, and Takas is now in a bit of a predicament. Gets cleared off. With no got kind of, showstopper now as well. With no double pump and no pressure points early, they have all this utility, and look what it's doing. Whalers has now decided the operator should be a shotgun. And funny enough, it didn't work very well. So Logan now has to, well, feign falling away, but he can't because the diffuse is going to come in. the music, yeah. Yep. Oh, well. Sit back and watch this one. Pass it by. Well, half will seal the deal. 8 3 now, financially. It'll be a tough purchase here for Gentlemates. 
than yet in this situation. I mean, the last person you want to see get a kill ahead of this retake getting started is Durka. Didn't even come down to it. Carries the showstopper yep. across into the next. Um, and we, I love seeing this. I'm so glad we got to see it because the alarm bot has been kind of giving it away, right? It's been the, the, the amount they've had to work to try and clear that utility, to try and do all of this, but it feels like it's just not ingrained into the steps the gentle mates are taking. A TP. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, Logan's just trying to uh, draw yeah. some people away from the choke points. Which kind of works because now they're having to turn attention. I kind of like this. Gentle mates are now taking the space that it has to be respected. But look at the spike. Okay, Careful now. This is all. They a might fake. start questioning, going, there's no plant yet. Still no plant. Does Boast to take his TP as a fact finder? Let's have the ult there if he fancies it. And I think the penny has indeed dropped. A nice fake yeah. here. This worked out actually quite well, yeah. gentlemen, but it is still a 5v5. And you look at the ults that Fnatic have. Some of those are very influential. And Alpha's oh. positioning gets outdone. Takas claims some space for himself. And they've completely evacuated site. Yeah, respecting the showstopper. Joke's over. You're dead. Run it back now, Sen. I'm a little nervous they're this deep, though. They are going to have to clear back through. And yeah, the tank's done really well. That has to follow suit. Yeah, this is much better. Chronicle gets handled. Takas gets involved. And they carve away a little bit of room, Mike. But it's not been a comfortable half by any no, means. No, no, absolutely not. And even this last one is almost like a, a lifeline thrown to gentlemen, to be honest yeah. with you. Yep. Fnatic. I guess a little bit more pace thrown into this fake towards C. And even here with the pit, again, you're relying on audio cues on the outside. Like you said, the plant doesn't come. But ahead of that, Fnatic just fully rotate, fully give up the rest of the map. Well, they have looked very comfortable at sitting back and allowing mm. Gentlemates the time and space to set themselves up and getting dissected, to be honest with you, on the, on the retake. Nice word, dissected. Yeah, with surgical precision. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we hot mics right now? Are we? I don't know. We're going out live? Uh, probably. Right. Four rounds. I want to see a pistol round here, if I'm honest with gentlemates. Could even that score line up a little bit. I don't mind them being proactive either. Got to work with what you got. I mean, yeah, this is a full read. Look at the tripwire over towards. Alpha's taking a look. I'll find you. Yeah. Let's say, yeah, this was the intention from the get-go. Alpha with a Sheriff can do some real damage from there, but mm -hmm. that will be the indicator for Gentle. Oh, oh just yeah. gave that up. <laughs> Not sure if he yet. would have got a ping off the minimap there, actually. Oh, OK. This is this is nice. This actually could allow them the gap close here, and it does. The tank set oh, in motion. Takas on the follow-up. This is lovely stuff. Much better. Dark up. Boaster and Chronicle. Lots to handle. Boaster's going to take the fur. No, 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 not like this. Oh, dear. It looks so ready for Gentlemates to take that big step in the second half here, but denied in the end. And Fnatic will be happy with that one. Reset into a much deeper hold here after losing out on Mount. Boaster a little confused as to what's coming out of the crowd there. But yeah, I mean... Good support, Boaster, all right? I know you've had a rough couple of weeks, but they're on your side. Boaster find the two crucial kills there to really, uh, I guess, slam the brakes on. Slow things down there. And, and I kind of like seeing Existence get a little fired up by seeing the loss in that, because you could tell the gravitas of that round that they just yeah, lost. The, the, yeah, the bigger, the bigger swing there is to actually get themselves past Mound. Obviously, succeed in having yes. three people on the flank, but then things fall apart when they can't get onto site and trade effectively. It's, it's definitely the more tilting part of it to go wrong when you're in a 5v3 yeah. coming back onto site, especially in the pistol as well, where it's like bodies, throw them on angles, force Fnatic deeper and overwhelm individuals. Logan's caught enough of an audio cue. He knows where they're heading. And gentlemates will have bodies on the site. Four of them here. And still a lot of utility in play. Bayaz, the tank. They've got a fair bit of kit now. Takas even still has that paint shell as well.
can they deal with this? Is there going to be that late pivot towards B? We know Fnatic have run that in the yeah. past. Superior weapons for 30 seconds. seconds. This stack has been read. I mean, that's a ton of information. Well, they still commit here. Okay, wow. okay. Oh, that, that, that almost committing. breaks my heart. Because they got the read right. I liked what they were trying to do with Logan there. But, I mean, hey, welcome to bigger weapons, better utility, yeah. and good synergy, good spacing. No threats and just spam through the cage. Alpha going to find Logan in the end, and it's double digits for Fnatic. So you need gentle mates to put something up here in round three, the second half. <laughs> I mean, the second, a bit of a freebie for Durka there. Like I said, the reveal Flawless. from Leo giving the game away on a site. Yeah, and Andalusia flawless, not going to help out matters coming into this round as well. Money going to be sitting comfortably. You already have the ult there for Durka too. Just compounding the problems. Ayaz feeling the pressure early. Rightly so. I mean, Fnatic are behind this. They are actively, I can say, rubble. And they got it. Gentlemen, hold on. It's not really spamming away particularly here. Could be in the right place for it, though. Yeah, Bayaz has had a ton of audio cues. Here we go. That's one. That could have been a second. It wasn't. It was actually Alpha to claim Bayaz yeah. in the end. Still. It's revealed a lot of what Fnatic are up to, so the rotations are coming in, but the tank is still a little bit ahead of this. So isolated that Durka can take the space. He wants more, securing the site as he goes, but the timing right for Logan, but on a second glimpse, Durka catches him. His Chronicles find Whalers, and now the support system's gone. Oh, this is lonely work for Logan, but he might be able to get a little bit of a dump. Durka's has gone, but his support gets taken away. Logan, a nice attempt, but it's not enough. It's too alive, and Fnatic make it to 11 here. Gentlemates fading away. Yeah, unfortunately, with the flawless in the previous, Fnatic are going to look fairly flush financially. Gentlemates will be struggling. Nice clean up as well. It was Alpha to find the entry there. It looks as if it was going to be Durka. Yeah. We'll see a Gentlemates timeout. Mm. And I think. It, it, Now's the time to kind of revisit that question. We come into this series, uh, or certainly I had coming into this series, which is, you know, what have gentlemates really been doing in terms of their perspective of the meta currently and how yeah. they want to approach, obviously, this much longer stretch, I guess, versus VCT teams this year. And I think we come back to some of the things we've raised on the cast now about difficulty finding answers or, you know, how to overcome certain things. A breeze, I think the examples were uh, Fnatic just being very decisive and mm -hmm. Gentlemates didn't really know how to adapt to that. Yep. Here, I'll, I'll be honest, it, it, for me, it just looks like the, the playbook's a little off. They, they've, they've not had the right approach overall to the first half at all, yep. in my eyes. They've not found success in areas that they've really invested behind. And this is the point, unfortunately, then you do look back at, well, is it a comp issue or is it kind of a everybody on the same page issue? And, and it is, that is the tricky part when they run such a kind of um, off-meta comp so I mean, This, this is Feast or Famine. It's, it's, yes. it's the same sort of thing as running a Reino. Unless you're going to have the Phoenix drop in 25-30 every game and everybody else is able to pull their weight and... It just doesn't look good, does it? It's, no. it that's the tricky part. And, and again, yeah, Natang is putting up some numbers. It's not... But it's not enough. Sure, but it's uh, not enough. I guess the second leg to that is that Reino or Phoenix performance needs to really force the opposing team you know, back in their shell. Fnatic, yes. Fnatic just aren't that sort of team. They'll find space elsewhere on the map to counterbalance whatever you're trying to do with that heavy front line. I think that's ultimately what we did see certain examples in the first half. Yeah. I mean, though, I mean, Perch is looking way better than I thought, actually. It's serviceable. Yeah, for gentle mates. No real gaps in utility oh. either. It does feel like do or die. Round 16 here. Blinding. Lost bonus will be there for the next, but backs against the wall now. Okay. Logan, Takas, Whalers. This is it. It's got to be right. The paranoia is being cooked up here. 
gets posted on both sides. Whaler's going to catch it on one. You can see Logan now forced away as well. The second hit going to come through now. Fnatic want to commit towards this one. Then it's Dirk step forward. Left. Whaler's in a lot of danger. You can see how hard it is to hold this site actively. You almost have to give it up a touch, play it back in, and that's exactly what they're doing with the run it back. The tank tries to take the space, but it's Logan's to deliver the fatal blow. Trades back and forth. No plant yet. All players on the right side of the map, and with 13 seconds, Sakas trying to gap close here. Outdone by Durka. Plant secured. Time on Fnatic's side. Bayers in the tank. Gotta find value now. Durka ready. Does get caught by the flash, though. That's a chance, but it's traded. Bayers now 1v2. What you got for us here? Anything up the sleeve? No. Leo's not going to allow it. Fnatic make it to 12. And gentlemates left to rot on four. He said with the force coming through when it did, the purchase will be uncomfortable here. This is another one though. It's just you make this comparison to where you know Gentleways did group and hit a site together. Just the, the difference in utility, the different the, the protocol list on the way in, the execution. Unfortunately, yep. are stark contrasts to be made. Three guardians, two bulldogs, a TP for Logan. on the verge here, two by door as well. The problem is this, this paranoia probably won't catch everyone that he wants here. I think it might just catch Durka. I don't think the others were affected, no. And Fnatic's so ready for this. Catching them by door, catching them on the door open as well. Oh man, this is going from bad yeah. to worse. You even got the lockdown ready. Chronicle's got his ult too, everything coming together. You can already see it now. They have to dip so far away here, gentlemates. It's down to the last three. A 5v3 retake versus Fnatic with utility. Mm -hmm. with lacking oh. weapons. You're with just a, hearing it. Yeah, with a pit layered on top here. There. It's going from bad to worse, isn't it? Tough times now ahead. Speaking of timing, keep in mind Bayers and Leo's timing on each other, but both are already going to find both of the players near the site itself. And Bayers drifting into the eyes of Leo. Yeah, Bear's gonna get one and a second. He's got his ult. He needs more though, and they are putting bodies on the line. It's 13 to 4. Fnatic really trounced gentlemates here. This map didn't feel close. No, it didn't. Felt like a major gap between these two teams, unfortunately, today. And concerns continue to grow in my eyes for gentlemates. Like I said, don't wanna beat a dead horse, but coming back to some of the real fundamental issues with what we've seen so far. But doubling down for Fnatic, return to form, looking yeah. clean, looking composed, looking in control of a lot of these rounds. Durka returning to uh, some of that form of old, you could say, looking fantastic on the Euro this time. I guess this is the urban myth from Twitter <laughs> that we've heard about. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I, I do want to highlight specifically map one felt more competitive than map two. I think map one, we saw a lot of the better looks from Fnatic that we've been waiting to see. A lot of the synergies looking good, seeing kind of Leo, Alpha working together, Durka towards the top, Chronicle having a great game, actually. Especially in map two after saying the, you know, the assist he was getting ended on 11 with, I think he was top fragging in the server. So certainly a good performance from him. But again, Fnatic looking good today, I think. Starting to correct some of those doubters out there. But again, gentlemen, maybe not the opponent yet to fully test them. No, I think I, no. At, yeah. Uh, come back to something similar as well that we said last week, which is you are still going to cut, gentlemen. It's a little bit of slack. Of course you will. No roster change coming in. Obviously, they're very early on in the lifespan. There's still hope for this team, but I, I think we're at the turning point of now where we, we do need to see some kind of marked improvements along. Whether yes. that be performance, whether that be some of the composition changes that we're seeing. Mm. Some of it just There needs to be something that we can pin our hopes to. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the minute, there's not much in that department. No, and, I, and I'm with you on that, because I kind of want to see what they evolve towards, right? What do they start looking like? Do they, again, adjust compositions? Do they change the kind of stance of how they approach the game? Lots of question marks, and hopefully lots of time to find those yeah. answers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I can see it behind us. Durka waiting by with the interview. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, and I'm delighted to be joined by Durka. Durka, they let you loose on the Euro today, and it paid off. Tell me how we finally got to see the Euro that you've been talking about and hyping on social media for so long. Yeah, I mean, 
I was waiting to play Yoru for like two months now, and then first game on Yoru didn't go that well. Today, uh, like, I mean, after the game, I was like, okay, I know what I need to fix. I fixed and talked to coaches, uh, took some notes, and then started playing better on track instantly. And then, I mean, yeah, I was uh, really well prepared this match, and it paid off. So what did need to change? Was it just an individual thing, or did you need a little bit more support from your team to set you up? Uh, I think it was a bit individual, like I was making some silly mistakes against uh, Giants and I kind of a bit forgot to how to play it, like, like I pl played it in Prax because in Prax it was always awesome. Uh, and today I kind of showed how I actually played it. Is it quite difficult then when you do get on this stage and suddenly something doesn't quite feel right and uh, what you've been practicing doesn't come to fruition, doesn't get shown? Yeah. Is that difficult? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's difficult, especially with this agent. It's, I think it's the hardest agent to play, but also the strongest. And I feel like um, I kind of like had a bad start to the game, and then it, it kind of transferred for the rest of the game. So it was like a bit hard to uh, hard to play against Giants. But then uh, I think after the game it was easy to recover. Yeah. You definitely have momentum on your side today. It's something that uh, Boaster was actually talking to Yinsu about on their podcast earlier this week. The comfort zone and, and how you guys feel on stage is very important for Fnatic. Uh, what's made you feel more comfortable today? Uh, I think the boys, uh, like, we came with a good energy today. We knew what we were doing and we also got a uh, win against Giants, so that gave us like extra momentum and extra like good feeling to play. Uh, and we knew like, oh, we're not underdogs and let's just play our game. And every time we play our game, everyone's having fun. And when we're having fun, we're destroying. Yeah, what's your favorite, what's, what makes you have fun? Is it getting out on Odin and passing it around the team? Yeah, I'm, I'm the new Odin player, <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> it changed like yesterday, but yeah, I mean, just playing together and winning makes us have a lot of fun and just like uh, doing stuff together, even in real life. Like uh, they like to play like football and stuff, and Iceland is coming in with uh, I don't play that much, but like uh, just coming there for the spirit. What do you play then? Do you not a touch of grass person? Uh, not really. I mean, I didn't play because I really wanted to like touch up on my yoru a bit and fix it. So I was like, I don't have time for like. Uh, like uh, series or other stuff, I was like, uh, I need to focus on my Euro, I will watch what, I will take notes, uh, play more of the game, and it paid off. I think we'll organize a game of ping pong. Yeah. You and me, somewhere in Berlin, we'll find somewhere to go. You need to have a break from the yeah. PC. But you know what? All that time on Euro has clearly done you so well. Congratulations, yeah. Dirk. A Thank fantastic you. performance from you and the boys today. Yeah. Thank you, now, guys. we are going to take a short break, but when we come back, we are going to have an absolute banger on our hands. It is the yellows versus the blues, Casey versus Navi. You are the most brightest light in the world, bro. I can't take my eyes off you, bro. Bro, I did like one million damage, he gets zero frags, bro. He's mad because I was spamming him. Look at him. Ah, I did nine damage. <laughs> He's still there, bro, you little wanker. What do you do, bro? That's the team, bro. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings. Let's do something crazy. Get a bit wild today. Cause we don't do this every day and we deserve it. Life is so amazing. Nothing is in our way. Baby, let's fly away. Do you feel it? Is your heart rushing the way my heart's rushing when you take it? Welcome back to VCT. And there's now not just VCT3, but there's VCT4, because we are joined by Leo from Fnatic. This is the first time you've joined us on the sofa here. Uh, I think for this year, yes. Is this on? Yeah, yes. it is on. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was here last year, you know, back, back here again. I was quite tempted to say, no, it's not working if you can just lean into Steele's microphone, but don't worry, any technical You should have done it. We'll let you know. I love that this is your first time here and you're just like, I just want to check that everything is working. We've got your back, don't worry. Uh, talk to us then about that fairly swift 2-0 against Gentlemates. Uh, obviously, you planned it to go that way, uh, but were you expecting maybe a little bit more resistance? Uh, I mean, we definitely didn't underestimate them. Uh, Every team is hungry to play us and beat us, so for us it's just about coming hungry to the game. Uh, like, we probably didn't have the other games, but uh, we were felt super confident coming in. They have a very different play style, I think, to uh, other teams here in Europe. It's just about uh, us understanding how they play, and I think it showed. Yeah, also, um, I feel like the last two weeks, your performance has like skyrocketed. We're seeing, you know, the Leo that we saw in Loft last year. The Gecko was very impressive. Um, do you do you like playing it? Is this something that it fits into your comfort zone? Or was that a hard task for you? 
I mean, it's definitely fun to play uh, different agents. I feel like when I Gecko's play... very fun. Yeah, Gecko's fun. I mean, just playing different agents is always fun. Like, I've played a lot of Sova, so, I mean, anything different is just... Uh, it's nice when you practice to do different stuff. Last week when you played uh, Breeze and you guys lost against Giant to X, it looked like you guys had everything going right, except like uh, you didn't convert a lot of the kills. Do you feel like when they picked Breeze into you this time, that was a bit of them walking into a trap type of thing? I mean, definitely yes, because like we picked it last week, which so means we were confident on it. So, and just we watched the game back, and it was like, yeah, it was a lot of just we weren't hitting our shots and like some basic stuff. So, I mean, definitely when they picked it, it was like we, we're gonna win too well. <laughs> yeah. With these comps that you're playing now, given that in 2023 you, you chose your comps and you stuck to them throughout the year, do you feel like it's going to be a similar thing? You you find the agents you want to play on your maps and then you work go like during the year from split to fit, okay, this is how we're going to innovate now and how we're going to build on things? Uh, I mean, it definitely depends on, uh, you know, the meta. Like if agents is changed, you, you have to change. But I mean, right now we're comfortable with what we're playing with. So we just have to see if like a map changes or a new agent or whatever, you know. Do you do micro adjustments within that? So um, I don't know how often you guys use like, we just saw the Odin all the time on, on Lotus. Do you guys make micro adjustments about either setups or weapons used or how you approach the map within uh, the maps that you do play and the agents that you do play? I mean, definitely, yes. Uh, I mean, maybe it's different from map to map. I feel like some maps where you constantly have to try new stuff, but uh, certain maps, it's like you know what's good and you just stick to it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just dependent on like the map, uh, really. Leo, while we've got you here, how do you feel about talking about other teams? What do you want to know? Wow. Ooh, we have okay. got what is going to be an incredibly close match coming up. Uh, although at least this is what we suspect because it is KC versus Na'Vi. And interestingly, now we've spoken to you about your compositions, last year, Na'Vi, they were kind of known for liking to, to change things up quite a lot with their compositions. This year though, this team that's been together for so long, I know Ardis obviously had some time away, but he's come back. They're, they're facing this team with obviously an old school coach and, and new school players. Uh, do you feel like Na'Vi are now kind of settled on what works? Uh, I mean, they played uh, the year before the last year. I mean, they should be super comfortable playing with each other. I think they have like a trio that's played for probably like three, four years. So, I mean, they're super comfortable together and uh, I mean, they're definitely a strong team. Yeah, exactly. If we think about the compositions and what you were saying, Frankie, for the entirety of 2023, we saw Anavi that was, it was a threat for many reasons. And one of them was like changing compositions from time to time. Having nine, eight, five different compositions for each map, I think is absolutely crazy. And it of course affects the level of preparation that the other team can have against you. Because obviously it looked like, it looked like they're always like reading onto you and they're able to change stuff up. Compared to what you guys did last year is literally the complete opposite, right? You you were very comfortable with the composition that you were playing. Um, how do you think, do you think it's difficult to prepare against a team like this? Or do you feel like even though they change the compositions, Navi is always Navi? You can be honest. I mean, uh, what, what's the real question? Like, what's... Is, is, it, is it difficult to adapt to this compositional changes? Or do you think that the, like the, the way, the macro that they play the game is always the same? I mean, yeah, the way they, the way they play is always like similar way, uh, I think, for Navi. But obviously, when they play new agents you maybe haven't seen, it's a bit like the first few rounds, maybe you have to get into it more. But I feel like on certain maps, it's like you kind of know how the map is played. Uh, but I mean, it depends depends on the map, really, I would say. Like certain maps, it, it might be harder and some it's easier. When we watch KC play, it looks like when they're able to execute their game plan really well, it looks like they do a good job of controlling the pace, moving around together, and being very explosive. But against Foot, it looked like they weren't able to really get that. How do you think they're going to fare against Navi? Is Navi going to really stop them from being able to have that momentum? I mean, I would say Navi's playstyle is, is good against KC because I feel like they, they slow down the game and probably dictate the tempo more in case he has got that more to them.
It might also be the opposite where KC is just going to be in their face a lot. So I mean, it's definitely a good matchup. But I would probably say Navi, Navi has the advantage. It's going to be a really interesting one because of the fact that KC obviously very much believe in their aim, but perhaps maybe lack a little bit of flexibility. So if we're seeing Navi play things that they've played before, do you think that's going to be, I guess, in Coach Ang and, and Casey's favour. Do you think that Casey can actually maybe uh, put? Uh, I'm trying to think of an idiom that is not a random English idiom. I'm, I'm thinking, how can Casey disrupt Navi now that Navi have kind of got this momentum on their side? I mean, it's it's just, uh, I mean, not letting Navi play their game. I think Casey has to come out and uh, be very aggressive. I think and uh, make make Navi play their game and uh, yeah, hopefully. That you know works. what? You mentioned that. That's one of the holes we have seen with Navi so far. Is that I, was, I, was, I was laughing because it's just like, yeah, you just let Navi kind of trip over themselves and they're going to, you know, give up the game, in, in a, so to speak, because that's kind of what we saw against uh, Liquid for a little bit as well, is that Navi, they can be so good, but then they can also kind of mess themselves up. Yeah, so we, we've got a, a few rounds from uh, KC where on Breeze at the start of the round, KC are attempting a map control play with a flash and dart into main. Martin and Shin are pushing down Hall's tube and they're trying to converge into an A play. But while that happens, Foot telegraphs a heavy mid presence, knife for elbow, Viper orb for mid doors. And as Foot starts to move up middle, KC go to the next phase of their plan, which is they want to fight out Nest. They're going to drone out mid doors, but it doesn't matter because Foot's already, they molly, Viper molly into Nest. And then they're just all over the site. Tamazi was trying to play for the retake from half wall the entire round but it's already too late. Foot's just flooding out of tunnel and main and getting superior positioning on KC. And KC don't even clear the basic angles. They look so flat when dealing with this player. They're like, they died, I think, two or three times from a player being behind this half wall. Same thing on Lotus. They're postured towards B, decide to come back to A. Martin's here with his op. And then it's it's fine because Foot has res. And then KC want to press the head, full speed behind the fade ultimate. But Ada Captain puts down his Viper Pit on after planting on the site. And they have that Sage Wall that is blocking off spawn. And then KC is just like, they, they have to come out heavy heaven. And then they realize like, oh, well, we can't go anywhere. They're protected by the Viper Pit. They have the Sage Wall down to block off spawn. And then, you know, by the time KC tries to save, it's too late for them to save. So I, I feel like on these situations when KC has a lot of like their whole thing is about moving around being proactive and getting to the next point before the enemy but then foot was just one step ahead oh you want to come fight us here we molly it oh you want to fight us there we're sage walling it they definitely struggled with uh, CNED as well, just like basically being able to do whatever the hell he wanted on that map. And I don't think they were expecting that, especially as it was such a different CNED that we saw playing on Na'Vi. Uh, you're actually going to be playing Na'Vi next, I think. For, for, uh, not, no, you're not playing Na'Vi next. I'm so sorry. I've looked at a schedule, Navi but you are playing end. Na'Vi uh, in, a, in, a future, uh, in a future match. Uh, do you feel like the, the Valorant that you're playing at the moment is stronger? Stronger than Na'Vi, or you yeah. mean? Mm. I mean, of course, I have to say so. Um, it's just it, our practice has been very good lately, and it's just about showing up in the game day. And I think uh, today is a good step, and it's we have a game in two days, so it's just uh, staying consistent, and hopefully we we perform again. So who's winning, Casey or Navi? You got five seconds. Uh, say Navi. Navi, it's you you, you gave it to me <laughs> in three seconds. So let's get this show on the road. Casey versus Navi. The young guns of Casey have proved the blues are the honest and hottest colour with a young team hopefully benefiting from Eng's leadership. I say hopefully, they really have been. A win over Na'Vi will be a statement of intent and a sign that Carmine Corp are a multi-dimensional team to be feared. However, Na'Vi have had such a strong start to their campaign for that flight to Shanghai, and all eyes will be on them to set the pace today, or at least disrupt the pace of KC. They're going to be showing why they could be the strongest team in the region. This is probably the most exciting matchup, I have to say, of, of the, the week. week. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I think that both of the teams have a couple of things that they need to improve on, right? We saw Navi loosen rounds and making some mistakes. 
They shouldn't be making, especially at this state, because if we were to see Casey making the same mistakes, we can make an excuse for them. They're not as experienced. They haven't played together for that for so long. But honestly, if we look at the head-to-head, -head, the Magnum versus Angel, the experience as an IGL is astonishing for the side of Angel, right? It's many, many years. And I feel like probably going back to what Steel was breaking down is the in the rounds is that mid-round, right? Is that decision-making once something that you're not prepared for uh, comes into place. One of the things I noticed here for Carmine Core is that they have the uh, one to zero plushy, um, you know, advantage. Navi having zero plushies out here, which means that Casey's going to take the series. That's that's my official, you know, breakdown analysis. Yeah. Uh, surprise here to see Navi banning the breeze, something that they do not want to see. Casey after Madrid, they've been banning the ascent, and the first map is going to be bind. So most likely we can expect the gecko gecko head to head. And Leo, as a gecko expert yourself, what do you think it's the most important thing as a gecko on bind, besides the ace? Uh, I mean, it's syncing up with the other flasher. Uh, you can't really use solo flash with Gecko because it's so easy to break. Mm -hmm. So, whoever the flasher is, the second flasher is, if it's like uh, Sky or KO, it's like you really have to sync up. We saw that you guys did that really well in your game um, the last time you played on Bind, where you had so many combos. Like every fight was basically Gecko flash with Sky flash. When you're in these chaotic situations, is it easy? How hard is it to sync up? Because Sky doesn't have rechargeable flashes, so now you have to be a little bit more deliberate. I mean, it definitely took time to get to the level we were. We have played it for a, month, a few months, and in, in the beginning, it was definitely the timing was off. But I think uh, right now, it's we're feeling super comfortable. Well, we're seeing the two teams getting ready to go. I was interested in what the General Mates streamers said the other day when they were talking about the fact that to beat KC, you just have to shoot them first. I don't know if that means that <laughs> Na'Vi are going to be upping their momentum on this one, but they talk us through this drop. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, we're going to see the Gecko on both sides, but the flashes are going to be different, right? We're going to have KU on Artist for the, size of, uh, for, the, for the side of Na'Vi, uh, and then Magnum on the sky for the side of KCOR. Also, I think that the difference between the Omen and the Brainstorm is very big. Me, personally, I love the Brimstone. I think that Xiao is a, a great smoker. Uh, what do you think, Leo, in this terms of the... Um, very briefly, what do you like better, the Brimster or the Omen? I think it depends, on the, uh, it depends on the player, but if I was playing, I would prefer Omen, because I think you can be uh, do a bit more plays. Mm -hmm. But obviously, the Brimstone is not bad. You have uh, probably a better ultimate. Uh, so, I mean, probably a comfort pick, I think. Wow. We'll see who is most comfortable on the stage in just a moment because we're ready to head over to our casters to get this match underway. It's Tom Biz and Nichman. Thank you so much, Frankie. Good to have you back here. And what a stacked desk we just had. But Tom, now as we get into this game, there's only one question left. Is Navi's flawless run going to keep on going? Or are we going to see KC put a stop to it here? I, I think that's the question on many people's minds. I'm not going to be the one to answer it. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be an exciting matchup. I was surprised to see that we went through the veto and Breeze was actually banned out by Navi. It's been a weaker map. But that's the thing. I feel like they always just pick their ban on the day. It, it like changes up quite regularly. It does mean some that will be in there, which we have seen them ban quite often throughout the, the tournament so far. So maybe going to see something a little bit more there. But for now, we're kicking things off on bind. Defensive side for Na'Vi. So expect them to be better in the second half. Yeah, well, we'll see how that one tracks. The defensive side start leaves KC on the attack and looking to quicken the pace on the B side already. They're jumping out of hookah and pincering this long play, leaving Xiao on the floor and Angel running for the TP. B side, most concretely secured, and a 5v4 post plan for Navi that's going to see Angel quite far away. Yeah, he might even just have to go back through the second TP, but from this point for KC having this level of an after plant, it's going to be difficult for Navi to get back into this one. Smoke's continuously put through, the spam has done quite a bit of damage, and nades being placed, but Tomazi already winning another battle in towards that hookah position. I, I don't see a way back into this for Navi. Yeah, good lurk out by Tamazi. Too many players spotted an elbow that distracts them, draws their eye. And although he goes down eventually, uh, it looks to be done and dusted. Zipan trying to land that extra shot on Shin. Would have left him in a winnable 1v1, but a little too much to ask. 1-0 for KC, and a very well-handled start to this. We already see Navi look for a bit of control, and they are shut down immediately by KC's aggression. Yeah, it was the pace that they actually took things through Hukai. I don't think 
anybody was really watching that angle. And again, these flashes, the supportive flashes from the right. And that's one of the swap ups they had from their prior comp. Like we saw them running a Yoro on this map, and then they had the Raze as well. But adding that extra little bit in on the Gecko, I think the rate has been one of the best we've seen in the region so far. And kicking things off strongly with that pistol under their belt. Now, Na'Vi, they're going to invest a little bit into this one. Shorty in lamps. Other than that, just going to be a couple of sheriffs. Yeah, good potential to get damage done even with that bind. The flash is perfect. The swing on the back of it even better. And Xiao gets out with two. It could have been more, but two is still good enough. Artist tucked in on the side is baiting. Trying to draw their eye again, but Angel's being spotted. Artist dealt with, and the pistols are forced back. At least most of them are. Zipan's gone swinging into heavy traffic. Ends right up there. flattened. And with damage done to Narate, yeah, Navi could make this costly, but the chances of winning from here, very low. Yeah, the only real thing would be is if they can gain some of the weaponry back. It doesn't look like there's much to really be found. I, I think they have an idea of where these players Ooh. are going to be. So again, she manages to get a couple off the back of it. And now it's left on to Angel. He's retrieved himself a Sheriff. Up against Martin, the advantage still firmly sat with the player on KC's side. But the major issue is that that time is going to begin to tick. And Angel can almost just play with left. that. Try and wait for him to go for a plant. Doesn't really need to get into position. And Martin, obviously wary that if he gives up this spot, that's where the guns are. Oh, that timing. He's just managed to cross for free. 15 seconds or so, should be able to get the plant down, but it looks like Angel wants the TP. Pick up a weapon along the way, left. 35 health. Not a favorable position to play from, and that nade could block <gasps> him out, but instead, oh, what? somehow, Martin plants in the open, ends up taking a fight that he should not have won, and wins it. Well, fair enough, two to zero for KC, but not in a conventional manner. No, I, I can't believe that's the spot he actually decided to plant it. I was like, to anywhere to else on the site, the it's, TP. it's terrifying. It's but I, hey, he gets it over the line, manages to win that final duel. And an incredibly good round for Na'Vi, though. Like, the amount of damage that they've been able to do in this position. Oh, he's mad. Oh, a little bit frustrating, but yeah, all in all, dropping four weapons. You can see the bind that's coming up for KC is a pretty ugly one at that, while rifles across the board for Na'Vi. A oh, frustrating round for Angel, but Fourth still a oh, good one. Four players spotted here. KC put in a box immediately. Navi have that info, and they have slowed the push. What was going to be a very pacey take from the side of KC, the element of surprise combined with the numbers advantage. This time, though, they've been halted, and they're left with a pretty tough choice. Going through this smoke, you know they might have rotated. As we can see, there are four players waiting for these attackers to walk out. And once the flashes subside, the kills come in far too quickly. A clean follow-up with only Angel falling. Yeah, it had to be a weaker purchase in this round for Casey. Obviously wanting to play that as a bit more of a bonus. Already a couple of ultimates are going to be coming online. Thrash available for Narate, but also if they fight for the orbs, they could have Tomazi on a Viper's Pit. And on the other side of things, it's going to be that orbital strike available for Xiao, but it is exactly what you want for the side of Na'Vi. Just being able to basically bounce back immediately, keep the majority of the rifles onto the board. And now we look to see what KC have got planned for their attack. Seems a little bit more defaulty than the last couple of rounds. Yeah, not looking to get the round off to too quick of a start or catch all players inside the knife. KC pump the brakes, play the default. And this is where Navi, you know, they've got something to fall back on with an orbital strike, but those rifles in hand, there's no need to be over rotating. They can bunker themselves down. But I don't see any attempts at early information gaining bar that knife going out. I've spotted one player in hookah. And at some point, you're going to get a little suspicious of this play. You can already see those players gravitating towards B-Long. We may have the flash out and the swing on the back. I'm just curious to see that Angel isn't popping up that dizzy every now and then just to clear out long, and, and it looks like he just has. But that, that, yeah, that is the thing. Up oh, until yeah. now, they would literally awesome. used zero utility. So that they can still throw out the nade or whatever they like to try and just go for the plant denial. Thrash is going to find absolutely nothing. And Sugetsu is going to use this to try and reclaim some space. There is the Dizzy from the other side with a flash through, but he still wins his battle. The trade's back, though, from Martin and the rate of Fantastic. Leaving things on to just one Martin, attempting to try and do it. Oh, and he's going to take down the final player of Artis as well. 
A huge round from Martin, and he will gift KC their third. Oh, that was a battle between Martin and Sagetsu. Sagetsu's pathing was beautiful, dodging flashes after his position was given away, repositioning to catch him completely off guard. But, well, looks like he just got one-upped by the player on the other side. And, of course, big conversations behind the scenes about some of these young guns. Martin, I mean... We just saw Durka in the previous series, Tom, and I think if you were to compare him to anyone, the younger form, it, it could be this man here, seven and two at the moment, and, and someone that, you know, he's had a spot of inconsistency here or there, but I think all, overall a very promising player for the future, uh, even for now, to be honest, after international performances and the depth they were able to run going through kickoff. Three to one, KC leading. But Navi have something up their sleeve. Viper's pit deployed, and the rocket doesn't get fired out in time. Sagetsu holds his ground inside of Hookah. And again, KC's aggressive push is put to a stop. Uh, Narate is taking a lot of damage. In that corner, he's gone down to the snake bite. An, an interesting decision. Perhaps he thought he'd get the upper hand as, as Sagetsu went walkabouts. Instead, he has perished to a snake bite. It's, uh, it's not what you like to see. No, oh, definitely not the start they're looking for in a round where their economy is on the line. Our Viper's Pit is available, but they're actually just going to go peeking. Angel goes down. Maybe not expecting anybody to swing that wide. Tomazi also given another opportunity. The nade is going to leave Shin at least a little bit lower, but a round that was looking done. Well, it now starts to look a little bit more done with One Shin dropping to the judge. Yeah, Tomazi was even trying to catch an angle as Xiao came out or as someone emerged from spawn, but he's caught in the back. Too many players on Navi still floating around. Magnum needs a big old play to make this happen. One flash still to work with and one kill found, but that is where it ends. Three to two, they're right back in it. And well, that Viper's pit from Sagetsu, it's rare that you see one uh, almost giving you the assist, uh, but there was no way back out. I, we, I figure we're gonna get a replay of that. There's the first and look at this. Even if he runs back through at a certain point, he's dead because of the decay of the pit. But uh, standing in the corner didn't see any different of, of, a, of a solution. One enemy oh. remaining. Maybe hoping that someone was pushed, catch a timing, but it hasn't worked out. So. And, now, and now things, well, financially are about as bad as they could be, surviving the last round with a singular player. It puts Casey in a bit of an awkward position. Now, they do have themselves the Viper's Pit. I, I can only assume that that will only be utilized if they're able to do a significant amount of damage. And while the one weapon, it may have only been a stinger, has passed hands within the first seconds of the round. Rough timing by Artis there. He's caught with a little shot, but still they need to follow up on him. And to do that, they've got to get through Xiao. And that ain't happening this time around. Spike down inside Hookah, player down on A-Long. And with this, it's just no right. Sheriff in hand, one versus five, and not a single kill to be found. The scoreline is tied up three to three, but Navi have got the ball rolling. Yeah, no, and Andalusia flawless as well to keep the finances as strong as humanly possible. It's going to have to be a response from KC soon because you can already see like, that the majority of players are around that three, four, maybe even five thousand credit mark for Navi. And for KC, okay, that's it. Still got that Viper Spit, still got uh, uh, from the shadows they can try and throw in to cause a little bit of disruption. But I think these sort of slower rounds, these more defaulty rounds, have just been given those individual fights over to Na'Vi, and they are more than happy to take those. Well, even from round two, Tom, we saw that with pistols in their hand, they were able to do so much damage. And the side of Navi oh under a little bit of pressure. We saw the snake bite land and force Angel into the corner, but I'm not sure that they know he can safely be stood there. And they're definitely not watching it. But the Molly forces them back, or at least stops them going forward. Their own decisions send them in the other direction. It seems the A site is the new target. With Navi being so close, though, they might spot that out pretty soon. In fact, I already see Angel moving down yeah. towards Long, and we may have seen a flash go down. It could be everything. He's actually given that up because of the what? showstopper. It got baited out by the From the Shadows. He oh, went to wow. TP Heaven and Zipan just uses it to try and kill him off. And because of it, they've just wasted that. Oh, that's a brilliant trade for KC. I don't think they were ever expecting to get an old out of it. Now, though, back towards this B site. Angel is still in this corner. Hasn't been cleared, but it's only going to be the one. Even still, it gives the information over to Xiao. Viper's green immediately goes up, and he's just looking to brawl, but he loses this time. And toxins weren't there to keep it on up, and Martin caught around the side. What's happening?
happening with Artis? It's just found three kills, quick as could be. But Magnum somehow stands to equalize it. A one Down versus one, one Sagetsu, who's been sublime thus far, but spotted out by the floating cabbages. Magnum realizes that player's a little too close, so the rotation comes in. The plant could be secured. It looks like it will be. Nice, left. safe angle. But on the way back, there's a bit of danger. The timing could be perfect for Sagetsu. He rounds the corner, but just about misses him. Magnum's managed to slip away. And Sagetsu doesn't know where to. It could have been the walk to mid. The timing would have to be perfect. I think he'll suspect this position. But still two directions that Magnum can take it. Cat and mouse for now. The first tap should draw Magnum, but he's he's not afraid. He thinks it's all a bait. And what a way to read that ruse. Three kills for Magnum and a Red Bull clutch to put Casey back on top. Yeah, that they've needed a few of them. These rounds that they're winning are, are mostly with one player surviving. And I, yeah, that was a huge clutch out from Magnum. That was a scenario where Artis looked like he closed the round. Oh, yeah, yeah. getting three kills on the entry into the site. But then Magnum does one better. Like, just does exactly oh, wow. the same in response. Clears a couple from the site as they peek him full in, in pretty decent spacing. He's able to isolate them. And while well, just playing with Sugetsu at the end, that's going to be four to three. Casey reclaiming their lead, but I think even though it's a, a celebration from <laughs> from Zaysh, uh, I think Engus decided this might be a good time to take a tactical pause because the rounds they are winning are with one player, and eventually that's going to end up with well probably Navi winning the half. Well, that's it. Navi running away with it if it gets isolated down to that. Not just because clutch potential can be matched pound for pound on that defensive side, but yeah, one v three is not really repeatable uh, more times than not. Four on the board already. Attack side shaping up, but we know Navi's second half could be scary. Okay, see, they can't let anything slip, and they're not exactly close to destroying Navi's economy. It's not like that round win gives them a free one after. You can see it on your screens there. Still gonna be rifles in play, and ultimates coming online. The orbital strike for Xiao, just one away, and Artis, no surprise after last round. He's got his ult online and ready yeah. to go. That could help them a lot on the way back through. And then KC have a lot of dangers to keep in the back of their mind moving into round number eight. Yeah, there's definitely a matchup as well. I, I think we have to talk about both of these teams looking like they're in decent form. KC obviously having a, a matchup already where they fell to foot, so not wanting to head into the sort of 2 2 the danger zone. And for Navi, they're yet to lose what? on Martin again. He got off to the races very quickly in this matchup. Someone we know can take over these games, but it has been absurd the damage he's been able to do. And again, a double opener to kick off this round. The only danger here, I was going to say there were three players within the B side, Mitch, but now it's left to one. And Artis's big uh, s slowing utility to at least buy some time has already been used. That nade was thrown down quite cautiously on B long. And he's going walkabouts, but something tells me if he doesn't spot these players on long, which would just be Tamazi on a timing. Oh, he's seen him. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say, he's gonna go to A. He's gonna think he's flanking the real play. Instead, he does get back towards long, but what can he really do? He's gonna flash out. Artis is going for the play. He went big last round, but this time he is shut down before he can even get started. Yeah, that's Martin to take the fight and take the damage, but fight planted. his teammates had his back, and KC, well, this round is in the bag. Again, off the back of Martin. Like, he has been superb thus far in a lot of these opening battles and that was one of the things we sort of mentioned within the desk because we know that there's going to be moments where Navi are pushing we know that they're going to try and push teams into awkward fights they're going to play crazy sometimes Martin has done well to really just shut them out in these opening fights and make sure that any of that aggression on the defensive side is just denied almost immediately It's a dangerous factor to have a player like that as well who can almost settle the round mere seconds in. Gotta be on guard the whole time. For Navi, they'll see that lead slip further out of their grasp. They've been there before. Never too fearsome. I've given the advantage away. They can pull it back, but now we see the credits go down to the last. Said they still had money, and they did. But this round here is going to be the last buy for Na'Vi, and we can see KC absolutely run away with this early half. Ultimates, though, are starting to come online. The same can be said for KC. This round, you got to keep your eye on Martin after so right many there. kills and a couple deaths. He's close to getting that showstopper right back online. Add to that, Narrate could well have Thrash to play with, and you've got a very dangerous round for the defenders. Yeah. 
Damasi still goes wipe this bit. <laughs> still has it, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay! Wow! Doesn't like, even again, need to see him. Uh, just another open up from Martin. It, it, these rounds have been so quick to start. And he's been winning a lot of those early battles. I think Zipan might have taken a chunk of damage as well. He's down to just 42 HP. Artist with the flash. I, he's just thrown it to them, maybe to catch it. <laughs> not, really a way, not really a way that anybody can act off that. Maybe just trying to put into the heads that somebody was close. Give the sound cue if they're around uh, Hookah. Maybe they hear it, think there's a long push, something like that. But yeah, I mean, they were stood there looking at it, thinking, well, what, what the hell is the idea behind that? OK, he has one less flash, I guess. Easy peasy. Spike planted. Uh, okay, so I was going to make the point. Viper's Pit, probably see it used here, Tom. Nope, not anymore. Not needed. It's a no. five versus two, because you've, uh, or five versus three, pardon me. One player trapped in elbow, no way to get revived, and a ton of control. I love this from Magnum. It's now, it's not even checked. No, they are being picked apart. The remaining players remaining. just going to try and back out of there, and Xiao's yeah. caught on the way as well. This is not looking good for the side of Na'Vi. The few rounds that they won were relatively clean, but again, it, it's these opening picks. Off to a good start. I, I feel like KC are one of those teams as well where their 5v4 conversion is always very good. I, I think their fundamentals, I think you've got to give credit to Aang on that. Very good at their training. And you can see that Na'Vi in response a lot of the time, they're going to try and gamble. They're going to try and take risks. And that's exactly what they were waiting for. You could see Tomazi was just holding that pixel angle, waiting for Ardis to gamble. And well, this time, the remaining player of Sugetsu had to fold. It is going to be 6-3 to three now. Already a, a solid attacking half for the side of KZ. And you have to bear in mind, this is the pick of Na'Vi. It's funny that a second before that kill, I, I was thinking, are, are they, will they, won't they commit that Viper's Pit? And then Tamazi got into the same debate about even using his Poison Orb seconds later. Too clean of a round from KC, double the scoreline of Na'Vi. But as we mentioned, that was a round where there wasn't exactly the, the most to work with for Na'Vi. There were some weaknesses. Oh, and yeah. they come back in, Monster ready to rumble, but up against a lot. Thrash is the first to be used. It's going to be sent right back to mid just to be reclaimed. After the orbital strike burned up, but Tom, again, a very early yeah. orbital strike, considering it doesn't cancel out Thrash, you know? 15 seconds later, Thrash is back and ready to go. You don't have an orbital strike anymore. But the, yeah, this is a, a few ults now we've seen from Na'Vi that have been super preemptive. It's It would almost assume that they'd taken full hookah control already. Yeah. Instead, though, Angel now. It seems like he's looking for that 1v1 Magnum. It's just waiting She's within that faded smoke. And now we're going to see the second usage of that thrash. This time they are pushing off it. Oh, no chance for Angel. The trade, though, could be good for Xiao if it wasn't shut down so quickly. Tamazi there to play, and with a Viper's Pit still to work with, this could be the round where we see it get used. In fact, he's the one planting. Spike Questionable. Planted. We'll see if it does get activated. There we go. At long last, the Viper's Pit comes into play. And this is not what you want to see if you're on the side of Na'Vi now having to defuse the spike and play through all this decay. And you won't be fighting Viper all too soon either because you've got a lot of players up close ready to take Tamazi's place in these duels. The fight around the back sees one kill traded out, but with the spike still to be touched, that's where the real problem comes in. Of course, the pit doesn't fully cover, but they believe they've got utility and they've certainly got the positions to fight back with time ticking away. A kill is needed very soon for Navi, and in fact, they'll find two. Now it goes back to Winnable with no snake bites. Tamazi has to run in, shorty in hand, and he can't get there in time. Just about. It will go across the line for the defenders fighting against all odds to close the gap. And it's just another, like, Na'Vi-esque round. Like, it's peculiar that they're able to get that back over the line because, again, the post plant, as you said, you had the, the Viper passive, the two aggressive positions, and then you had Narrate even in Hookah waiting back to try and cut anyone who wasn't going to go within the pit. It looked like a really good post plant scenario. But then you just have, again, Ardis and, and Zipan, this duo. And I, I think... That might be one of the players who's actually benefited most from artists coming back, is Zipper. I, I feel like we've seen that across many different series. His individual level looks to have gone up. And what Na'Vi, it's weird. This is both teams now have taken pauses after winning a round. And it seems like Na'Vi are going to do the same here. I think you could see as well going to the coach cams, the frustration on Zeich. 
Understandable. That, yeah. That's a round that you very much feel like is locked in. It, you've got a good chance of winning, but once the Viper's Pit comes into play, the advantages, the positions they had as well. Maybe that's why they it don't use never it. Went away. <laughs> Maybe without that pit, they win the round every time. That's the problem, Tom. They could off narrate sight lines, so he couldn't take the fights. Granted, he hasn't been going too well in this map, but that'll turn around. I guarantee you that if you've ever seen this guy play. But compared to what could have been now a 7-3 to three score line and a stacked possibility for KC's late game. Remember, the economy again was being invested heavily by Na'Vi and they lost most of their players. It was two left by the time they win. It could have been a very good foundation set in this half. Instead, well, it could still be equalized by Na'Vi before we see the side swap. Similar sort of default. A lot of the aggression from Na'Vi hasn't had mass amounts of success, but running this Gecko alongside the KO, they're able to get quite a bit of information without having to push too far. So get to in the close corner, but the entirety there. of KC there. looking like they're going to go off the back of this showstopper. Martin, first one through, but for now at least, just walking up. Did they see Sagetsu? It doesn't look like it. The reactions aren't there just yet. The flash has caught him. It delays him a moment, and he goes down. Martin even found the kill on the Zipan with the Showstopper. Navi now on a serious back foot. Good paranoia. Paranoia and double peek after. Can't fault it. You can't do much about it on the side of Navi. You could almost be thinking about the save already. Angel still looking for a fight. But again, Ed, this seems to be the thing. It, when KC go for these more Last sort of standing. disjointed like defaults, it seems like Na'Vi have an opportunity to actually pick them off. And in rounds where they just go for the direct takes, the executes, and Na'Vi just get blitzed. Like that that was perfect from them. I think especially again, you have to just give credit over to Narate's utility. Because yep. that Gecko Flash, if it doesn't catch out Sugetsu, He's at least getting two. I, I believe it. 100%. And, and it's not even the fact that it stops him from killing Martin, which would have almost certainly come through if you look at the timing on him going through the wall. And to that, Martin wouldn't fire off. He wouldn't be able to take down this player on the back side. So you have two kills cancelled out, and it's all because they get that information. The big difference between a Sky Flash and a Gecko, and why we see Gecko used so much, so powerful with that Dizzy, because it doesn't just tell you there are players there. I have blinded someone. It also tells you, with the sound cues, he's there. Yeah. You can follow those little blue tracers, and that's a ton of information that you see capitalized on this time. Round 12, 7-4. to four. Still can be a good half for Na'Vi, but they've got to do it here, and there's weaknesses. A Bulldog and a Guardian in play. Definitely not the greatest weaponry, but definitely workable. Again, just look at the pace, though. KC switching it up. Tamazi's positioning could be perfect. He's waited, but actually what? Xiao just gets the perfect timing. Shin goes aggressive, and wow, this very quickly has divulged into madness. So many individual fights being taken, and all of them being won by Na'Vi. It leaves the rate alone. You know that you don't want to give this man too much. They're just throwing their utility at him. He found three in quick succession. Down to just 38 HP. In fact, 20. As the spams do even more. He needs to hit these final shots. And he needs everything to miss from the side of Na'Vi. You said he'd been a little quiet so far. But you can see that Na'Vi are giving him the respect he deserves at this stage. Sitting back with it. And he's found his fourth of the round. May not know the shout's there. But he's able to reposition. He's able to fall back towards this B site. And as you said, he's got the perfect ultimate for a one versus one. Might be one of the most mechanically seconds. perfect Five. setups to an ace that we've seen. Unbelievable. The way he picks off each and every angle, but one more still to find. Position should be perfect even if he doesn't get checked. And actually, when that spike gets tapped, Thrash might be able to path up very close before it's spotted. In fact, used already. Very early on, the rate thought he heard him drop down, but it was a fake Q. Xiao now knows where his opponent is. Thrash won't be here to help. It has to be the shot connected from the rate. The ace just a bullet away. And there it is. An absolutely unbelievable play from the rate. Eight rounds for Casey on the back of it. And yeah, he had been quiet, Tom, but we knew it was a matter of time until this guy woke up. Oh, it's safe to say last week. Enemy remaining. 
<laughs> Navi were the ones dishing out the nightmares. <laughs> this week they return, and well, the race just pulled off one of the greatest aces we've ever seen in EMEA. A one versus five to take them home their eighth round. I, it, it truly is absurd, the individual ability that this man has. Positioning, perfect, aim, no one questioning it. But Navi have got to feel like fools. Well, there was a round that Navi took because of what I would put down to overpeaking from KC with that Viper's Pit in play. Seems fitting that they end up losing one of their own to the very same Zipan. Hello, he is going very quickly. The nade already dug deep and the shots, oh, they're not really hitting. Isn't that right? Answers right back with a clean shot. The advantage now swings towards KC, but the spike has been planted. A chance for them to hold on to control, but they are being flanked on every which side. And these players now separated out, isolated in every duel. Molly line up for Xiao. Maybe he can buy a little bit more time, but Angel's gonna have to go nuclear on this site. Last Good luck to him. Standing. He doesn't even get the one. Ah, the molly. That's at least there, but as you said, we now need back-to-back -back 1v5s, and they're not gonna allow that. Instead, it's the opposite. It's gonna be an Andalusia flawless for KC. And, and that's the thing. There is very few things that I believe can shake Na'Vi, but losing a 1v5 in the, in the final round of the first half, Maybe that will shake them. That will that will shake anyone, Tom, uh, in the fashion that they did as well. Even in the 1v2, by the time that they said, hey, hey, let's take this seriously, Angel was 10 HP. It's already too far gone at that point. Nine on the board now with that pistol for KC and Navi. They're coming in with nothing. Classics and a few sheriffs to work with. This seems set to be double digits for KC. And Tom, we started this map out with you saying, well, we expect Navi to be better in the second half. Well, they're going to have to be a lot better to pull this one back. Yeah, they're, well, no matter what the, the stat lines will suggest, they've always been an attack side of teams. Um, but Got the spike. Them going into this map when they won versus Vitality, it was 7-5. It wasn't anything too crazy. When they find it in them, we know what this Na'Vi squad can do. This, though, it's not looking good. And KC, they don't feel like a team that will let these sort of leads slip when it's going well for Carmine Core. They, they really do seem to just run away with these matches. And I think every little thing that could have gone right has done. Martin has said he's been the best player in the server so far. He just got wrecked with artists on a classic. Let's see what he can do with his gun. Well, not much for a second. Stunned up. Few shots well, through, okay. and that one lands eventually. Artist down, but they're defending that weapon still. Players taking fights across the board, and it's the rate that's mostly on the other side of it. KC finding themselves another round and a big build up. Narrate's going to take that defuse, I believe. Yep. So just two away from the thrash. And ult that actually. I don't think we've seen that much impact from so far, but it can have a ton. Very much like right in the first half. It can be quiet, but when it answers up, it can get you around. Wow, 10 to 4. We've seen Na'Vi in down and out positions before, but again, different opposition. And a different map. Mm -hmm. I, 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 can't, I don't think I see it happening this time. Like genuinely, we've seen a few rounds where a few players have looked good, but what, the time they won this map was Angel Watt getting like 25 kills. He's currently bottom of the ball with three. He was able to just blitz Vitality almost on his own, and I'm liking these setups already from KC. A pop flash on either side, aggressive from Shin as well. The Outlaw's gonna kick things off. That's Xiao gone. That's your smoke's gone. You know, it's funny because you mentioned the Vitality game, and I think what Vitality say about their roster with, with three duelists better than, than anyone else in the world, I'd almost, you know, I almost think they're talking about KC when they say that. <laughs> because this, this roster, I think that applies to, and a lot of people out there will agree with that. Martin, Narrate, and Tamazi, unbelievable players in their own right. Magnum has had one hell of a year so far. The year's only barely started, but he's been so impressive. A lot to be done by Navi to fight their way back through. That's a good start with Shin down and even managing to take Martin. 
Ah, it, it does seem One like Na'Vi, they, they don't get those opening battles. They barely want any opening duels, but Poison's off. when they have been good, it's been a response. Their 4v5 stats must be pretty decent at this stage. But Tamazi is about damage. Can he remove any extra weaponry? A first goes his way, but I can tell you now, there shouldn't be anybody peeking. Especially with the util that's there, and eventually, Ardis is going to be the one to bring home their fifth. Of course, for KC, Mitch, it was a bonus round. So expectations on Na'Vi were to win that one. Yeah, absolutely. This is a round they should win and a round they do win. It, it's a formality, if anything. And I think a lot of it comes down to, will you see it being a, a dominant victory? Do they seem like they have control or, or are they struggling? The funny thing is, in those rounds where they should win and so on, KC kind of struggled starting this map out. They were shaky in some of the easier rounds. And then they woke up later on when the rifles came through. But what worked for them? was punching through the Navi defense, was sending this team to the back foot and playing those post plants, converting those advantages. It's harder to do on the defense. Every push comes with a risk. You leave a weakness on another part of the map as you strengthen one side. Magnum, not looking to give away no. anything. He, he does have the gun. Him, and he falls right back. Lovely. Yeah, the, the Spectre is not the gun you want to be fighting that battle with. Again, just looking for information across the map. They've been doing this with the Sky Utility throughout their short stint on the defensive side. Looking like Magnum's going to be the one under pressure. Does have support from Hooker, but he needs to get out of here. Has a few supportive flashes, and straight in goes Zipan. A comfortable entry. Maybe not the most comfortable shots onto <laughs> the Thrash. Oh, he was he was running out of ammo, so just trying to preserve in case they ran through to follow up on the thrash. Instead, thrash is on the floor. You've got no value for it, and you're not going to get it back. So, very well handled from the side of Navi. They've locked him out and locked in another round win. I just look back, Tom, at the the Lotus versus Liquid because I remembered in this series in particular it was shaky, but. Uh, you mentioned KC, very good at finding opening picks. Navi, very good at fighting from disadvantages. It's almost perfect between the two. In that game, just on Lotus, they were minus seven versus Liquid in opening duels, and they only barely lost the game. It's somewhere that they're able to consistently fight back from. I think it was similar on Split as well. It was only minutely uh, positive. Now, this is a team that doesn't mind playing from behind, and listen, with a player like Angel on the roster, you better be comfortable with that. Yeah, I think the thing that's worrying for me, though, is that just looking at this KC team, a lot of their, uh, the first half wins were just them playing off the advantages. Like they are a lot less likely to give up the man advantage in those scenarios. Four rounds now, and they did manage to save the weaponry. But the, the problem is what's going to be bought up along the other players is not going to be much. So I almost want to see like a buddy system. Like can the players that don't have guns steal it off the corpse of a friend if, if the fights don't go to plan? Down goes your knife, there so goes your information. Two players caught by it, a third here. And actually, a third about to give away their position as well. I think Magnum going for a deep flash, no? I'm looking at the mini-map and just seeing three players shift their way down B long. It's a, a quiet play, a contact play from the defensive side, and they've seen nothing. So an early flank, but it, it's not that early. Navi are gearing up for this push as we speak, and I think a big factor in it is going to be Angel. He's the one separated from the squad, taking individual fights, almost catching them with utility in hand, and indeed he'll finish in off eventually. But now they've got to deal with the players behind, spotting one just now, and a second indeed, Sagatsu's out of it. Yeah, he headshot Magnum through that wall. Magnum's actually a little bit lucky to even be surviving at this stage. The Rain needs to win this battle, and no, it's his counterpart, his doppelganger, that takes him down. And unfortunately for them, it's the pistols mostly that are surviving. Zipan, looking like he's closed this one with the Bazzi again, just looking for damage. A headshot to either Zipan or Sugetsu would net him a kill, but other than that, again, this is the problem. You've had your round, you've had your crazy round that has gone your way. Now Na'Vi are not going to let that happen again. If they lose another crazy clutch like that, I, I think that will be an anomaly. They do it once, yeah, but then they play a little bit safer. This is it. They did it once because the reins were eased up on. They were in a 5v1. They felt like it was their round or a 4v1, and they went swinging. And, and that was the mistake, the mistake that got punished.
after those kind of things, you, you're never going to find yourself slipping down that slope again, at least not if you're a team like Na'Vi. Very good round from Angel also. As I said, he was isolated, not there in the replay, obviously. His teammates have come to help him, but in the initial duel, still manages it. And that is Narate's response right after getting domed by this <laughs> much older uh, Gecko on the other side. But with that, he brings oh, some more couple experience. Of years. Couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. Just over a decade. Oh, no, a couple of years. Actually, not just <laughs> over. Over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Still, you know he's got say. those reactions. Re respect your elders. Powerless. Pace oh. change, though, from Na'Vi. They're going to use all of that to take out their utility. Martin still does well. Zipan should get a trade. No, actually, it's just damage. A lot of damage, in fact, that's been done. Magnum's not going to be able to survive any longer, but Shin what? does a little bit more. Narrate with the spam, but Zipan again. Player He's now tagged down to five, and it's left all onto Sugetsu. The one versus one two hits that first shot. Tries to bait in Tomazi. It's going to be Viper on Viper. Timing here for Tomazi looks pretty good, but round the corner goes Sugetsu. The poison orb, and he's going to drop it just in time to take him down. It is another clutch one, another single player round for KC, but they won't mind. They're getting themselves ever closer to that map point. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. They can almost see the ribbon at the end of the race. Two more to go. Mel have pulled this off. Navi on their map pick of bind. They come in today undefeated, putting those points on the board week after week. But this was the game that we knew could be a turning point for that squad. And we heard the conversation on the desk earlier on about how important this week's games are. This is the week where you'll come out of it with a good idea. Are we one away from making it through or are we in that danger zone? The turning point for these teams and for Na'Vi could be the first loss on the board. Still though, only map one, sunset and split up next. And well, I'm excited for a competitive series. Looks like KC might have that map as a leg up going but into the next though. That's the other thing as well. You have to talk about even though it seems quite early with a few weeks left. In playoffs, if you finish in that first place spot, yep. you skip a little bit of the playoffs. And then if you win, yep. I think it's just maybe even one game. I, I think you actually make it to Shanghai. So uh, that, that's the scenario you could be in if you manage to finish in one of those top two spots. You also avoid the other top place from the other group. So you, you really want to be putting yourself in a position where you finish in that number one. And both of these groups, as we've seen, have been very competitive with KC obviously already taking their first loss. Their second one could put them in a position where they end up slipping a little bit further down the board. Here. And from this spot especially, you do not want to allow Na'Vi back into the game. I am looking though, Martin again. That showstopper in play, he has been fantastic thus far. Again though, their economy is on the brink. A Spectre and a Judge currently in play. Now the Judge, we've seen that work out on this map in particular many a time. The Spectre, I'm, st I'm still waiting to see it. I don't think you'll see it on this angle, Tom, if I'm being completely honest okay. with you. Magnum, again, same old play. Spots him, falls back. Seekers confirm what he's seen, but that could be a little bit of a problem. Oh, I believe that player is detained, is caught, but the TP comes through from KC to conserve the numbers. Narate what, picked what up a happened? double on the run through. <laughs> the spike was in their spawn. It didn't matter about the site push, to be honest, once Narate had his teeth into the round. I, I feel like I've just had a stroke. Everybody died within, it's unbelievable. Like, within like a second. <laughs> just the admins restart the round. <laughs> just an absolute again, 11 trade seven. of kills. It's, it's absurd. Oh, here we go. This was the push up. Oh, wow. Because it, okay. it looked ridiculous to me on the mini map, but that that is outrageous carry on. Yeah, he's almost taken the top, by the way. I, I, I think there was a point where Martin must have been on something like 13, 14 kills, yeah. and he was on five. Four and eight. There so we eight. go. They have stemmed right the bleeding. There. They have denied Na'Vi what was about to be a pacey take. I love the rotation they did there as well. Their, their teammate gets detained. The full squad rotates to make sure Tamazi's defended. But Na'Vi, they still have plenty to play within this round. They are not on the brink just yet, but five rounds in a row needed. <laughs> Went on a little longer than Magnum is ready for. Well, it looks like another test for the young guns as the old guard of Na'Vi set Ooh. their sights on the B site. Now, a nade's gone through, but the snake bite delays them. Reposition from Tamazi and the shot breaking. The boom bot was from far away. They might not clear the corner on the way through with so many players here. Orbital Strike draws their eye. 
And now here's the opportunity for Tamazi. So low on HP, but Narain capitalizes as they look to trade. Now, I don't know how Tamazi got the second one. Still on 24 health. It's the Getsu who's going to have to capitalize. Sure, they tagged up two of these players, but there's two healthy and ready to fight. Just now making it to sight with a Viper's Pit, blocking out Sagetsu, and Spam's coming left. back. It's a formality at this point. One more round for KC, and that's what we're witnessing here. Short of a 22nd 1v4 through a Viper's Pit, and frankly, end the series here if Sagetsu wins it. <laughs> Give him the win. Yeah, I, I think he's given up at this stage. 12 seconds, otherwise the map is done, and it is dusted. KC will take their opponent's map choice. Some impressive plays coming out from their side. I think the highlight definitely has to go for to narrate. And I don't know if Na'Vi are going to have a response, but they're always pretty good at the comebacks. That they are, Tom. That they are. You can never count this team out. I've learned that, as many players have, the hard way. And for viewers, well, it means we're just going to have an impressive series ahead of us. The next map up is Sunset. Casey's pick. They'll look to take it 2-0 after this. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Now I'm second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the boo, but keep it a beam. Know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, 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 win. <laughs> Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. <laughs> Double, triple team, what they need to defend. <laughs> I do left and I'm going with the win. I'm going with I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition yeah, of divine. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. Feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win being guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. If you gon' speak about it, then be about it. If you don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? Yeah, I got a game on lock. I feel like a champion. Ch 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 a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. 
put it all on the line. Definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line. Definition of divine. Yeah. Red is the gold. Is the secret well wishes there fun by or something? Seems legit. Dude, pay some attention. Every time, like first time with you guys. 200 AQ, yeah sure. We'll see. Well, that was a very interesting opening map between Na'Vi and Casey. We're talking about before the game kicked off, the fact that the Gentle Mates guys said, if you don't shoot Casey first, they will come for you. And actually, to be honest, even when Na'Vi did get some opening kills, if they didn't check Narrate for a pulse, they found out the hard way that he could come back and take each and every one of them down. Let's take a look at that incredible ace from the end of the first half still. It's not only that, it's a, it's not only an ace, it's a 1v5. The way that he and Navarrete translate one kill into, transfers one kill into the other. He he makes this very good call, Angel probably the bad call, even though he had all the strats, he didn't see this one coming. Walks all the way out, gets the plant, everything. You're like, no way, right? He's only 20 HP. Xiao goes in, he sh throws the thrash to find nothing because Xiao is still waiting. He just used the smoke uh, to clear the corner. You think that everything's lost? There's no way Narrate does this, right? Because it's probably the first 1v5 that we have in the entire year. Uh, but in the end, somehow, it's Narrate, he does it. And when we're talking about like the defense here... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Can we look at Aang? That's the funniest thing about that clip for me. It's not It's not even Zaytis' reaction, it's Aang just being Aang. Like, just, I really want to have a stare off between and... him and Epic. Mm. It, just, it just makes me think, right? It makes me uh, just spend some time thinking about how it has to be da on a daily basis in Prague, right? Because Eng is completely oblivious. Like, he doesn't care about the fact that Eng is literally shouting in his ear and he's just like, I wonder if it's like that every day. I also do want to actually look inside his wardrobe and see how many of those black coach tops he has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at who's warming up in the Aim Labs warm up. I believe it might be a Mr. Martin. I mean, all of these players, I would love to just be a fly on the wall during their practice. Because, I mean, what happens when you get a team of duelists together? You get moments, obviously, like Narray, even though obviously he's not in that role anymore still. And you, you just get magic moments. Yeah, magic moments indeed. 
I think one of the things you need to really focus on, though, is like on on the defense, because like we saw that in the in the one versus five that Narrate got, and obviously he has a really good aim and he was able to convert that. We just need to see like the defense play a little bit tighter. Angel doesn't need to peek. They could play the two versus one after Narrate plants, and then there were also uh, rounds that KC could have closed out. Like they could have won with a larger margin if their defense was a little bit tighter. Uh, when it comes specifically to rounds where yeah. you just have to pick one spot to fight, fight hookah or fight long or play the retake, you can't kind of be in between. That happened when. Uh, way too much yeah, yeah. Let, let's Sorry. take a look at agent select because i know that we we've got to talk about sunset what's really interesting <laughs> to me is the fact that we haven't seen navi play this match since kickoff have they gone again with the chain run Jesus, Looking, they have no. changed it up they have changed no, it up no, so this is a whole new look that crazy have to contend with uh, yeah exactly that this is one of the things that we were expecting navi to do eventually changing the composition sh surprising the rival even though uh, artists did a good uh, job on the chamber this is a complete turnout of of events they should not play in the same way of course zipan is going to be set up and if he has taken notes about what team heretics does in this map um you know many is a great uh, uh, player to learn from because I'm confident that this is going to be a full three map three see today. It's just going to be you on your own. I'm going to put you at the telestrator wall. Let's go over though to Mitch and Tom to get this map underway. You know what? I like it this way. Let's let's not hear from Steel. I've heard enough from him over the last... I'm kidding. I love you, Steel. I'm, I'm excited for this one though. Casey coming in hot after map yep. number one. And of course, Sunset now. I don't know where my expectations should sit, should sit because Navi, they had a couple of rounds where they were firing up, where they were looking like they were activated again. And then you have an ace come in from the right. And then you have the momentum swing to KC. Do we expect them to bounce back on map two? We know Navi can. I, I'm always going to expect them to bounce back. I'll yeah, be honest yeah, with yeah. you. I, I'm to. really excited to see Zipan uh, come in on the Neon. I, I, I like it's not something I can ever remember him playing before. I'm, I'll, I'll go have a look in a sec because I was not expecting that agent to come through at all. But I, I think for this map in particular, a lot of high pace openers, and he's already running it down. Oh, he's having to move out of the way quickly too. Can't quite move quick enough, but the trades come in. And Magnum is forced out of the B that. site by the looks of things. KC already going to be finding themselves in the back foot. Never mind. That was a blind spray through the smoke. Magnum's got a big smile on his face, right and he's right to. Putting the numbers in their favor. The damage down as well with Xiao tagged up a little bit. KC can group up and... Work this one together. Still the flash on the right to make their way through and a wingman to help on the defuse. This is going to be a strong round for KC as they get some information on the way through. Player on left blinded up and not taken uh, out. In fact, it's the shock dart that finds a kill and Xiao triples up. Now it's all Tamazi and the shoe has quickly found itself on the other foot. Navi with four kills from Xiao claim the pistol. <laughs> they might matter from a disadvantage. It's just it's crazy. It's actually becoming a real storyline. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, the the openers, the initial contact from KC, the ideas look sublime. Like you have the, the pop flash that just seems unavoidable. And then the fight back again is mostly Xiao. It is the Xiao show once again. They, they catch players on the cross. The utility looks decent, catching them with flashes. And then Angel gets one with a shock dart. And from then it just falls apart. I mean, it was almost an ace from Xiao as well. He did enough damage. He was the one doing the damage in the first place that let that shock dart get the kill. So he walks out with four kills and one assist in the opening round. Xiao is getting involved, it's fair to say. And the attack side now hearing a lot of steps and seeing a lot of players pushing up on B main. They might have taken it to A, but it's a little late for that even. These players are up close, look at the scrap. So they stick around, they do some damage, and now they set up for the late round with a nice advantage in their back pocket. The, the orb is the only thing that can KC managed to claim as a positive. And in fact, I'm just looking at the HPs, it's not even a lick of damage done in return. Until then. <laughs> the bitch bag curse is even greater. Well, Ardis again, cleaning up some of these kills. To clarify, this is the first time we're ever going to see Zipan playing the Neon. Normally, if he's on a duelist, it was always a raise. Uh, we never really saw him on anything else. It was mostly Ardis in that role. I guess he just likes the, the pacey movement characters. That's, that's what we're talking about. The agents that give him that maneuverability. And again, we say this a lot, Tomazi is going to be there to try and do some extra damage. Now, he is someone going into this series I, I really want to highlight. Maybe not so much in this position. I don't think it's possible. 
but in their victory versus GX, the last time they played it, he was 26 and 14, and I believe that may have even been the first time he played the Cypher after what was a string of Viper. Like, we saw him play Viper pretty much all the way through kickoff as well. Switched up to the Cypher and was utterly fantastic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My eyes will definitely be glued to Zip, and it's mainly the attack side, that space taking, that quick zipping around the corners, and any agent that gets him from the barriers into combat quicker uh, will always be one that I vote for. Now, I'm looking at the setup for Na'Vi, and it looks like some A crunch is about to be attempted. The recon through gets them information. Martin, I love this. You know, he gets revealed, he gets suppressed. So what does he do? Runs forward and <laughs> takes the orb. The guy has no fear, and rightfully so, because he's got an orb and some map control for his team, leaving one behind to watch it. Chin is quickly going to have to give that up. Yeah, of course, normally you'd look at this as a bonus round, but Na'Vi have gone for the classic and purchased up those extra rifles after a singular casualty in the last round. It makes this basically a 4x4 four four them. Just a little bit risky, but gets away with it. And now they have a fourth player, and that's the thing for Casey. They've got that rotation already into position. Looking to take this one pretty quickly. Magnum's already been dropped in the way through, and an isolated Shin has every direction to look at. Not quite able to catch the player that was stunned up, and now they're closing the distance, looking to take the fight themselves. Five versus two, five versus one, falling like flies on the side of KC. And Tamazi left on the other side of the map with the entirety of the attacking side, and most of them being fully fit and ready to fight. He's going for the save. The right call to bring the weapon through to the next, but not a great start to KC's map pick as Na'Vi walk away with a 3-0 lead. No, especially as a team as well that we have sort of marveled at how good they've been in these retake scenarios. I almost wonder if a lot of what this composition allows for Na'Vi is to just disrupt them. Like they've got so much like sort of awkward utility. You see the stuns from Zipan is basically just put into those back lines. They're trying to jump in off the flash. They can't because they're stunned in a corner. For Tamazi, this now comes down to can he hold on to his gun? And why well, is doing well, at least in the initial fights, but it is going to be that trade out. It is going to be the bonus round victory for Na'Vi. And while for KC, there'll have to be some weaker weaponry going into this round, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just look at it. It's the sheer pacing off the back of the utility that I feel like you're never really able to build back into a retake when a team is playing against you like that. I didn't catch what it was. I think it was the wingman as well that was thrown out, caught a stun on Zipan, but in the chaos, they, they couldn't follow up on it. I yeah. can't help but think if you take him down, how different that round is from a space taking perspective from Navi, from being able to follow up on some of the utility like the nade, the fragment that went down. Could have been a different round, but it wasn't. And KC now find themselves going into round number four with sheriffs in their hand and a specter to work with. A slower start for this squad. They were a little slower to start in the previous map. Like we said, there were some troubles around the easier rounds. They were taking a lot of damage. Their economy was being tested, but then they woke up and it felt like there was no way to take their foot off the gas once they got going. For now, that won't be happening as we already see Magnum go down. And it's not like you can really follow up on that trap from the current positions. There's some easy space taking for the side of Navi, as long as they can avoid these pistols. Maybe even the Stinger too, because the Wraith's got a double. And now the round is winnable again for the defensive side with the spike dropped out in the open. And it's not like they've got anyone that makes it easy to retrieve that. No, a dart was just used as well. So they, they can't even try and clear any of these angles. The only thing that really benefits them is that none of the guns are, are retrieved yet. And I almost wonder if the side of KC are just going to opt to play the numbers. Try and group up, try and push this one together. Shin has got to be careful. Left. He's almost walked backwards into the angle. Angel now just looking to try and blockade. I have the spike. But instead, they're just very wary of where these players are going to be coming from. Just watching to see if anybody is looking to get a little bit Not ahead of themselves. Yet. Instead, he's going to throw out the dart, try and use that to almost distract right. as he will get the afterplant. Reposition for the paranoia. I love it. It hasn't caught them, but it's forced them into a wider angle. Sagetsu down, and they know where Angel is. But look at the damage done. Already just 5 HP on Martin. It has to be Shin to help him out in this fight. They need to swing together, and the trade is found. Shin with a wall bang headshot on the Sheriff finds the first round for KC.
That looks like one of those shots where you're running away from being killed and you just shoot. Just like, fire. You, you, you just, just fire. fire. If, if you miss, you've still got a few more bullets left to play with. But this was fantastic from Casey. Again, just the timing of Tamazi. I did this another statement that I don't think too many would disagree with. I think Narrate is the best Stinger player in the world. Like, I, don't just, I don't see anyone use it like oh. him. It's just so absurd with what he's able to get away with on this gun. And Mike gives a first round over to the side of Carmine Corp. And again, I, I believe... Is this their pause once more? Looks the like second it. they went around, it's almost like Eng's going, calm down, lads. Yeah, calm yeah, down. Yeah. Straight away. Get the pieces together. I mean, this is it, though, Tom. I, I do like the approach. You've just found yourself uh, on some unstable ground. Yeah. You've found yourself a little bit of foundation to stand on. And you want to use that like a launching pad, like it's a diving board to make a majestic entrance into the map. And I think following up on the back of this, You've got Navi's economy not really threatened due to their early buys, but ultimates online. And then that's a big deal for this squad. On the attack side, artists can delete their utility and make their way into a site very quickly. And obviously you'll have Zipan sliding through angles. He's got a stinger in his hand as we can see. And that means we're likely to see the finger guns come out. That's the, the, the official name. Yes. To be honest, it's at least it's not the worst I've heard. <laughs> People will understand. That you know? is true. That is true. I think you know there's not many abilities in the game that, that correlate with finger gunning. <laughs> Maybe in a few years. Maybe in a few years. You never know. Well, looking like... Even still, it's going to be more of a default. Zipan hasn't put this into play, but I think they're almost just selling this as a ruse. And the ruse so far hasn't gone too badly. Three players in mid, one still waiting towards the spawn. It leaves just one man sat within the confines of the A site. If they were looking to just blit this, which is exactly what it's gonna do, overdrive in play, looking for that fight onto Shin and we'll find it. The rest of the team are able to rotate quite quickly, but they're taking damage as they do. Narrate does well on the trades, and it's gonna be down to just Tomazi, the rotator. But he almost has to fight this quick, otherwise they're gonna have too many players to deal with. And that's, that, that's a tough round to watch. They fought ahead of the Cypher utility that was still online. Tamazi was playing in spawn specifically to keep those traps online. And they fight ahead of it. They give them the opportunity on the side of Navi to take duels and play this round on their own okay. two feet. One kill already. And the low HP artist hasn't yet been spotted. And Tamazi's spidey senses are tingling. He has to give away his position. And artist was more than ready to find him as he emerges around the corner. Tom, I can't help but feel like this is around the KC setup very well, but the execution, it just wasn't there. Take flight. Yeah, again, I, I, I think that the fact that Shin is isolated so quickly, they're not quite ready for this, but yeah, they, they go very aggressively. I think it's just that reactive play, though. Like, you have that many players in position, yeah, you go, you go for it. okay, are they all going to run around that corner at once? Someone's probably got an elbow. Maybe we can catch them before they get into the site. This time, though, it doesn't work out for them, and... Facing off against Zipan, facing off against the full force of Na'Vi. It's not worked out. Shin is on a hero rifle, and he's just TP'd forward into mid. No chance of retrieval if he goes down, and he does immediately. They're going to fight for this space. Yeah, there's no way you just leave this rifle on the floor of the flash used, but here's Good a paranoia nade. shell. He's in a lot of danger with that nade. Almost goes down. Despite how close they've made some of these duels, just 4 HP. Xiao is clinging to life, but he'll continue to cling. Uh, Artis won't. <laughs> he falls straight off that ledge. Good shot by Tamazi. A lot more to do. Even at that range, the headshot would be enough to take down Zip and not so. Or right, even Angel as well. They were both tagged up, but they don't land. And now the way back through seems riddled with danger. Yeah, showstopper available, but again, you're no way. almost looking at a kill or two first. There needs to be something, and Sugetsu hits the timing. Nigh on perfect. 5-1 and one into the lead, this time a lot cleaner when it comes to their anti ecos But again, the thing is, I'm liking a lot of the ideas that KC are throwing out. Like, a lot of these aggressive setups, the utility is fantastic most of the time. Putting players into awkward positions, the fact is, though, they're just winning a lot of these fights. Putting them 5-1 up, ultimates galore for the side of KC. Every single ult available for this round. I'm expecting something maybe a little bit proactive because it does seem like with the pacing of Na'Vi's takes, if they don't have that info early, they're in trouble. 
They are slowing down the take this time. Looking across the map, more of a default again, but jump peeking mid, sending players out to see the push, ensuring there's no walk up on A, and then the knife goes down outside B main. There's no aggression. So they give him a couple seconds and then double check that KC aren't getting aggressive. Once that's not in play, I think Navi are going to realize they've got the, the say over how this round goes. That may just have, they may just have blinded the recon in time that the drone doesn't actually see those traps on the way through. But I, I don't know if they're going to, they are going to go for B. They're rotating that, back straight into the Cypher setup. Yeah, I, th I think the plan initially was to hope that this site tech went well and then from the shadows across the map into the backside, but they haven't been able to get the space that they wanted. Hunter's Fury maybe could be used to try and get in on this, but with the cam still up, checking into mid, they're just going to try and almost walk it through, and there is that Hunter's Fury. Hasn't connected on that first player. Hoping for a little bit more, but they haven't really got anything from it whatsoever. Tomasi, though, this time falls immediately in the trade. Whoa, it's a little bit labored. Magnum's still alive. Shin has now come onto the table as well. And now, well, with all the ults just still in play, still being used along the way. Harvey don't really stand a chance. No, well, the six seconds left on the clock certainly doesn't help out. Nor does the disadvantage in players that continues to stack up. Sagetsu now, question is, can he save this rifle through to the next? Can he make it costly is what he's thinking, going out to fight KC, but finding no one in a second round acquired in the bank for that defensive side. They need to keep... Yeah, look, it was actually the blind was was damn near perfect. Unfortunately, Tamazi did go down a little bit too early for those traps to do anything, but... That was an interesting facet, just seeing it go right past them, unaware. But the price was not paid in the end. Yeah, this time you see what happens when KC are there on time. Obviously, had the ultimates to help them out as well. Three utilized in that round. And again, just look at how pacey these takes are. Past all of the utility already. They know roughly where the setup has been already. And Angel now leading the way. They did the same again. Flashed off his drone. He's not going to find anything for it. And even though they got into the site, they've lost that first man. They found my wire. They have. They the Navi love to fight from behind. This is somewhere that they find value again and again. See if they can make it work this time as the plant still needs to go down. Martin falls and the aggression from Sagetsu shouldn't be expected. The flash is good. And Tamazi's follow up even better. Now the info as the hat comes off the head. Thrash finds its mark. And Angel, well, he's all alone up against the full might of KC minus Martin. And that's too much to deal with. A third round now for Carmine Corp. And the gap down to two. Yeah, I, I really like the way they're actually playing within this B site. Denying a lot of information of the, the pop flashes onto the drone, but you also just have their ability to retake together. Like, if they can keep that man advantage, they'll do their best to hold on to the backside, but ultimately they're very content to just fall back off and just play together in those post plant scenarios. They've almost disabled Na'Vi from having those aggressive positions that they want to have and fight them before they can get into the retake. Two rounds on the trot, still though. We are going to see them with a buy on the Na'Vi side. And ultimates couldn't be further away from the majority of the KC players. Martin, though, he's just gone straight down mid. He wants to fight them immediately. Yeah, I like the high flash that they're using to try and engage on that part of the map. But Na'Vi stepped back. They were cautious. And now the reward has been found. Quickly retaking the space, punishing Martin. And him down and out of the round early with Shin on 50 HP. This is a very good start. For Navi. The, the only problem is they're moving towards the A site where, like you say, Tom, the gambles come in. KC, three man stacked on this site by the time the push comes through. And they still have a drone to play with, but it might just be the silence. Oh, all, nice. Almost getting that kill through the box. It's some extra damage. The race still within the site, but for them to deny anything here, it has to be a fallback into the retake. So they had all of this initial control in play, but. Unfortunately, because of that lockdown, they're not going to be able to do anything to deny this plant. They 
No angels here now. That flash was thrown up and over. Paranoia oh. through. Good double. The star yeah, with him. Tamazi's not letting go. Left. They know where Angel Five is. They've known eight. the whole time. Now they can narrow it down to just the one player and no defuse necessary because they still haven't got the spike planted. Navi. Slow to the start as it's four to five. The gap down to one and KC looking a lot better. They've got the ball rolling three in a row now. Yeah, this is the thing. I was, I was thinking they're probably going to get the plant down. They'll probably get into a position where they go for the retake as a group, but they they get there before Navi can even react. You can see them just making their way around the elbow to get into a position to even put that spike down. What can I say? What can I say? He's right, man. This time he was just better. And he is up there, 10 and seven again. I, this guy just seems to thrive within this map. I, I, I Initially, when I saw him come into this roster, I was like, oh, Jewel is going on to a Sentinel. We've seen that one before, but looks very comfortable very quickly. And Fenavi not feeling the same at the moment. Three of those assists as well came off his ult. Uh, you know, I feel like so far, Tamazi, when it comes to his utility, hasn't found nearly the value that I've seen set up for a yeah. defined players about to run into his traps the team faces ahead of them he gets caught by the ult uh, same thing on b site where they go to push they don't see the traps they're on their way out tamazi swings and dies and you know to still have a good game when the the core of your agent is not really working out for you that utility's not hitting but his shots are and that's something else to talk about that kc have always got that in droves but so too did navi two teams we could see even if the game plan goes completely out the window. They can still win rounds and even games just off the individuals they've got on their roster. This time a real brawl on map number two. Navi were silenced early on on Bind, their map pick, but there's still some fight left in them here. The series could go to three. We need this attack side to show us a few more okay. and a few more rounds. And this is not a good start. Traded out early, Martin yeah. stays alive. It's one of those scenarios where I, I don't think Zipan is expecting four players to be peaking mid and are actually going to go pushing it. Realizing that the gun is there, Sugetsu though. Now they get the firefight and it's Sugetsu to clear them all up. Tomazi, he said he's just better. He's going to try and do exactly the same. A second one though. They're just facing up against this guy. Finally, they're going to go and get themselves a post plan. I've been waiting for it for a couple of rounds, but they didn't need to fight him. And now... One away from the neural theft, he gets a kill here. And he's already on a fast flank. Might not necessarily be expected. In fact, Xiao is just going to go walking in. Lucky for him that he survives, and Ardis is there as the backup plan. But oh, for a second, I thought the Portuguese youngster was going to prove himself again. God, they had a 1v5 last map. Could have been a 1v4 here. And you remember what happened to Navi after that. Morale went in the bin, as you'd expect, as it would and as it should. Great round by Sagetsu, though, to put Navi Foolish. back on the map. Back in the game, the lead extended back up to two, six guaranteed. So an even half is now the worst case scenario, but we know the side of Navi, they're good on attack. They can make this all the way up to eight if KC aren't careful. That's the thing as well. That was just a couple of hero rifles in play for Navi. That was a round that they never really should have won, but KC after taking that man advantage, wanted to fight again, Navi. They don't give us a second notice. They are going straight through. They've had a lot of success getting into the B site. But the retakes have been solid. Martin again, Tomasi from the back. Already giving them a double man advantage. A post spawn should be available for Na'Vi. But this is the thing. Look at what is left. Almost all of the utility and neural theft to find that extra information. Good luck, Na'Vi. It looks like that neural theft came in early. I don't know how he's predicting that with pinpoint accuracy, but Angel's got to be frustrated. Tapped down to 50 HP through the boxes. Last pack in the back, another one going through, and the push will come on the back of it. Not going to catch either player in the crossfire. Still good, but the defuse underway. Half already, and there's no chance to answer back. The 50 HP Angel was all that was left, and he deals the first blow to KC right at the end of the round. Six to five, and the defensive side looks to equalize things at the half. They've definitely got the money to do it. Over on Navi, I think they're going to be a little bit they're facing a little bit more of a struggle as they go to invest into this final round. This is the thing with this KC B-side defense is they're so quick to react to everything that Na'Vi is doing. It, it's pacey from Na'Vi, it's direct, but I, not once do I feel like KC have been truly caught off guard by the things they're doing, at least from the, the first few rounds. Once they saw how quick things were going to be, they've been so good at reclaiming Here. space. This round was in mid, just getting back in behind them, but also just playing off those advantages once they have them. 
And Mon Navi looking like a broken record. They're gonna try it again. This oh. B-side success has been minimal. And, you know, this time they'll get successes in. They'll get towards the site and even find a plant. What to do with it from there? Angel picks up another orb. So you've now got a Hunter's Fury online and the plant coming through. But the big deal is that showstopper. Martin picked up an orb earlier on and now has it online to work with. Magnum dropped right off rip. But now they'll look to entry back through and here it comes. The showstopper any moment now as the nade goes through to the right. Martin gets up nice and close. Blast packs in play. Does he find his mark on the way through? They've fallen back and he will find Xiao. But at what cost the trade out? It forces them into the angle. The Hunter's Fury firing off all the while and now they can spray up against that wall. Not finding a kill as they do, but the shots coming back confirmed. There's two. They know this round is already in the books for the side of Navi. And the round, not going to matter what happens afterwards. As the half comes to a close, it's seven to five. Good showing by the attack side here. Pistol, though, could narrow that gap massively. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm also interested how Na'Vi are going to make this work on the defense, because they've got a lot of information. That double initiator with the Sova and the KO. The, the thing that I'm questioning is the Neil, because you're going to have to have a lot of setup play. A lot of teams, when they've had these more uh, aggressive compositions, might throw something like a Breach in, so you hold can on, have on. those aggressive stuns, but a lot of that is just going to be Zipan on his own trying to push the map. And the thing is, when you have a Neon, most of the time, your opponents are going to be able to assume that you're going to be doing that. So I, I, I feel like KC are going to be able to sit pretty and almost be patient in a lot of the early rounds here to just try and deny whatever plan there is for Na'Vi. Well, that's what we saw Na'Vi doing quite a bit. I think after map one as well, where KC had a bit of flair to their defensive side, a few aggressive pushes that caught Na'Vi off guard. It makes sense that they'll come in with the same sort of approach. Now on that defense, looks like retake set up on B. Too suppressed. KC have a lot of players to deal with on the way through, but uh, that blind is perfect. No chance for Sagatsu to fight. Xiao, though, does some damage on the cross. Angel down as well, and KC yet to find a, an angle to fight from. Looks like just recovering that wingman and not going to main. Smoke online for Shin, but not used. They just want to fight this, and it's worked out to start. That was disgusting. Peeking ahead of the util. This time, though, the trade is in. Information should be grasped, but they don't actually spot the third player. That could put a little bit of doubt in the minds of this Na'Vi side. The spam not connecting anything, but now they need to get onto this. Sugetsu can only find one, but they are sticking it on that defuse. They've made it to half, but both players are within one shot. In fact, all it takes is one bullet from Magnum. They will get things within one round as KC are on six. And now the pendulum swinging a little bit more towards that KC side. Early injection of rounds with a pistol under their belt. And a scrappy fight. The fact that Narate sticks around on the side to That's look for gross. more. Swings into a stun <laughs> as well. Using their stun almost as a signal for himself. Letting him know, oh, we're going to push now. He knows there's a target there to be claimed. It's a narrow margin. But one... That ends up sitting towards KC. Now they look to equalize things, and you can see that Navi don't have a lot to work with. Even despite the, the weaknesses that are in play, they don't decide on, on the defense to group up, play the numbers, and try to win some brawly fights. Instead, spreading out, evidently feeling the potential of those lighter weapons early on spotting one on A. And the rotate on the back of it, Tom, as we can see, is very, very well gambled by Navi. Four players on B. The problem is there really isn't any real weaponry to play with. They're just going to have to be hopeful. Some mistakes are made. Some shots are whiffed. And while you can see, at least for now, that's not happening. Martin just farming up the frags. Looking to get ever closer to that showstopper, which will still be relatively far away. The player's low. There are still opportunities. Now, he's been given the pistol because they want him to actually hunt. If he goes down, it's not a problem. They'll still have themselves the weapon for the next round. And for Angel now, try and find someone on 14 HP. It isn't going to happen. Scoreline equalized as clean as can be, really, for KC with only a ghost dropped. And they'll now go for a similar buy into this one with Thrash just one away. One player was 9 HP, so you could have seen another weapon falling to the floor. I think it works out for Martin, though, hunting to try and get that extra it's orb, nice. be it by death or by kill. Or some way it was going to find its way into his back pocket. Now you've got Martin three away. 
Showstopper's not going to be online in this round. Well, you never know with Martin. <laughs> but it won't be used if it does. If he gets three kills, I don't want to see him popping it. For Narrate, one away. Very possible that we get a thrash. And in this round, especially when Navi put their credits on the line, any ultimate could be massive to bridge the gap between your two buys. KC side, see aggression on B. The reaction is to shift their way towards this A site. Paranoia used, and they'll quickly make their way in. Problem is, it's a very passive setup from Navi, yeah. so KC wastes a lot of time just throwing out this util, clearing every corner meticulously. Yeah, they've got some utility to come by extra time. I think that's the, the main goal. It's not worked out though. Sugetsu goes peeking. Zipan is caught trying to fight into mid. It's not going well for the side of Na'Vi until Shower. Lee's managed what? one, it's two. He's on the boost. That's such a common spot for Omen players. And oh, he's got away with murder. I guess again, tunnel vision by the flash that went through. They see a player on the side. That's where you're looking as you swing on in. Not expecting a sneaky little play from Shao. He escaped with 44 HP as well. Tamazi gets nothing in the way of information other than one player close, which is something they, they could have guessed. For Navi, sat down in position. Left. Knife gets nothing. So you start the rotation. Start to think about where these players on the attack could be taking the spike. That's why we see Angel on the other side of the map, but Artis has to stand strong, and it's only one kill found. The now spike. they move Rash ever closer. Done with you. Rash is used. Of course, they expect more players to be here, but it is wide open for the taking. The plan needs to be Ten safe, and it left. looks to be. Nothing to really push them out. Angel might have a shock dart ready, but planted. he's got his rifle in hand instead, looking for the fight. They're separated. Yeah, shock dart through standing. to force him into Shao's waiting arms. And it's only now right left. One of the strongest players we've seen in quite a while, but he's got to get on that spike. It's being defused as we speak, and he's forced into two different angles. No way to win that with Angel landing an eighth round for Navi. Yeah, that, that's an oversight. That, that's the difference in that round, I, I, at least I think. And unless they did smoke it and he was just spamming through, but no, it, it's the, the classic omen spot that you've got to check on your way in. And that was what recovered the round. A fantastic round it was from Xiao. Right up there on that scoreboard. I'm hot eight to seven. Lead taken by Na'Vi once again. Still, there's going to be plenty to purchase in with. Bear in mind again for KC, that was their bonus round, even if it had majority rifles. They're going to go into the default. Building up space early. Martin, in fact, well, Timmy the Tower is gone, but that's the showstopper more importantly as the orb is claimed. Okay, see a team that does well once they find those early leads, Tom, but I think this younger squad where they could be tested, especially against a squad like Na'Vi, the difference is, is the experience, is what they have to fall back on. And sure, Magnum's been on that stage a million times, but the rest of the squad, they're, they're that little bit more green. Certainly, I think Angel probably has more competitive years combined uh, than the entirety of KC combined under his belt. We get it. He's, he's old. You could leave him alone. He's elderly. <laughs> elderly is the word. <laughs> but that's why Navi can go 10-2 down, still win the map and win the series afterwards. Inside of KC, we've yet to see that sort of, well, from most teams, we've yet to see that sort of comeback, sort of resilience. TP used, cancelled, and now spotted two players towards the spawn. They know exactly where these defenders are. They might not know that there's four players on B, though. It's stacked up. Martin on his way through. Good rocket. It hasn't found the kill. In fact, these players still on Navi are dishing out damage. Three versus two, down to a two versus one. But Tamazi has to retrieve that spike, and, well, if he sprints through, he's going to pick spike. it up for free. He's in and he's out. Oh, an immediate shot, and the reveal available. Timing here is going to be absolutely everything, but Angel just slightly ahead of where he expected him to be. Way too close once again. We've seen so many rounds within this matchup come down to just a singular player. And while KC, with the space, with the showstopper, they, again, there were expectations that they could have taken that round home. But it's just these gamble plays, these risks taken, these fights won from the side of Na'Vi that keep them in the lead for now. Um, unfortunately for uh, Carmine Corp, nice. this is going to put them in an awkward position financially. The Sheriff's nice. in play, which, you know, they, they've been able to do quite a lot with very little yeah. with some of the gambles that they've had throughout. On their attack, though, that might be a little bit more difficult. Flash, Flash and smoke heard going down in mid as well for KC. 
I have what you can do about spike. that, but it will get the alarm bells ringing that that mid take is underway, that there could be players now pushed close, ready to fight. That market could be being contested, and, and we see a lot of the numbers for KC. In fact, all of them focus towards this part of the map. They're going to dump a fair bit of utility to retake this position, but now spotting a passive shout, start to realize what you're truly what? up against. And a spam from Artis gets a kill. Yeah, I mean, that is just unfortunate. Cleared one out. Angels reposition, but it's a little bit labored. And then looks like they're still tempted to fight this. Bear in mind, the weaponry is so far in Na'Vi's favor that they don't really have a need to take gambles here. It's worked out for Artis, though. Winning. Every single fight put in front of him. On for the ace, as Magnum is the only man remaining. May just try and get a plant in. Instead, though, he's, he's going to go pushing. Oh. He wants to give Ardis the fight, and Ardis will take it all day long. An ace to put their 10th round onto the board. His ult's online, no surprises <laughs> there. But that, of course, was a low buy round for the side of KC, so expectations. Not the highest. For sure, for sure, I'll give you that, but it, it got a little scary. I think Artis has done a remarkable job to pull this back. If he even grabs two, this round could have slipped out. <laughs> the and, Swedish nice. Yeah, nice. Synchronized as well. They've been practicing that one. Well, 10 to 7, three round lead for now. V map three will be sunset if we make it there, and it's becoming increasingly likely. Oh, what sunset? Split? <laughs> hey, we're gonna actually we're gonna play this one again. We're going again. <laughs> I, I've liked watching these guys play it so much. I want 40 rounds. We had that one before on bind. But as we look towards this A site, KC stacked up, ready to go. Rifles in hand, but the main thing I'm looking at is Narate. He's got his ultimate. It's not gonna be used Ooh. instead. It's just Martine going out. Their own recon drone. Well, from hero to zero. Artist already gone. Pop flash. Over the top, Angel and Xiao already again. It's these preemptive retakes, but grouping up as a unit. So Getsu has been able to find a gap. Martin low, but a high low setup makes this fight fairly awkward. Maybe not quite in line, though. That will leave it up to Magnum. Two kills already to his name. Two more needed to be found. And he's going to have to take a peek around. This does manage to kill onto Zugetsu. Just five HP remaining for him. And while Xiao, I think NC ends up wallbanging him in the end. Again, it comes down to one player. We, we've seen it so many times. And for KC, at least in this map, they've been on the wrong end of it. Yeah, the fight's on the way through. I think for KC, there's a moment where you start to see them put the pieces together. Seems like everything's lined up for them, but <laughs> that's 2v2. Back. <laughs> Open pick, there was no way. And yeah, I mean, the call was obviously made. They started to do the math, realize he's, uh, he's not sitting pretty on HP, so. Fire a few through. Echo locate the reload. The ultimates for Navi now towards the end of the game. 11 to 7, two rounds needed. And they've got three big ultis online. A lockdown just around the corner as well. The worst timing possible for KC to be facing off against such a stacked ult economy. They've only got thrashed themselves to try to find the value back. Again, selling some information into mid. They've done quite well to take this control in the majority of rounds, but obviously last time they got slaughtered by Ardis, although that was a weaker purchase. You can see the setup already being put into place, though, from Na'Vi. A paranoia set up against the wall if they are to try and face this A site. And Na'Vi desperately hunting for some sort of information, but it is very slow from KC, trying to give absolutely nothing away. It's difficult to do when you're playing up against the Sova KO combo, they normally find something. And while they've spotted one in the back of mid, Angel doesn't need to overface this now that they've got that man advantage. Cage trigger. That drone just spotted two, maybe even three players on mid. A bit of information to play with. Seconds left. Although the shock oh, yeah. might not find its mark. Oh, Navi just need to sit back as Thrash comes through. Clears out some space, but a glorified recon drone and the castle now by the ult in play. A good attempt by Magnum to find value, but spotted with perfect timing from Xiao. The defensive side stacks the advantages now. Five versus three oh, as Hunter's no. Fury is called in. And another nail in the Last coffin of this round. Done. It was almost Spike a guaranteed kill a. for the Hunter's Fury, but Artis went swinging ahead of it, leaving Tamazi on 5 HP, trapped in a corner. To even get out of here with the weapon, I would be surprised. Here they come. And okay, he finds the first. Oh, 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 three afterwards. Okay. K 
keep the but one place yeah, it. It's yours, it's yours. <laughs> well, I, I didn't mean to take it. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 22 and 15, and they're 12 7 down. That's not a bad scoreline for a Cypher, but it's a bad scoreline for KC. God, I love this, though. The combination of utility. You can see KC. I, I said they're playing up against a Neon Comp. You're expecting aggression. You're expecting all of this different sort of pushes and util and something to give it away. But Navi really didn't do a lot. They held everything until the last few seconds. And you can see KC just fumbled it at that stage. Running through against that Hunter's Fury. Orb claimed, but at a cost of HP. And considering this could be the last round of the map, look at the buy. A Bulldog, Guardian, Stinger. It, it's not pretty. Thank God Tamazi saved that weapon. Yeah. This could have been very awkward if he had went down. Against all odds, he managed to repel that final push. But now it's them that has to find success on the pushes again and again. Five rounds in a row for KC to get back into this one. And the blast pack hasn't worked out straight into the path of the bullets of Na'Vi. The wall up and Shin will try to cross. He'll get safely I into the corner. Exactly but Xiao is around here looking to drop them. Even as Artis is pushed back and he'll just about make it out. Yeah, they had to retreat. Neural theft gave them away. Drone will do the same on the other side. But Narei is going to deny them at least a little bit of extra space. Still the rotation coming through from Sugetsu. A single kill for him. We'll get his ult online. Spotting a player in the back corner, but again, this group up, this aggression coming out. It comes down to the 1v1, and Sugetsu is going to be there to close it. Locked down for a little bit of a celebration. But ultimately, once again, Na'Vi lose their own map. They go into their opponents, and guess what? The exact same scoreline the other way around. We almost should have seen this coming, Tom. You know, I, <laughs> I feel like we've we've let you down at home. It might even be 13-7 on split. To who? Who knows? After this display, Navi are certainly not down and out of the series yet, but there's one more map to decide the victor. Let's go to split after the break. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Thank you. 
We told you it was going to be a banger, and we were not lying to you. We are going to be going to a third and final deciding map in this matched up between, I was about to say, matched up slash showdown and try and like mash these two together. Uh, we're going to be obviously seeing what happens between Casey and Na'Vi in just a moment. But first of all, we've got to talk about what actually happened. Uh, Josh, it was a fair, close first half before uh, Na'Vi definitely uh, took uh, control of the situation. Um, what did you think of the performance? Well, I think Na'Vi had a really good start to the game. They had the first three rounds, they got pistol. Round two conversion was easy. Round three, they go into an ace bet on what would be their, their bonus round. And once you have all the control of A main and elbow and you're able to converge on the site, it's just so easy for you to, to just wipe out anybody in the site. And that's where KC was. They lose that round. Then they pick up the next round on an eco note, nonetheless, by having a really good, uh, you know, just timing flash from the get-go. Um, we had Narrate just flash push through a smoke on contact. But I, I think the name of the game there was Na'Vi just getting the first kills consistently. And it wasn't necessarily even on their, their executes. It was a lot of these dry fights. It felt like KC was bleeding out their entire defense half. Yeah, and uh, actually I was, t uh, you know, looking at how Zipan was going to perform now going on the, on the Neon and just playing something different with the, the support also working differently. And actually on the attack, he had the effect that I think was expected from him. And on the other side, we saw Artis coming alive, just, uh, you know, given the kind of rounds that we always love to see from him, given that ace, even on the on the Ecos, that is those kind of rounds that give you the, the confidence boost to if you're going to take this to a map three to even be a contender in it. Did you think that Na'Vi were, were relying on these individuals like Ardis too much, or was it more of a case of, right, they're feeling themselves right now, let's just let Ardis go? I, I, I honestly think that they understood how to play against KC, and as Josh is saying, like, like being able to turn this fight into your, your favor, it also brings us back to the point that we were making before the match even started. KC with prep really good they know how to do things but because of the sometimes inexperience of magnum which we cannot blame him for um the the mid round and actually the adapting on the fly to uh someone changing the composition and therefore their plan in the in the game comes as of a surprise i think navi having artists face checking casey <laughs> so frequently and it, it's when you look at the kills that he was getting especially in that highlight reel it's He's making quick work of them. It's not like these really extended, drawn-out fights. Within the first three or four bullets, he's got at least the first kill, and then it's easy to spiral from there. Well, this is the interesting thing. Casey, they like to prep, and they couldn't really prep for Na'Vi. We hadn't seen them play Sunset since kickoff, and they've changed the composition since then. 
Chamber out. They've got the Gecko in, but they do know what to expect as we head on to split, I imagine. Yeah. So in terms of this, I guess, what are the win conditions? What are the deciding factors do you think in this matchup? One, first of all, the preparation, as you're mentioning. Also, I think that Casey might have some, some edge here because they changed the composition uh, recently, right? They swapped the Astra out. Um, and I think that if they're finding a place where they're comfortable in split no matter what, maybe changing the composition back onto Navi so they have less preparation uh, on you can be an edge for them. What do you think, Josh? The thing is, I'm not even sure if Navi really changed their game plan based on who they're going against. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that their main thing is they play their style and they they have their individuals that have their individual styles within that in entire structure of Navi. And that's where we see individuals flourishing for example, artist there just taking every fight he can in the chaos of things. Do you think Na'Vi are changing things up as they go on the fly? Because when we're talking about attack rounds, for example, from Na'Vi, we're talking about this very slow style controlling the tempo. But actually, when they came back from being 10-1 down last week, actually, that's when they <laughs> did change the tempo. That's when they did get into people's faces. Yeah, definitely. And it wasn't split, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. so it's exactly. the kind of map where even if they feel the pressure is the kind of team that they, it doesn't matter what the scores, uh, the score says, uh, they will try and bring it to, to like their place. It's not like, even if the other team has got the momentum of getting a 10-1 half, uh, ended up in a 10-2, they have the resilience and obviously the experience to even take this further and also adapt on the fly because round by round, like bringing back a 10 to is not something that many teams can do. It's also a testament to kind of where Split was a few years ago to where Split is now, mm -hmm. where, you know, it, there's so much back and forth, like it's very defense-sided. Oh, now it's very attack-sided. And depending on who you're playing against, depending on what side you're starting and depending if there's like a breach in the comp, for example, mm -hmm. it, it feels like you can get such very different results and score lines within the match. So we might see them playing a really good defense one uh, one against one opponent and then a really strong attack against the other. And it's just, you never know what side you're going to get because part of it is their loose play style individually, individualistic play style as well. Do you like the breach on this map still? I like it, yeah. I, I think like, it, had its, it has its place. I I like it a lot when it's paired with uh, Killjoy. I, there's a lot of Cypher plays or picks on this map mm -hmm. by a lot of teams, yep. or you'll see just the double controller with no Sentinel. Mm -hmm. I think Killjoy makes the comp work really well, but we're seeing a lot of like double duelists with the with the right. breach. I think that it, that it also looks very good, but maybe it's becoming a little bit too predictable for Casey. In their match against Gentlemates, we also saw him uh, saw them using the the typical plays that Martin um, he, I'm not gonna, he used to do it in kickoff. Well, I think he he knows really well how to get the best out of the Euro, but the problem is that. We see them round. We see those rounds, and they happen time after time. You know, like from one match to another. If Navi wants to come prepare, and if Casey doesn't change anything, they will know what to expect and how to react to those things. Well, last time Navi uh, ran this comp, they didn't even play a sense now. There was no killjoy, but yeah. there was a breach. Yeah, w when you have that, it's when you go into defense, you have to make sure that. You can't set up the traps, so you ha either have to do a lot of these blind type of plays where you have to just make a decision to fight an area without information, or you have to save and hold your utility for the retake. And that works really well after the attackers use all of their things, like all of their abilities, and they have nothing left, and then the defenders come in fighting heavy. Yeah, and most of it, not having that Sentinel comes up with having the Viper, right? That kind of responsibility uh, relies onto, onto her on how she can defend the sites, how she she can retake the space and regain the control over zones as important as the mid. As we're saying, no changes in the compositions. This is exactly what they played last time that they played here in EMEA. Probably both teams not expecting to get this far uh, into the day. When I look at this comp and I, I remember how much of an X factor. Which one of them? Uh, sorry, you're right, Carmine Core. <laughs> where narrates, usually he's he's a flex player, but when Martin's on Yoru, narrate gets to play Rays and they do this double duelist comp. And narrate. It goes boom. Pardon me? It goes boom. <laughs> it's... The Rays goes boom on whatever sure. agent he plays. I know I'm missing the Rays joke there, but he just does. Have, have you been broken? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We've literally been sorry. waiting all day for you to break. Okay. <laughs> Narrate, when he gets to play not initiator, and he he's, is such an X-Factor for this team, so when he gets to be really loose with Raze, really cool things happen. 
he goes boom. I can't wait for things to get loose and wild as we head to this deciding game of split. It is, of course, Casey versus Navi. Who is going to take it? Well, that's a tough question to answer. So tough. We've spent the last two hours battling mm. it out, trading map picks, and moving down to the final map split. Tom, coming into this, where's the momentum sitting? I mean, they've traded round for round, 13-7 for 13-7. Any advantages you see coming into split? Uh, probably the attack side, at least for Na'Vi. Uh, you reckon? There's, there's, some, there's some history there the last couple of times they played it. 11 1 attack and an yeah. 8 0 attack the two times they played it. Both versus Liquid, though, so hopefully oh, right. KC are going to be able to hold on a little bit better. For now, though, they start on that defensive side, and I'm sure the Navi work when it comes to this map. A map that they probably knew was coming because KC had been very good at this map. And with an explosive composition, they're going to start things out on that attack side exactly where you'd want to be. For now though, it's patient, tempered, expecting maybe some sort of aggressive push. As I said, they don't have a Sentinel. They don't have a whole lot of information over on that Na'Vi side. So there has to be the push and pull of the map. They have to go looking, at least for now. They're not doing that. They are sitting back, they're waiting. They're biding their time. A patient face being shown. KC looked to quicken their pace on the attack through mid, but it's all a ruse. The whole intention here just to draw these players in and we'll rotate. And for a second, it looked like it might have worked. Sagetsu started to move towards the spawn. The early rotate, though, cancelled. Still with lots of utility on that B site, but it will be A that's tested instead. Artis, yeah. full belt of util that he's working with. No shields. The impact will be felt as already slowing down the heaven drop. Fragmenting the push to site. They'll try to scrap with left. the players on ramp already dropping Magnum and now Sagetsu's on the right clicks. He's found himself a double and they haven't seen Artis either. Oh, it's looking beautiful. It's looking clean. And it finds one round on the board for Navi in the end. I don't mind the idea from KC. The group up, the split push, but Artis, he made them pump the brakes. Yeah, he, he just denied them that explosive pace that they wanted. That, that is the thing, when you're running a composition that revolves around a, a Yoru and a Raze, you're going to be looking to pressure with these sort of explosive moments, because you don't really want to be in these sort of slower rounds, because it doesn't really fit with the composition that they're running. So the fact that he was able to delay them, pull the rotations from the other side of the map, and Na'Vi are going to have themselves the pistol. And because of that, there's really nothing invested for the side of KC. Normally you might see a, a Sheriff, a Ghost, something at least to try and put onto the board. Bring them down. But they have gone flat out classics. Well, selling a bit of a ruse, even with the, the paranoia, the space being taken by Martin. Now the rest of the players are going to go pushing. You even see that Xiao, though, is still there. Cover going back. Yeah, again, that, that piece of utility being used, the paranoia, it, it will often grab the rotations. It'll draw the eye, but not this time. Push out, not even gonna, going to allow spike that spike down, to be planted, B. with Zipman picking up every which kill. Four away from the showstopper in round number two. And still a few kills to be picked up. They know Martin was on the ramp earlier on, and he is slowly making his way towards this site. Angel about to spot him, and there's the information sealed away. And Angel will be hunting him down. So, what can they possibly do from this position? 40 seconds, a ton of utility, spike down on B-site, and Martin's being caught in the open. Doesn't look like we're going to see anything, but damage? Well, he'd need three kills before Navi felt the sting of it. seconds left. I think just having a little run around, trying to find something. Shin will at least kill off one. They even saved the pistol. Something going to be hit the ground, but that's it. And for the side of Na'Vi now, this is where, again, you're going to see those investments. Angel able to purchase back up with a rifle, if he so desires. Going to be able to close the gap a little bit going into this next round. Of course, though, this is where the rifles will be on the ball for every single member of KC. And that's it. A lot of what their comp revolves around is going to be those explosive hits. That's why you sort of saw the rotation slightly pulled off that paranoia. There's not a whole lot for them to play off of other than that to take them space. I think Martin's flashes are going to play a pretty big role in clearing a lot of these corners. 
see this Yoru play with his team a bit more supportive than, than we'll sometimes see. But even in that second round, the ideas from KC were clear. They had the TP up on the Paranoia. Martin doesn't need it this time, though. Taking the clean fight on to Xiao and trading out the advantage now for a little bit of HP lost. KC sit with a ton of map control as well. And the pressure being applied to Angel with, with players still in mid, I thought was going to drag the rotate. But again, Tom, they, they start to move away from this A site, but decide to play the numbers on site itself instead. It, it could pay off, but Casey haven't decided where they're going. I feel like this might just be a gamble based on past Thank matches. You. Like a lot of the time, we have seen Casey lean towards the A side of the map. I think again, just having more opportunities for where you can TP on the Yoru. And it's a lot easier to sort of create dysfunction. Instead, though, Narate, it's, it's just an attempt to try and sell a ruse. Left. And in fact, it seems like it may have even worked. Angel started the rotation back, but now they go pushing as well. Nothing really being seen. The fake out is going to give away that the play is coming in on A, where all of the Na'Vi members are waiting. They're so ready for this fight. Sagetsu's good for the first, but Magnum's done a world of good for this attacking side with 10 seconds left. They set foot on the site, and the spike will see the floor in the last couple of the round. KC, three versus one, and it's the leader of Navi leading by example this time if they're to have any chance. And, well, that paranoia has sealed his fate. One round on the board for KC. Yeah, and then the fact is the gamble from Navi definitely was the, the right call. They had Angel on the other side being able to hunt for information. But a lot of it just came down to the battles. Uh, Sugetsu not really able to land the shots that we've come to see nice. from him. And good job, guys. You were full line. That's why she'd be. Good job, they did guys. manage to clear things out. Two to one, though. And as I said, an immediate response in terms of the purchase. Navi comfortable with the rebuy. Now, from the shadows is available. This is one of the maps where. I think you've already seen the defenders actually mark. And there's going to be an expectation that either you can see from the shadows or just the straight TP and pressure immediately in onto Na'Vi. There will be a moment to breathe as the A site is realized as the true target. Sagatsu picks off the player on B, but now they see it's wide open. Sprays through the smoke. A little bit of damage done, but KC took away. Three players on site, and Martin's not got the best of positions. It, it is a good spot, but as we can see on the map for this retake, it doesn't look like it will find any fruit. Said he has to be swinging as they make their way out onto the site, and it's a very narrow gap and margin for him to take, but he'll find one off the reveal. Oh, the wow. snake bite is perfect, and Tamazi even swings in for a headshot on Xiao. That one was a little quicker than I thought. Once the first bullet was fired, it was only a second until the round was decided. Yeah, the utility combos there were perfect. Uh, Magnum having his seize for the late round stopped the first players coming through. Then they had a snake bite that went a lot deeper to hold them in place, even getting a kill itself. And then you had that contact play from Martin to swing off it as well with the flashes. That was perfect in the post plant from KC. And, and you can see the reason they're willing to sort of sacrifice Narei in is, is because they have so much in terms of that extra utility just to create a horrific re-entry from the side of Na'Vi. An immediate equalization. As said, expectations definitely lean for both sides to have a prominent attack, but Na'Vi Shaking in this up. round, well, I don't know if they're going to have much to resist KC taking the lead. Be some lucky plays to start. Stone the blast pack through and a judge up close. That's one way to handle it. And you know what? They make this much noise. I like it because once they slow it down, this is where KC start to ask questions. You've seen the nade, you've seen the stun, you've seen even a reveal go up and over in the haunts, but nothing else afterwards. Uh, they maybe are giving it up. They're rotating, but no, there's a judge close. Down, and now they start to realize what was going on. Why, why everything got so quiet so quickly. The advantage sits to Navi and in a round like this, Oh, it's so valuable to be able to group up and... Sure, the trades aren't likely, but if you find them, the round can be yours. The lead can stay to Navi. Oh, the, the thing is, though, Angel, he's actually going to go pushing! He manages to get two of that! I, I feel like he should have been dead almost immediately! I'm just catching them a second time! I, you've got to feel foolish for KC at this point. Two aggressive pushes, two with massive success, and even the Stinger! It's going to be there to close out Martin. The 30 HP Stinger. 
Yeah, he couldn't even take a bullet there. Oh man, that's a huge blip. Like the, the, the judge, I, I feel like you can be forgiven. Maybe needed a bit of utility, but that's just absurd. The fact that Angel's able to get away with two kills off the back of the sheriff. Yes. This is the thing with this Navi <laughs> roster that's always so difficult to deal with. Is even when they have an advantage in a low buy, they're still looking to push you. They're still looking to kick you while you're down. Cutting through. This is it, Tom. We said that it, it was hard to really see anything for this squad. I like that. A little bit of ground taken on the gate crash. One player spotted up top, one player down below. Nightfall used. This is for Navi now, confirming that there's no one outside A. They've sent the rotation of Zipan already. He wants to make it to Heaven, but Heaven's being lost. It's being given up. Showstopper makes its way down below. Hasn't been activated just yet, but as the ults come in and the players cascade onto the site, here comes the rocket. A big opportunity, oh! and it's found two. Zipan on point with his third shot, swinging in for more, and he'll eventually be shut down. But he's done his job, and he's done enough. 3v1. And Magnum has to dig deep to have any chance at taking this across the line. They know where he is. The seize is perfect, but he was already low. It does little to change the outcome, which is another win for Navi. Yeah, they've been again. <laughs> Even Little Bro's on their side. A little bit of a traitor, it feels, but th this is the thing. I know, like, you look at these set executes from KC, and that's what we sort of marveled about with their attack Guys, I'm, I'm is they'll just <laughs> very quickly build into rounds and then just explode into the site where well, you've had disruptive stuns coming through from artists to slow them on the push and then just these players just sprinting through smoke taking aggressive plays to try and catch them as they run into the site obviously already knowing they were there because of artists life being sacrificed already caught with the seas of the ring just about gonna scrape through that one again Early util just causing awkward fights, awkward situations for Carmine Court. And well, they don't have that much to play with in this round. In fact, it's diminishing as seconds go by. Well, you heard Angel at the end of the last round of the replay. He was saying, I'm, I'm a genius. And it was the ult on A that gave them all the information. He called for the early rotate. It was well managed. But now that they're up against the lighter buy, they've picked off Tamazi easy. The numbers locked in in their favor. Four versus two. Spike was dropped earlier. Could now have been retrieved. Down. Look at the reposition by Sagetsu as well. Up close, Narrate doesn't have anything to clear this corner. Bar made, of course, it would be blind. It's more the boom bot not being there. He can't get the information. The swing is good. I like One the idea by KC. Up. They're giving themselves a chance. That chance quickly okay. fades away We've in the face of Zipan. Five rounds now for the side of Navi. The defense building them up. And we don't expect them to slow down too much moving into their attack. We need to see KC get on the board soon. Yeah, I wonder when the... The pause button is slammed because these last few rounds, it does seem like Navi are almost reading from the strat book. They've managed to get information early in the majority of rounds. As said, like a lot of that, when you're running, only one initiated that actually gets you information can be quite difficult. But even if it's an ult that doesn't find any tags, it's enough to pull those rotations. Aggressive start to this one for Xiao. He's definitely gone down once or twice, but after the spot is in, Viper's Pit will deny this space, or at least you think it will. They're setting up a Prowler. They're going to send the fake out in. They know Showstopper he is. are going to be used, and Saigetsu goes down to it. That's so smart. Yeah, the, the decoy was sent through. As soon as it's broken, they can put him in a box. They know exactly where he's playing, and, and the worst case, he can't oh. get away. Nice shot by Zip. Paranoia as well was so well timed. The nade too. Not only are you blind, but you have to move as well. It's so much harder to keep your crosshair pinned on those ropes and fire at the right time. When you can't see a thing, and you got to move. Quick trade as well. Navi. I would say keep the advantage. This defense spread thinner, but it's where KC are going. It's the steps towards B main that's been taken. Navi have already stepped in, taking this angle. Although Xiao is spotted, it's Shadow the second player. You might not expect Angel to be here. In fact, you may almost try to pressure after you've taken the side in towards this angle, and that's when they strike. Only one for now. And they know Xiao left. is here. He's the player that was accounted for in this play. So they're gone looking. They're gone hunting. 
And yet to find him, did he slip back to main? The question now running through their mind. There's the answer, but it comes at a heavy cost. Again, down to the 1v1 with Navi still having rolling thunder. 15 seconds left, and here it comes. You're going to be pushed off the site, back into a safe position, at least for Shin. But here comes the stun. And after that, the aftershock. Oh, it's going to get a little dangerous. No, the utility's not put down. Instead, Artis swings his way around the smoke up close and catches the back of Shin. Six rounds now for Navi. They don't show any signs of stopping soon. I, I, I feel like Artis looks so comfortable when it comes to the way he plays around his utility. Like, it, it, a lot of people, especially when you hit that plant up there, as you said, you put an aftershock, maybe you run in and try and spray down the guy. He knows that in that moment, if he makes no sound, no spray, no nothing, Shin is going to assume he's wrapping. Because why yeah, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you put utility through there to try and deny him? Or why wouldn't you run in with the last few seconds? But Artis is so calm in that moment that Shin has to take a gamble. And I, Fair. <laughs> He's got to look one way, mm -hmm. tries to put a smoke the Stay other. Focused. But that couldn't have gone better. Another 1v1 scenario that heads in the favor of Na'Vi. Pace might be the aim of the game here. Majority of players all built in towards this B-site. Angel, well, that's definitely going to latch onto someone. He definitely doesn't know how many. It's not like they have a stack just yet. It will still be a tough hold on the site. Prowler goes past the decoy, catches a player in main, slows them down yet again. Snake bite on floor, but there's a gap, and they're on their way. Reveal up and over. Catch a few. In fact, it catches most of them. Good info to play off of, and great execution. Angel's got himself a triple, and he's not even gone down. Artis comes in to save the day, cleanly closing it out. Seven to two, and there was barely a sweat to be broken by the defensive side, easily repelling that push. Yeah, I, again, I, I feel like I've highlighted him almost every single round, but I, I feel like Artis should have about 16 assists at this point. Only says three on the board, but the stun again just comes in as they look to sprint onto the site. They're, as they finally get over that, he puts an aftershock through the wall, and then there's also the reveal coming in. Like, there's just too much utility for Casey to deal with. And, and then they just look flustered. Like, there's just too much for them to try and run through. And every single time while that is happening, someone over on the Navi side, be it Angel, be it Zipan, be it Artis himself, is swinging off of that utility. And they're just unable to cope with how disruptive this defensive side comp is right now from the side of Navi. Now, the sort of silver lining for them, ults are there. Viper's sure. Pierce available. That was probably the plan in this round. They had a load of stingers. Okay, we rush into the site. Navi probably, okay, maybe we trade. We trade a couple of kills. We use the Viper's Pierce. We play the post plan when everybody's low on HP. That works out for us. They didn't even get close. Like they were close physically on the site, but in terms of the actual round, not even remotely. Nightfall in combination though, that should give them all the information they need and hopefully for their sake, get them into an after plan. Because right now, well, Navi are running away with this. Well, it's crushing because that round five, you know, it looked like somewhere that KC, they were equalized two to two. It felt like they could push that lead into their favor and start to extend it somewhat. Face off against one by round in round six and go from there. But it was stolen out of their hands. What should have been their lead. And they haven't come close to it ever since. A streak of rounds, five in a row for Navi. And a pause here to hopefully put a remedy to that, put a stop to the building rounds on that defensive side and put them at a deficit. Here. It won't happen in this half. We can still see five yeah. rounds for KC if it's nothing but flawless play from this point forward. You mentioned they leaned a lot towards the A site. We haven't seen them there for a while, but certainly a successful opening as they've already dropped Artis. Yeah, that, that has been one of the players they've really been struggling with in terms Welcome of just utility usage. World. That Viper's Pit is used, but They've still got their own Nightfall. They could just counter whatever Na'Vi opt to throw in. Paranoia is still available as well for Xiao. Straight away, Angel's going to try and clear some of these close corners. They've got so many players to try and get rid of, but a bit of an unorthodox spot from the Ray is not going to be checked. He doesn't win the battle, though. Shin, however, is very quick to trade things out, but Na'Vi have turned this back into a winnable scenario. Zipan with the showstopper, but so low, it might not be the time to use it. He almost does it anyway. And if it's placed in the right spot in the corner, he's going to take it home. It seems like Na'Vi at this stage just can't lose themselves around and while the defuse it's not even going to be that close. Yeah, plenty of time left on the clock for Navi. A margin of 11 HP, but it puts them in a victorious spot. Zipan 
takes the cake in that round for a number of reasons, not just the final play, but even look towards the site. My guy blast packs out on site when you already had a haunt on the right. It only position it didn't yeah. clear was right there. Oh, and he hey, turns around on a dime to take that kill, destroys Shin after a trade, and sets it up like this for the third and fourth kill in the round. Winning it single-handedly, and oh, I didn't even notice no. that by the narrowest of margins, and that did cost counts, Martin yeah, his ult. It counts. Well, he, he got one orb back. Great. For the death. That's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> That's brutal. That's about as brutal as it gets. Because there's a counter, split second later, and he, he's won, he's probably won the round. Probably, probably. Oh, the good hey, counter, though, to there. Angel's aggression is to shoot him. Shin has taken him out immediately. An upgrade on the gun and off a shout. It's not really much you can do. Hit by the Nightfall, not going to be worth the risk here. Grenade. Okay, we got a nade through, but they expected it. No Angel, so no Cs. And even then, they'd stepped off site, like you say, Tom. They expected it. Narrate had a nasty spot last round that got punished hard for it. Despite what looked like an advantageous position. Now, Nate up top, he'll be falling back. That's, uh, you know, it is a Nate. It's a Nate that we have seen, and that's all I'll say about it. For Narrate, they might not expect him to. They expect him to still be around here, and Navi takes what? every kill. I mean, we can't even, can't even see one because they all come in at the same damn time. Ardis for his triple. And nine rounds for Navi in what seems to be a, an unstoppable resurgence from this squad. It, the last map was close. The first wasn't for them. So they felt much more dominant. But here, uh, it's incomprehensible. So the last couple of times they played this map, yeah, obviously on. everyone remembers the last one. Yeah, they got yeah. two defensive side rounds. And the time before that, they got five. Well, again, for those that don't remember, the time, the last time, they got two defensive rounds. And won. And won the map. Yes. Which they is had insane. an 11-1 attack. So, now, if, if, it is, wasn't, yeah. if it wasn't bleak before, it, it, it definitely is very bleak, because they're doing it on the defensive side, the side where they have looked rough. But they are also just winning absurd retakes. Like, that's another one. This time, Zipan actually goes down. It's not him to do most of the work. It, it's, it's Ardis with the heavy lifting. You also lost your initiator immediately. One of the things in the first map I gave credit to KC was they work well when they have the advantage, but they don't anymore. They, yeah. They're losing a lot of advantageous positions, even with ults put in. We saw some utility expended by Navi just to clear out that these players weren't in main. Shin has now taken that space, and it looks like that's a big part of the plan for KC. One player in main to catch that extra angle, but most of this attacking squad will be making their way through middle. And they've managed to at least gain quite a bit of ground from what we can see. Expecting Martin's flash to come through, but no, it's the Prowler to lead the way, showing players to be slightly further back. Decoy to clear it, and they now know, okay, one's further back up top, one definitely on the site. There. And once the decision looks like they're gonna commit to it, that gate crash will be spotted and there. followed. They're waiting for the TP. All right, it's gonna be this push. Multiple players here. Martin is already dead. It will be a trade out though. Saigetsu is still somehow surviving at least a second longer than he should have done. Stun. No one can really play off it, but there is still the Rolling Thunder available for artists. Look how far away Zipan is though. I think they were still expecting this to be a rotation back to the other side of the map. So he is a country mile away from here. This fight could be everything, and Tamazi wins it with relative ease. Oh, is going to throw his ult in. Might as well, but he has to clear the close angle. Does do it, but Tamazi is there. 9-3, the best defensive showing we've seen from Na'Vi on this map so far this year. Well, Tom, I've made the mistake before. I won't make the mistake this time. I'm not going to count Na'Vi out on the attack. I would have said that even if they had one round coming into this. Now, I'm almost feeling like I see the conclusion written in front of me. KC have been good, but Navi, despite some struggles, despite some shaky starts to some of their games, they're one of two teams that's yet to lose in this stage. Foot being the other one, both of those teams in the same group as well, which plays a pretty big role moving into playoffs and, and well, sucks for everyone else in their group because they've got a lot to catch back right up there. on. This was looking like it could have been a two to zero for KC. A couple rounds into sunset, you'd be forgiven for thinking that was going to occur. But right here, the two to two, the equalization of KC, and they end up with three at the half. Oh, the okay. push is good. Martin's in. 
But he's not out. <gasps> not using the gate crash yet, and uh, could have been a costly mistake. I didn't expect Sugetsu to be there on a, another Ooh. late look. The right Tink has just been connected onto to Mazzy, and Sugetsu, his only plan here is to be Toxin annoying, to waste time, to be in their back. This guy is already. They're going to try and get back in. Angels found another. It's awkward, but Shin wins the fight still. That man is lurking in the back lines. Look how low they are. They might all go down, but instead, it's a quick trade. Xiao now stuck, surrounded, has to try and isolate one, and that's exactly what he'll do. But the snake bites might have just done the job. He is sat there in the back. A second one will be going. And oh, Shin, he's got it. the time is ticking away. I don't even know if there's anything he can do at this stage. Just looks to try and get the final kill. They didn't clear this man out, and he will close out the round for Na'Vi. Again, they fight from a deficit, and again, they extend their lead. And a lot of that even comes down to the damage done by those players holding onto yeah. the site, just chipping away, allowing those snake bites to be deadly in the late round. And a double snake bite set up post plant. Yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty to come up against that oh, in the pistol round. But Angel could have killed all of them there. He they were all with like 20 HP. It really could have been a, a quick Whoa. end to that pistol. But Sugetsu, the post plant rat, has won them that one. Oh, KC trying to bring about Stinger meta. Investing into all of it. Now, bear in mind, Angel going up. has not bought even a ghost. Maybe expecting a bit of a risky play out from their opponents. They've gone for mostly rifles in this one. Similarly to what they normally do, but... Where are you? Definitely interesting to see a bit more purchased up for them this time. You can see the caution on the side of Navi. I like Angel just taking a classic in this round as well. The economic buff. As he drops over his teammates, gives them an opportunity to really take those fights. And if you're KC, it's, it's probably not what you want to be coming up against. Those rifles Toxins stacked up, up on shields. And well, jump peeking into three of them. That's going to make it even worse. Look, Tomasi actually doesn't take that much damage, all things considered. He's still able to fight in the late round, but most importantly, they've denied that rotation for a second or two longer and what? even set up a nice little <laughs> angle that Tomasi somehow wins off of. Uh, Zipan's face said it all. He was surprised as anyone. Two players looking to try and reclaim that ground. It's going well for KC, but there's always a response. Xiao is on just one HP. Last lease of life and already trapped, but I don't know if anybody's actually going to be able to push Ardis off of the angle. The seize was good, but they didn't get the kill, and well, you don't kill this man off, he punishes you. Back to fighting for him. Ooh, nice kills, though. It's only to get to, and he can't even run the clock down. He has to win the fights, and he won't. KC come in with stingers, and I was ready to count them out, Tom. I wasn't seeing it. They've made it work for a fourth round and a lifeline to keep the dream alive. It definitely seems like these guys practice with the Stinger more often than you might think. Worthless. Again, just finding the kills, dueling up, and they've given themselves that lifeline. For the side of Na'Vi, it's interesting. A returning of the favor to Angel. <laughs> He is, he's going to be on the hero rifle. A couple of other players are going to buy shields. It's almost like they don't expect him to live. <laughs> Angel, I don't know what you could be talking about. I can imagine him being there and comes like, hey, what? Why you, why you buy? <laughs> why you buy shields? That's why. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, would, that would be why right there. Well, the rifle's been picked back up at least. <laughs> so Getsu's like, yeah, yeah, got my shields. Don't worry, got my gun. <laughs> and now the real game begins. Yeah, Casey as well. Martin's got his ult in his back pocket, ready to roll with if they do see any signs of danger. But this kind of round, it doesn't pose a lot of threat. A little bit of damage done. Players cross, Nade going through. But Tamazi, does he go up the rope to take the fight? Off the back of the utility, you would think so. And it's a good seize. Decaying him somewhat, making the follow through so much easier. Snake bite up and in. Is it landed in the roof? Where did that go? Gone to Kingdom Come. Oh, this hero rifle still yet to have the impact they'd hoped for. Casey definitely showing respect 
to the side of Na'Vi, using their utility to try and make these battles left. favorable, something that Na'Vi at the moment don't have as a luxury. And for KC, the one sort of shining light in this matchup is they have been prominent, at least in their recent match versus Gentlemates, on this defensive side. They pulled out a 9-3 half of their own. Xiao, well, shouldn't be anything for him here. And unless Sugetsu is about to pop every head that comes through heaven, I can't see a way that they're able to take this one over the line. Left in Tour 1 versus 5, but they are going to group up and make sure he gets absolutely nothing. Still a mountain to climb for KC, but a clean round like that won't go amiss. You can see him trying to, Sugetsu trying to channel his inner narrate in the end there, but yeah. uh, no chance. A they bit. all came from the same direction. Exactly. No hope. <laughs> they learned their lesson from watching Navi in that, in that first map of Bind. Another round for KC, this time flawless and a big money builder for this squad. It'll give them a safety net to fall back on and old start to come online too. Over on the other side though, they didn't have a lot invested. This wasn't a round they expected to do a ton of damage in. Just the one rifle that fell very quickly. Here's their opportunity. Rifles come in, utilities there, shields on most. The only downside is the even distribution of kills and deaths leaves now in the start of this half. Leaves Navi in a position where they don't I really have any ulties to come online again. soon. Yeah, it's a gift and a curse. It's one of the things where you wouldn't mind having them for this round, but it might also be building up at the same time to blitz through a round. Yeah. I want to see what Martin's going to be able to do with the Dimension Drifter. Potential for getting that info to seize. Oh! Definitely a little bit awkward. Three players currently stacked up here. Zipan. Oh, I'm sure he was hoping that would go a little bit further. They really want to try and fight this. And well, eventually he'll go down, but the trade is immediate. An angel like shooting fish in a barrel takes Narate's head clean off. That fight, I don't think I've ever seen a team fight that aggressively in towards the vents. And well, KC have paid the price. I, I mean, Tom, we, we have seen those rounds, but typically when there's big weaknesses there. You know, you're going to use the blast pack and flying up the rope to, to try to take advantage of the chaos and pull the round in into your favor. Here with rifles, it's, it's a crazy risk to take. It doesn't work out. The side of Navi have a huge advantage to work off of. No need for any risks. They will group up together, play this one as a team. Even putting the Nightfall into play, it will not catch anyone. This was looking more towards main. Magnum's closer now than he was expected to be, but that's stunned from Artis. His utility has been on point. This is a player that in the early days of Valorant was known for being on a team full of no-brainers, just aimers. G2 back in the day, it was painful to watch them play because they didn't give a damn about defaults, sets, strats, executes. No, they, they executed you. He's come in here on a breach and his support of utility looked unbelievable. Yeah. Makes you wonder, what, what if they did that back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, was, it definitely used to be a, a few run it downs. And well, I, think I still think Na'Vi do that sometimes, but. Oh, they do. He definitely has been sublime with the utility that's been put into play. Frustration for the side of KC, especially as the success just wasn't there with those aggressive plays. <laughs> We're 1v1, one one. we're just being 1v1. One one. Just peaking 1v1. One one. Well, there'll be a lot to discuss coming out of that pause. And Tom, you know, the, the team that KC lost to was Foot. The team currently topping Omega Group, tied up with Navi. It's, it's only two rounds that separate them in the standings. It does still put Foot slightly above. And now they're looking at the only other team without a loss. Sitting opposite them on the stage and not looking to put a loss on the board here today. Navi and Foot used to always push to those international events. I think they've got a bone to pick with KC after after Madrid. Well, that is the thing. I, I feel like there's not often time where we sit there and go, okay, Navi have been given the data to know what they need to fix and they've been given time to fix it. And I, I think we're witnessing a lot of that right now. They were only one match away from actually making it to Madrid in the first place. But at the same time, they've been practicing, they've been at boot camp, they've been working to improve. And I think those improvements are definitely seen. Still, I think they need to work on the maps they choose. <laughs> That's it. That seems to be one of the bigger problems for them at the moment. But nonetheless, Split is a map that you might just want to avoid them on. For now, at least, it's still a buy, still an ult available. Still opportunities for Casey to try and drag this one back, but they need to do it here and now. 
Well, KC would be the second team in their group to hit two losses, joining Team Liquid. Wouldn't be a pretty way to start this. It's a stacked enough group and some easy games ahead for other teams, and it could cause problems for them. It's hard to imagine a world where they don't make playoffs, but that top spot will be looking to sit with Fnatic then. And a return to form for, for the old days of EMEA. Two rounds. All the Navi need to lock in that 3-0. Take back that top spot from foot. Up. That's what Casey likes to do. Push this one together, although deciding which direction to head in. The site's going to be taken by Zipan. Not much they can do. Stop that great haunt, though. That's going to be a freebie. And that space that was garnered has quickly been lost with his life. Count utility put in, though. Plant not going to be denied, but yeah. dimensional drift is going to be thrown in just to get all of the information Casey could ever need. Got two players. Well, one of them's already dead. There's the third spotted and all accounted for. Good paranoia. Fantastic paranoia. It didn't catch out, but the bullets of Tomasi certainly did. And Artis is now, after retreating and being spotted, falling back, left with no choice. He wasn't go didn't have to go down. Could have ran for the hills to try to save. That was the only choice he really had. The round was going to KC either way. Yeah, no, that, that was just wonderful. I, I think, again, just showing how that Yoro ultimate can be put into play in such an effective way. Like, just using it to get every single piece of information, and then they play utility off of that. So it's, okay, we're going to throw through a paranoia straight in towards where my teammate just was. We know where he is, and then that's going to help us clean on the way back in. Wow. Very well played from KC. A solid retake. And again, that's what we've already sort of credited this team for. Their retakes, their synergy has been sublime. I think that's why in the last round you saw that frustration from Eng because that's not what this team is. Well, already, if this was the first half, Tom, I would be sitting with KC pretty convincingly. They've managed to have a fantastic start. Managing to push Navi back in round number two, building up rounds on this defense. That's all you can ask for, especially against Navi. We're damn good on the attack, but it's so late on in the game. Five round gap still, two for Navi to take it across the line. They start this one with a disadvantage. We saw Zip and Blast pack in, get blasted out of the round, but still some more players to fall back on. Three rifles left in place. So Getsu two away from a pit. If they can make their way to a site, things could swing back in their favor. Man, as we've said, they've been so good at fighting back from a deficit. To get to a little bit ahead of the smoke, but I think he realizes after being spotted that there will be a response. You can see the TP also being thrown across the map. Expectation may be there at the moment from KC that this could be a hit towards the B site. Three players still in position. Shin, however, does have his paranoia. He'd be able to throw, slow them down if he needs to. 30 seconds left. For now, at least, it seems like, again, they're happy to play that post. Even the attempted spams through. Pit's gonna fall in a moment as the rotates begin. Or have indeed begun. The heaven fight is everything. Tight position for Shao, some damage done. He's got some support down below in the vents. They just need to distract long enough for Sagetsu to strike, and that he will. A quick double and a clean bit of control for this side. The drop down to site is going to be tough to follow through on. Okay, the paranoia is actually good, but look at artists just repositioning immediately. Heaven Control going to be retaken. The plant spot, not great. They do have to flood back to the side if Artis goes down, but he is holding strong. Tamazi still hadn't left Heaven. He will die there. Giving 12 to 6 over to Navi. A six round gap, double the score of their opponent. And one in six chances to close this back out. It's uh, looking pretty stacked in terms of ult economy. Yeah. And in terms of chances. Seems well, like they, all of them sit with Navi. This is the thing. I, I, I like the way that, again, Navi is so good at knowing, okay, if, if we allow them to go for the retake, if we allow them to set up with their utility, they probably will win the round. They, they have that advantage, and when they're given those spots, KC are very good. The second there's disruption, though, that's where Navi are able to strike, and that little bit of distraction allowing for Sugetsu to aggress. Might set them up for success. Weaponry now, a bit of an issue for Casey. Rolling Thunder immediately set up alongside the Showstopper. The site control is going to be taken. I don't think there's anything that can be done to stop it. And with the Viper's Pit still available, Na'Vi can set up into an almost perfect post plant. 
Yeah, this will be a very tough round to break. They're already going in. The pace is how they want to solve it. But Na'Vi have answered back. Artis grabbing himself a kill, still with utility. In fact, almost a full belt of utility to play with. And as they've broken the pace of this retake, KC slow it down, start to focus on the sights. Agetsu's got his flank underway. They're buying time. And they'll buy plenty of it on the site. Artis firing away his utility. Tamazi grabs two, but they still have to deal with Sagetsu. Still have to drop this man. And he's got a double with a pit down. The spray will not catch the kill. Tamazi has four kills to try and claim this, and he won't find it. Sagetsu closing it out. Fantastic play on Viper. A beautiful lurk and a beautiful game from Navi. 13 to 7 and 13 to 6. Domination on the maps that they win. The flawless streak continues now 3-0 <laughs> in the group. It's the most Na'Vi way to do it. You have a Viper's P, you go, we're going to use these ults to take the site. Where's Sagetsu? Other side of the map. Yeah. Coming yeah. in on a late lurk from the depths of the other side. You can't really blame KC for not seeing that one coming. You would expect your Viper to be in there. But that's what this team does. Disrupts and causes you issues. And after losing that first map, 13-7, the response once more from Na'Vi was unbelievable. 13-7, 13-6. This team is looking in some of the best form we've ever seen them, as resilient as ever. And if someone somehow manages to break this team's mental strength, I'll be shocked. Well, we've got the post plan coming up soon with Xiao and Angel. I see them on the stage. They might need a moment. Let's toss it over to here from our analyst desk. They might need a moment, they might need a moment, but we're not going to let them have a moment. We're going to get them over here to the post plant with myself and Kakuka as soon as possible. It's such a different showing on Split from Na'Vi Man. compared to last week, but they had to fight to the nail to, to get that comeback. And this time round, it was just completely in their hands from the start. Yeah, I think that they were also very confident in everything that we were doing. We were uh, seeing a zip and that was so comfortable playing the race and all the plays that we were doing. And Sweet gets to in that second half was just so important. We saw it in the pistol round, right? Like the way that he had the plant and the way he throws the mollies and how confident he is in everything that he's doing. We're just seeing here how Zippan was having the time of his life. He's not only hitting the shots, he's like being so confident to do this kind of things and being so, so successful. Two weeks ago, he was offing himself with that rocket. But today, it's a different view. And especially on this third map, I feel like Na Navi is such a resilient team that it's just beautiful to see how they are so far undefeated and they could be the one team to have like this perfect run to shine high potentially. I, how much better do you think they're playing than kickoff? It wasn't the worst showing at kickoff. I think that the 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 thing with Navi right and and then like changing compositions and trying stuff uh, for the first time it comes with a price right and sometimes that price is going to be that you're not able to win just because um, everybody's testing out stuff. They came in. Uh, to kick off with all of those things prepared. Now that they've had more time, and also I've mentioned this a couple of times, um, how every team came to EMEA to play Madrid and they got to um, play against them and prac against them. I think that everything's more solid now that they've managed to look at their mistakes and learn from them. Do you think they've benefited from not going to Madrid then? Oh yeah, for sure. I think that every team, like, I think that there's benefit, especially for the one in, in Madrid, as I say, with the teams coming over, you, you obviously get a benefit, especially with all the changes that we saw for kickoff. I feel like Navi, we, the um, expectations that we have from last year. It's like, oh my God, it's Navi. They're going to be changing stuff all the time and this and that. And this year, everybody brought in new changes, right? In a way, at KC, they didn't have that international experience. They needed Madrid more, whereas for yeah. Navi, it's almost like, okay, right, we'll take this time out. We know what we're doing on an international stage. We've mm -hmm. been there, done that. Okay, 2023 wasn't our finest hour. But now we can actually reset, got artists back, and we can yeah. make the magic happen from years gone by. Yeah, and, and especially even today, like, for example, they decided that the chamber did not work for them. Actually, we can ask them about it when we have them here. Uh, they go onto the Neon and they make it work. I think that also for Navi, this format of playing week to week instead of a, of a smaller and more compressed tournament, it benefits them so much. And Gecko doesn't benefit them on Sunset. <laughs> well, at least they've shown. We, you know, actually, no, I take that back because we actually don't know if Gecko benefits them because they didn't need to run it in the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that the, the important thing is that even if you don't decide to run it because you decide to go for something else, Navi is a team that might surprise you and might end up playing the Gecko anytime, you know? That, that That's the good thing about uh, them being so flexible, right? You have Shell, for example, now playing on the smokes, but you know that he's a brilliant initiator. Uh, Angel can do anything. Zip, and he also showed his flexibility today. Looked very comfortable. Artist, 
again, I think that everybody is on that line. And then you have Sugetsu, which is the most, one of the most deadliest sentinels that we have in the region. Can I just, uh, just sort of break the full fall for a moment and just explain to people, this is my first time in the studio for VCT and having the teams like massively on the screen behind you when you put like someone's head, someone's hand coming at you. It's almost like a horror show. I can see though that we've got a couple of players waiting to come on and join us. Angel's just like, do I go around here? You've, Angel's done this before, hasn't he? I, I don't know if we've had them here, but he's definitely... You guys, you can come here. Yeah. Come on, yeah, don't yeah, be please. shy, don't be scared. Is it's Shower, okay. Is a bit scared of you? Because you are a super fan. Hi, I've got the guest. You don't say that now, Frankie. Are or you life? the problem? <laughs> I'm the drama, she's mean? the problem. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I think that it's been an exhausting series. They love going to that ferry map. So, of course, we had to give them some time. Hello, guys. How are you Hello. doing? Good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, how are you feeling after that epic three map series? Uh, happy. Yeah. Happy. Excited. Uh, okay. Excited about what? <laughs> uh, we finally won a map with two one pistols. Okay. So it's like a big, big, big achievement. Okay, uh, an absolutely huge achievement. Um, I, I do want to keep the energy up. I want to keep the vibes happy. But I also do want to take things back to map number one. And we are going to rerun uh, a, a round that really did look like it was it was going your way. And we want you guys to talk us through it. Round Maybe you two. remember Don't tell me it's yes. one of your Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Why? Just, just why? Uh, just because you might have forgotten We're in too good mood, it. Rod. We're in too good mood, right? We, we need to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got to start the VOD review now. So I, I think no time like the present production if we can just watch this back. Okay, come on it's then there, and let's talk us through it. Do you see it? There's one. I mean, okay, this this three kills are a bit of BS, right? He shouldn't have gotten that. Angel, what do you pick here? I'm just holding. I'm literally just holding angle, like left side, show, right side. Yeah. And he was like, he, he played it good. He, he did, he did. He did wait also until the end. I, yeah. was, I think I think problem was in our first three guys, not in us. True. <laughs> we have, you not, not, you <laughs> the wrong guys we have not let many options, like what to do. You could have played together. We played, we literally was holding okay. together like... I, I, I thought to be honest, you will have time to refragment. me. No, I picked like after your death and uh, I didn't see him already. He just so took the knife and ran you too late pick. Yeah. So what also was happening for you, Angel, on, on Bind? Because when we saw you play against Vitality, you were absolutely on fire. And you, you did have a great series. But I was expecting Battle Angel. And instead I got in-game leader, Angel, doing his job. Uh, like, to be honest, I have a problem which, like, last two games. That like, first map, I feel unwarm up at all. Doesn't matter what I do here on the PC's backstage. This PC's backstage are a completely different thing, which is, like, on stage. So, uh, I will need to probably try next time not to warm up at all here, not to, like, lose the uh, confidence and feeling of the spray. Because it's second time, like, last game also, first map doesn't feel at all. I need to warm up while playing first map. And that's a big problem. So I will need to find a way in the next game. Because second and third, I was pretty confident and felt comfortable. Uh, okay, I wanted to bring an, an, another topic, right, uh, regarding the compositions that you guys are running. I think that some things are very well polished from kickoff, right? But I think you spoiled us a bit in 2023 because you brought it so many different compositions. I think that throughout the year, it was like around 30 or something like that. Maybe not the high of a number, but you would have like nine different compositions for one same map. Why do you think this year you haven't been so creative just yet? I told it before, like... Uh... Nine compositions on Lotus. Like to be Eight. honest, like before, like last year we was changing comps not because we wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's like it was a problem with our agent, like selection basically. It's like uh, just we wasn't feeling comfortable on the agents which we play. So we was trying to find the balance, trying to find the meta. I, I'm not like a big fan of changing comps. I, I'm fan of like changing like one agent, for example, like to adapt to enemy, like mm -hmm. or like some small details to counter strat someone. But changing like how many, how many times? Like Nine. a lot, basically. <laughs> basically Currently, a, it's not even there. Basically, so. a lot. Yes, it's. I'm not a fan of this. Like, you're not gonna see this here. Like a lot of switches. Maybe some adaptations to like enemy play style. Maybe uh, we'll feel like meta is changing, but not that much. So, Shao, how do you think? How would you rate um, Angel's uh, fate? It was very good on split. He is great. I was teaching him a lot mm, during, that during a lot. off season. How's, <laughs> how's uh, his smokes? How are the smokes? Uh, actually, he's very great on smokes. I was literally teaching him. <laughs> Don't remember. I like this. There's knowledge exchange. I mean, you've been playing together since like 2020. Yeah, uh, since better. Since better. Yeah. yeah so, so how have you still got things to teach each other? Surely you learn them at the same time. We played like three years on different roles. Now we switched, so we you have. You got bored. 
Um, or was it because 2023 didn't go the way you No, wanted? it's like uh, Shao played, like we obviously had a lot of switches between agents. I played initiators, some maps, Shao played smokers. And after last year, we're like, oh, Shao, you're great at smoker. You have like best stats and you feel comfortable. And Shao like, I can try smokers on all the maps. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And uh, I'm feeling fine on, on initiators. We have got Clove coming in next week, potentially. You never and know. eyes are on Narvi. <laughs> They're on Narvi. Can you wiggle your eyebrows? I'm getting mixed signals here. Because <laughs> Danger's <laughs> like, I don't like changing composition. No, no, it's not about changing comp, but I think Chloe is a bit weak right now. She's great for... Uh, matchmaking. Comp? For matchmaking, yeah. she's insane. You just push, die, and still smoke. But in reality, like, common have flash, Brim have longer smokes. Like, there is just... Utility of other smokers are just stronger. Okay, um, uh, let's let's uh, bring the conversation, conversation back to what happened uh, today, right? Did you expect the way that bind went? Went? Did you feel like you were counter strider What do you think went wrong in that map? No, I felt like we clearly was a better team there. Like no jokes, we lost two pistols, three clutches, one with three, one with five. Uh, even more. Like I'm saying, they was they were much better players. Yeah. We was a better team. On that's the first it. Map, yeah. And the uh, last two maps, there was just no situations for them to like clutch. And we won, pretty comfortable. So what makes uh, KC in the future potentially one of the best teams? Because you, you don't seem to, you seem to rate them as individuals then, but not so much as a team right now? No, I think they're a great team also. They have good strats, good ideas, but we're just better. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and obviously you're they're just, you're older and wiser and more experienced. Um, obviously, like their uh, individuals are like in some insane level. Like three guys, just like if you hit first bullet, uh, if you missed first bullet, most likely you're dead. Okay, um, love to hear that. Uh, let's show the standings, right? Because right now you're in an amazing position to make it out of the groups like flawlessly. Would be two zero to zero. Yeah, but yeah, okay, but you still have the three O, you know, so you're you, you're on top right now. You do know that if you get to play us as, as the, the problem first one. is doesn't matter. Like you can be four zero and don't go out of groups. Like uh, how's the system? No, you uh, can. No, you can. Okay, okay. You now, now you can't. Yeah. But before the league starts, you potentially could. Okay, so. and but let's take let's take problems <laughs> one at a time. Okay. <laughs> um, you're in a very good position to make it out of groups flawlessly, right? And also get get in that um, yeah that you dropped the maps, but you you got the wins in the end. And if you end up getting it five O. Um, and foot is like to drop one of their matches. You might skip. You know, you get into play as. I don't know if you know this. If you if you get first, yeah, know, you, you, you skip um, the uh, the first match. Is there any other result that you've been surprised by, or any team that you thought was going to be doing better, but is you know because on the other side, on the other group, everything's like more evened out. Do you expect any other team to be like very dominant besides you guys? To be honest, I expect the Giants to do much better. Like, no jokes. We've been practicing a lot against them because they are in our group. Yeah, we... And uh, they were playing very confident and very, like, strong. And uh, that the fact that they lose, like, first two maps is surprising for me. I expect that their potential is much higher than what we saw. There seems to be a thing with some of the teams doing amazing in scrims. Obviously, Vitality had a difficult first week uh, <laughs> because of you uh, <laughs> after doing so well in, in scrims. Is there something about the stage? Maybe it doesn't feel as comfortable as last year because there was the whole change. What is it about this studio that's making people question themselves and their skills? I think it's just the way people play on Prax. Yeah, I agree. They just more lose their picking angles, which they will never pick. Because like when it's coming to official, it's like imagine pistol you push like somewhere alone, you died. You're never gonna do it again, and you're rarely gonna do the place you were doing like jump checking something, like dry facing angles. So I respect the teams who is like playing prax like super comfortable and then doing this on stage. But and that's you. but most uh, no, we're not playing prax pra super loose. Okay, but we continue that thought. I'm sorry. I yeah, it's fine. Uh, we prefer like to lose the prax, but to prax what we're really gonna do on the officials. This is the way we prefer to prax. But most of the teams are not afraid of anything, playing like at home and uh, like obviously not at home in offices right now. But yeah, this is my opinion. Okay, um, should we move on to the uh, question uh, that we yeah. had from last week? Can I ask one thing before we go to the question that uh, funnily enough is from KC? Um, <laughs> Angel, look, the first time I met you was back in 2018. And there's something about you that sticks out to me is you stand by the org that you play with. In, in football, they call it playing for the badge. You have these long-standing relationships with orgs, and subsequently, you have long-standing relationships with players. Uh, so, Shao, I'm wondering, what is it about this man that inspires so much loyalty? 
I don't know, I just love him, to be honest. Like, from beginning, like, uh, when I was younger, like, 2015, I was, like, dreaming about playing with Angel. I don't know why I liked him <laughs> when he played the previous game. And eventually, we just, like, we were fighting against each other in beta on some small tournaments. And uh, once he invited me in his team, and I'm still here with him. So he discovered you. What did you see in him? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> awesome. We've been playing like two teams, one against each other, and I got 30 frags, he got 30 frags, and it's like overtimes. And our teammates are like 10, 15, 12, <laughs> and we're like picking each other. So you were like, I want this match. Like we're literally fighting against each other. And in beta, I was like owning everyone. Like yeah, just white swinging with brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> like white swinging with brimstone doesn't matter without buying the Steam Beacon even. And uh, if I say, oh, if the guy can fight me in beta, okay, I need to play with him. He was like owning hard. I can't imagine a, a world where you're not playing together. Can you imagine that? Listen, I'm old. I will die soon, so probably... No, you're, you're not going <laughs> to die am, soon. Oh, I'm one year older than you, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Women have, a, have an older life expectancy. How old are you, Shao? I'm 24. Oh, God. So yeah, we, are, we are oldest. Yeah, when we first met, you were like 16. Something like that. Oh, anyway. So as you were saying, we should. We yeah, should. we should seal the question <laughs> because I feel like I feel like Angel is like in the zone. He's like giving very good answers, and I want him to create some drama. So we're going to play the question that Zaysh um, blindly sent to the next guest for the post plant. Uh, are you enjoying Berlin? Because me, not. <laughs> yeah, are you enjoying it? Because he's not enjoying it. No. Are you guys enjoying Berlin? No, we don't. Why not? Uh, it's like it's not about Berlin, to be honest, for us. It's about us like living in the same apartment, like all together. For short boot camps, it's cool. But when it's like longer time, when you need to adapt to it, you need to like be very good to each other. You need to like wash dishes, like close doors, everything. Like you know, a lot of like small things which can happen. But to be honest, I feel like we're doing it great right now. Last That's year it was good. harder because we was losing more, and it also adds up. But this year is fine. But you have to live with all this. Uh, don't yep. please don't don't oh. like don't remind I literally like coming the here I'm happy of a boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, I bet he doesn't wash up I uh. bet he's the kind of boy who probably wears socks two days in a row no actually no he's pretty is he good no to be honest does he play with his shoes off we were play we were like sleeping in the same room with him and we, we had like the same room and he just like left because I was snoring so I just gave one the solo room for myself <laughs> Tactical. That's the angel, <laughs> have your That's own the room angel anyway. method. That's a great way to generate space, actually. Tactical genius. <laughs> who, who do you share a room with? Pontus. Uh, Zipan. Zipan. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, very. I mean Swedish. I who's, bet who's he's Norse more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I usually go first uh, sleep, so probably he enjoys <laughs> night time. I can imagine. And in the summer, he doesn't go to sleep at all. It's uh, hard to do a question for our guests, though. Sorry, Bear. Um, no, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was literally going to say that we, we, we cannot forget, obviously, you guys have to send a question to the next guest that we have. Uh, your camera is that one there. You see it, the one with the red dot. Shao, question from you. You can generate some drama, so you don't know who, uh, who you're asking. Mm. Who's the second team? Is it is going to be either Vitality or Foot? But you can create some drama if you want. Oh. If Vitality will win, if Vitality will win... Uh, no, you have to do for, for both no, no, cases. For both, it's for both. Exactly. Uh, let's go play football next yeah, Friday. Wanna, let's go. Yeah, I want to talk about football, yeah. Okay, you, you have to do it better. Just look at that yeah, camera and just... Camera? That one, yeah. Guys, g let's go play football next Friday. Team versus team. <laughs> Lovely, Good. we got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's probably... <laughs> I was <laughs> expecting drama and you gave me one of the most wholesome questions. I, so that's all right. I'm really enjoying this. No, football doesn't have to be wholesome. Not at all. We're fighting. We're like yeah. fighting. Until yeah, but, but but you could be like, hey, um, who's the worst player on your team? You know? I know who's the best. That's it. Who's hey, the best to... football player? Who's... Of course, Ankara Messi. The old man. Of course. <laughs> Are you a rush goalie? Like, no chances. No, I'm not doing everything. Messi, staying in the middle. That's Messi. Messi he, <laughs> he is the exact <laughs> name of Messi. <laughs> Did you just compare yourself to Messi? Ah, she yeah. didn't saw me playing, so. Yeah, I mean, but where's Messi playing now? Ask, ask Salah tomorrow. If you're going to interview Salah here. tomorrow, yeah, ask him, if ask they him. will win, ask. Okay. We played them last Friday, ask how many goals they scored. Okay, I will, I will. <laughs> I think you should have asked them that question. Uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. Maybe it's not Salah, so I did, like, question for both teams. All right. Okay, okay Messi. Like Messi and Mbappe. You're the, I've decided you're the Mbappe. Ah, uh, just the goal, goalkeeper. I'm oh, the goalkeeper. <laughs> okay. I am bad at football. Van der Sar. You have a goalkeeper energy, uh, actually. 
Who is the worst goalkeeper in, in the what? history of football? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was one from Liverpool, but never mind. Angel. Uh, We're still on the show. <laughs> <You're still laughs> you could be Alison. Alison, yeah, okay. He's not bad though. He's a proper good goalkeeper. Anyway, uh, do you want to pick a football player before we go? I am no, I don't. I'm very lost. I'm, I used to enjoy football when I was young as a social yeah. activity mostly. I still enjoy it as a social activity, but I don't follow it. You are the Alexia Puteas of the Atlas Desk. And if you've watched any women's football, including the World Cup where Spain won, you'll understand she's the MVP. Um, that is all from us here tonight, though. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for initiating me to the desk. I'm, I, my pleasure. I, I brought pink, um, but I, I look like I've been shopping in the camping store. And we just had to we had to veto. She that. looked fine. Uh, it's okay, the pink is in your heart, as long as you wanted to, you know. I did, I actually got, I got pink mouth on, but no one needs to zoom in on that. We are going to be back, though, tomorrow with some banger matchups with BBL versus Team Heretics and Vitality versus Foot. Who is going to be answering Narvi's question about football? We will see you then. Bye-bye. Dressing right, you need some meditation. Don't let them ruin your vibe. No time for rumination. Let's leave it all behind. Take a flight, aviation. Want you, girl, by my side. Let me show my appreciation. I want you here with me. I miss your body, baby. No, I cannot believe that you're still single, lady. Wishing I could retreat. necessary